is working. Oh, okay. Okay. We are allegedly live. Let me see if I can find that tasty link so I can right. tweet the, you know, the stuff with the... Yeah, yeah, there it is. Perfect. Okay. Copy link. And I to log into my old school email account because that's the one that has <laughs> admin status on the uh, streams. Oh, good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And paste. Come on. This can't be that hard. Okay. Hacha! We're good to go. Alrighty, so hello everybody. It's been a hot minute, uh, but Link is right where we left him, looking as fancy as ever. Uh, and today, nice. we are going to, I hope, get through the Champion's Ballad, because, uh, you know, why not, right? Like, we are rapidly running out of things to do in this game, which is kind of how the end game of this just, you know, works. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, let's see. And I made a bunch of pickles earlier and some biscuits and then had a, a really annoying issue with my laptop that is oh, evidently yes. very old and on its last legs. So we're starting off strong. We're, yep, we're off to a roaring start. So last time we, uh, we went to all of these locations and got the little the, the quests going. However, what I didn't do was uh, take pictures of the map locations that we actually need to watch out for. So that was uh, very smart and cool of me, uh, unironically, because it means we get to go on a fun little adventure again. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. You know how it is. Where'd this heart button come from? What's happening? Huh? There's like a heart button on my... I'm watching the live chat, and there's a button with hearts coming out of it. Interesting. Oh, I see. I you can leave little... Huh. Boop. Whoa! I just made a little party streamer go. What? Huh. Huh. Oh, is this in Streamlabs, not on YouTube? No, this is on YouTube. I, it's on what? mobile, though. Maybe that's having some effect. What the mm, heck? Possibly. I am on browser. Wait, where am I again? I oh, for, right. As, no, the... Usually what happens when we stream is I open Discord on my laptop and then just switch, use that instead of my desktop, because I like to keep that free and clear for post-production workflows. But smart, um, smart. I am liking this big screen to get the full readout. I do feel very guy in the chair <laughs> with this new setup. So maybe this will become the default. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> but have you put it in vert yet? <laughs> don't you fucking bring joke it across contaminate. How dare you? Oh, but the but the chat would love to hear the funny story about putting your monitor mm. in vert. <laughs> All right, where are we going? No one put their monitors in vert. Let's see. We're up, we'll point it in the right direction. Oh, wait, I remember. It's just kind of up. Yeah, there it is. We already got one of those. Perfect. Oh, come on. There we nice. go. Yeah. All of these have, like, a speed through the rings and X amount of time puzzle, which is usually pretty chill. Thanks, Daruk. Yeah. Yeah. They're not so bad. Um, I think the Mifas one is probably the easiest, but uh, I'm not about to talk a bunch of smack before, you know, potentially boofing it live on stream. <laughs> no. Build up your hubris. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Okay. We're just going to scooch our way up there. And there's only two of those left. And I'm sure that definitely won't unlock yet another thing. This is definitely... Th this is a hell of a uh, a long chain of quests to get to the final quest. I think this is probably the longest... It's like the equivalent of those trading chain quests in earlier Zelda games. Where it's like, mm. you, you get thing A, and at the end of the quest you're going to get thing Z. And along the way you need to just like swap things for other stuff. Uh, and this is kind of like that, because it's like, step one, one hit obliterator quest, which is actually four quests. And then after you do all four quests and all four shrines, uh, then you start each individual champion's ballad quest, each containing four smaller quests. And then at the end of each of those, you... S spoilers, you do some spoilery things. And then at the end of that, you do another big dungeon. And then at the end of that, you do spoiler things. And then at the end, it's like, congratulations. <laughs> We made you go about three exponents deep in that one. <laughs> I completely zoned out for that entire spiel. I'm so sorry. That's probably smart. 
Oh, I'm wait. getting Discord notifications, but it's just the notifications that the stream is happening. So I guess uh, it sort of is kind of recursive in that way. Yes. Wheels within wheels. Yes, yes. Come all on. that good stuff. Oh, come on, Link. We can make this. We can, we can, yep. Just, yeah. It's not so bad. We're just on a steep underhang. <laughs> Over a lake. Watching a Star Trek The Next Generation before jumping on this. Because, um, Hell yeah. Pluto TV, the free service, will just play a one channel that's just the first season of TNG on loop, and uh, <laughs> that's the only way, <laughs> legal way for me to watch it. So. I feel like Peacock has a channel that's just playing later seasons of TNG. Uh, Possibly. I think Paramount technically has the rights to stream Star Trek at the moment. It, ah. With the exception of the movies, which are also on HBO. It's, eh, whatever. But, um... I think Peacock uh, is I just free? had that on for background noise. Maybe I got it free with my TV. Oh, look at this opalescent texturing on this rock. So pretty. Um, but, uh, what's it called? I just have it in the background for background noise because I've seen all of the episodes of that show far too many times at this point. But oh, yeah. the episode that I was on it right before the stream started was um, the first time that Data does the whole Sherlock Holmes bit. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, how charming. We love that bit. Uh, we're getting notes in chat that I'm a bit quiet. I don't know if you can raise the... Oh, uh, yes. A just a second. Let me just pry myself off my comfortable couch and... Ooh, Ooh. slider. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> no panic. No one is panicking. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I've bunced you up. Whoop. Nice. So now you're about the same level as me. And, uh, is if... this better, chat? Yeah, and if this ends up being too loud, I think you can make yourself quieter. Uh, uh, if you need to. Yeah. I could lower my gain, although this, the, I need to get a booster for this mic so I can properly How's adjust that? it. Okay. Let's see. Let's just... Yeah. Gain, a.k.a. loudness. <laughs> Volume, if you would. Oh, no. Please tell me more about gain. Uh, when okay. you adjust it, it makes you quieter or louder, depending on the direction you take it. Let's just snag you. Yeah, perfect. Oh, gorgeous. All right. And... Oh, yeah. This is the easy one. Maybe we'll just do this one next. Okay. Because that one is... Like... I don't want to download Paramount Plus just to watch Star Trek chat because uh, currently in the process of fusing my streaming services with my boyfriends and I don't want to have to pay for something <laughs> that I'm just going to inadvertently get grandfathered into. So. Okay. We could probably warp there. That'll make things a little bit easier. Eh. Whatever. Actually, we definitely showed that's a big lake in the way. Hmm. Okay, and hit it. Yep. Let's go. Nice. Out on the vibe. I just, I still can't figure out what this emoji thing is for. It's just raining little hearts and party streamers. Giving you a little effect. I, I have guess. no idea how you're making it happen, but I love that it's happening for you. I wish they would add more negative emojis so you can, like, sass somebody. Because it's just like, you can do the heart, the party stream, or the 100 emoji. I think the last thing the internet needs is a way to be angrier <laughs> quicker. No, what? <laughs> but it's such a sedate place most of the time. Wait, do we have... Just say, it seems like <laughs> could potentially ruffle some feathers, so to speak. Uh, humbug. All right, let's see. I think Goron's just still hanging out in the shop. Lovely. Love to see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna run into the start of this quest objective pretty soon. They usually have a couple NPCs hanging around like, Oh, boy, something interesting's over here, just so you don't get lost. That goose is not obeying the laws of physics at all. Okay. Oh. I hope Let's... it's my laptop charger that just broke. To the, like, seconds before the stream started, it went from charging to now this charger will not seem to register on a very... It, fair, to be fair, a very old laptop that has been on its last legs for a while, but I'm really hoping it's the charger uh, and not the yeah. actual laptop itself. Some of them have, like, a little Basically. battery service panel that lets you know when you need to... Like I've had the check battery light on for about like four years now. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, but it holds the charge okay, so I do think it is just the charger that um 
Admittedly, I think Ziggy chews on sometimes, so I wouldn't be too surprised. It's enrichment, out. and we shouldn't deny her the simple pleasures of life. I just wish she would chew on things that weren't electrical wires that sometimes are plugged in, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's not an unreasonable thing to request. Who are you to deny her this? Uh, the person who has to take her to the vet if she shocks herself. It's fair, true. <laughs> Not check engine light chat, check battery light. <laughs> Very different. One, I don't do anything about, and the other I just sort of mildly stare at every couple months and think, maybe I'll take it in. Probably not, though. You get to guess which is which. Here we go, and boing. Ta-da! We did it, Reddit. Okay, what's next? I don't have a car, I don't need to check any engine. It's the magic <laughs> of walking everywhere. Oh boy. What soups have I made recently? I'm so <laughs> glad you asked. Um, I haven't made any soup recently because it's been getting really hot in Philly, but I did today make a bunch of uh, like Italian sausage and some balsamic roasted brussels sprouts and biscuits from scratch because I had a bunch of leftover whole milk that I wasn't going to drink. I'm not an animal. Um, so that's been the vibe lately. Oh, also so made some pickles. Um, been a lot of... Uh, a few of my major clients have been in New Zealand the last two weeks, so <laughs> I've had a pretty light work week. I've been doing a lot of spring cleaning <laughs> and uh, as a result also doing a lot of cooking and baking. Um, plus it's my two Easter's in a row week which is always fun oh um, heck yeah because my my family celebrates greek orthodox easter my boyfriend celebrates uh normal pagan not pagan normal excuse christian excuse me <laughs> <laughs> very much not so one of those uh, special <laughs> pagan easters <laughs> yeah um yeah but uh Anyway, I got two Easter's, so I gotta do a lot of baking. I gotta make my baklava Saturday night. Looking forward to it. It's gonna be great. My recipe makes two full trays, so that's all I'm gonna be eating for breakfast for the next couple weeks. Heck yeah. Um. Perfect. Alright, you got anything interesting here? Hmm. What a puzzler this one is. Folks would like to know if we watched the Owl House finale. Um, ah, not yet, but I'm I gonna. haven't. No, I haven't watched anything. I just see a bunch of spoilers on TikTok. That's about where I'm probably at with the series. I'm glad it's cute and good, but I just don't got time. I was recording a bunch of movie trucks. I don't got time for a TV show. Right oh man, it is extremely good, but that's completely understandable. Yeah, okay. I liked it. A lot. I watched the whole first and second season. I really enjoyed them. Uh, I'm just probably not gonna get around to finishing it, and I think that that's okay sometimes. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I'm probably gonna I'm watch. Glad it exists. <laughs> yeah, I held off on uh, all of the the newer ones, like the last bits that they're doing. How am I gonna mm. do this? Because uh, I want to watch them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not gonna work. <laughs> um, just I want to watch them all at once. I didn't really want to get into it before uh, it was done. So, but now, well, I, I watched the earlier seasons, and now that's good. Um, whoop! Nope. Okay. Cool. All right. Am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing. Something. Ah! There you are, you sneaky bitch. I knew there was something that would make this puzzle less stupid. We're just gonna nudge you over here. Sure. That looks fine. Maybe. It's fine, we got this. Uh, whew, chat got anything else going on? Mm -hmm. People excited about Tears of the Kingdom? Oh, like me too. Heck yeah. Wolf and I have plans to spend an entire weekend just sitting on the couch, not talking to each other, independently playing that game. I'm looking Perfect. forward to it. I had a, a dream that I was playing Tears of the Kingdom last night, which is part of why I'm doing this. Uh, the version I got was not great. Um, <laughs> I was mm. disappointed at a forced multiplayer section at one point, so that's where I'm <laughs> at. Um, 
I mean, can you blame me? Like, every game is like, oh, you know what would be super fun? If we made it so that there had to be multiple players on this part. That sounds really exciting. Mm. It's like, no, what? I want to be Link. I want to be Link and Link's <laughs> fucking friends. You don't want to be Link, but this time he's wearing like a yellow hat or something. Oh, the four swords approach to character development. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. I would simply like to be the only Link. I feel like we should cover off on this D and D movie and Mario movie. I have not seen either. Both of them feel like things that someone is going to make me watch at some point for, the, for a podcast. I've also not Quite. seen either. For some strange Been reason, I was off. otherwise occupied for the last couple weeks. Ha ha ho! Whatever. <laughs> Could that red? Would you? Uh, yeah, would you like to talk about it. Yeah, it's okay to mention that because uh, it's been officially posted. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, fellow YouTuber and uh, bud of the channel, uh, hello future me. Uh, got married recently, and we all we we trucked out to to the land uh, adjacent to the land down under, uh, and we we hung out with with uh, Tim Hickson, hello future me, and his lovely fiance, and uh, then they got married. Now so what? now it's now now husband and wife, uh, and it was really beautiful. And I'd never been to New Zealand before, so that was a lot of fun. I'm definitely missing a step. Uh, extremely cool. Uh, extremely jealous that you were in New Zealand for like I know, I'm sorry. a week and a half. Like, I mean, I just want to know everything about how cool New Zealand was. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, I tried to get in like as much tourism as I could because I was like, how many times am I likely to be in New Zealand? Um, in fact, all the New Zealand tour guides were like very upfront about that. Like, most of you guys are never coming back, so you know you should do the cool stuff <laughs> and pay us, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and uh, so I, I did, I like speed ran it. It's like, okay, day one, uh, let's do the, uh, let's, let's like, well, day one, I kind of had to, you know, adjust and have jet lag and stuff, but it was like, oh yeah, let's, let's do the, let's do the Hobbiton tour at some point. Let's check out those glowworm mm -hmm. caves everyone's talking about, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, and it was extremely cool. Uh, and um, I gotta say, uh, I do recommend there's a there's a tour bus that will take you from the Waitomo Glowworm Caves to uh, Hobbiton and then back to Auckland. So if you're on the North Island, you can basically just do them both in one day. I recommend this because it's really really weird, like cognitive dissonance wise, to uh, um, <laughs> to go from a really beautiful natural wonder that's, like, maintained and guided by the family and descendants of the, like, local person who first found the caves in the 1800s, uh, and then going from that to Hobbiton, the most artificially mm. manufactured tourist attraction <laughs> in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and just sort of that is an interesting uh, bit of dissonance that I recommend because it really kind of makes you think about a few different things. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Um, also, the glowworm caves are beautiful. They kind of don't want you taking pictures. And by that, I mean they really don't want you taking pictures because the glowworms mm -hmm. are fussy little madams that don't like it when bright lights happen. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, but there are, there are pictures of them that you can see. I think I used the wrong one. Dang it. It's okay. I can make this work. Um, but oh, man. So gorgeous. Uh, and... So yeah, and the funny thing is, like, so the North Island, Auckland, is where all the tourism happens. Uh, mm -hmm. And it feels like it. It feels like a pretty dense city. Uh, and it is. Um, and then the, the South Island is kind of where they're hiding the good stuff. Like, all the scenery from everything in Lord of the Rings that isn't in Hobbiton is on the, uh, the South Islands and stuff like that. And it is awesome. Okay, I don't know if I can... How am I... Mm. This feels confusing. This okay. I think I can get one more waterfall in there. That ought to work. Oh, ho, ho. I I think I think I can do that. Just gotta make sure I'm breaking the right ones. I believe in you. Can I? Oh no, there's no space. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> Ooh, maybe I can make a really little ice pillar. No, that's not gonna work. Uh, beans. Okay. Um, 
Well, could you stasis something? I, I can use stasis on some of it, but I still need to. I need to basically get the middle block up, and I don't know if I can do that in the time that stasis would give me. So, like, if I stasis this bad boy, and then I, I would need to climb it, and then I would need to magnesis up the other block and climb that. I, no, there's. I'm missing something. Um, Hmm. Yeah, getting it up that high would be good. But... Yeah, that just doesn't work at the right speeds. Okay. Well, we have a sort of winning formula for this, so let's just... Uh, let's not do this other one back up. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, New Zealand is very beautiful. It's, it's kind of the planet Earth's best kept secret, I would say. Um, in that when I mentioned it offhandedly to a guy, he was like, Oh yeah, New Zealand. That's near Australia, right? Is that its own country? And it's like, uh, yes, sir, it is. <laughs> yes, very much so. Apparently, Australia has a thing in its constitution or something that's like, hey, New Zealand, like, if you want to become a state, we're, we're, we can fast track that. And it's like, oh, that's that's so cute, Australia. <laughs> um, is this going to work? Would that, would I be able to jump it? No, I've got these in the wrong order. Dang it. Ugh, well, whatever. Um... Oh, they also have... You can climb on the ice, can't you? You can, yeah, but uh, I want th I want the one on the right to be the higher up one. Uh, hmm. So what I have right now is pretty good. Like, if you got up to the tallest one now, could you magnesis that lower one up, stasis it, and then just bum rush? Possibly. There is also the question of if I can actually jump that, because I might have made it so I can't. Hmm. No, Link. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't need this one anymore, so... Alright. Nope. Link, I just need you to climb this, buddy. It's not that complicated. You're right in front of it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um... Whew. But yeah, um... Hobbiton is pretty neat, uh, in large part because it is very, very much a movie set tour. Like, they, they are mm -hmm. not pretend- it's no, like, Galaxy's yeah. Edge kind of situation. It's like, yeah, welcome to Hobbiton. Uh, manage your expectations. This was an exterior set, not an interior one. <laughs> uh, which I, I respect. I respect the honesty on display. Um, okay. How are we gonna do this? Um... Alright, we did approve the concept with that. That worked well. Okay, that'll work briefly, but not for much. Okay. Um, hmm. How am I gonna... Uh, uh. Okay. Alright. I think I have an idea. We're gonna need to lose a little bit of upper progress. I know I did this a different way the first time, and it wasn't this complicated, but... It does feel like something went wrong somewhere along the way. I think the problem is I just did this mirrored to how I should have. Like, there's no reason it would have taken me this long, uh, except, you know... Yeah. The exact opposite of what you have would be... Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Good start, good start, good hustle, and if I can just, no, oh, so close, all right, let's back it up and try again, thank god these cryonis ice blocks are basically indestructible unless I bump them lightly with the top of my head, <laughs> okay, and uppies, come on guys, you can, you can do this, this is a girls night chat, Beans. we are, Party in. Oh yeah, party don't start till. <laughs> it's it's fine. 
Okay. Um, as long as I have... As long as I have you... Nope, that's not going to work. Okay. Well, we are really close, I think. But <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, does chat have any interesting questions I can distract myself with while I get through the very last dregs of this puzzle? Uh, mostly they've been saying you've been overcomplicating this puzzle. Thank you, chat. You're, you're so helpful. I, I really value and treasure your input. It's gonna be fine. Damn right it is. That, that'll be some dicey. comments about Percy Jackson asking for opinions on that and the expanded Percy story of the other books, I think. Or oh. Whoa. Whoa. Whew. Okay. Uh, huh. Uh. Um, I mean, I was never really a big fan of the Roman ones. I feel like those started getting a little bit complicated for some reason. Um, if you just take that cube out and let the- yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got it. Now I just need to climb. Perfect. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, Rosie Jackson, books are very fun. Uh, I kind of, I've mentioned this before, uh, I, I didn't really get into the Roman series in large part because, um, turns out what I liked about the Percy Jackson books was, uh, Percy and his perspective, mm. and then the Roman books are like, let's do a lot of variable POVs, <laughs> let's, let's switch between a bunch <laughs> of characters that, uh, you don't know, <laughs> and let's do it all in third person so you didn't get the inner, like, the sort of internal, um, very easy to chill with perspective that Percy had in the mm. earlier books. Where it's like, I too am 12 and panicking most of the time, so this works great. Um, so that's about when I fell off the wagon. Uh, although the Roman series did have the one thing I really liked, which was uh, being able to basically see Percy from the outside after like five whole books of being in his head as he's constantly panicking and feeling like he's not up to the challenge. <laughs> And then everyone on the outside is like, oh my god, that's Percy Jackson? He's so handsome and cool. Did you hear he fucking set off a volcano? And he's like, internally, of course, Percy's like, whoopsies, I set off a volcano, but now my girlfriend thinks I'm dead. And it's just like, Percy, would you please take a step back and accept how cool you are? Um, <laughs> and that's something you can't really get from the internal perspective, obviously, because Percy, one of his most lovable characteristics is that he is never going to see how cool he is. Um... So the benefit of the Roman series is that you could actually have other characters be like, oh my god, this guy's so far out of our league, it's not even funny. Uh, and we're like, that's that's my guy! I was in his head! <laughs> He's my lead! That's my boy! Okay, who am I, who am I missing? Uh, conquer the ancient yeah. foes. Oh! I do like this one. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can so get rid of... Chat, um, mm -hmm. was a rolling with difficulty NPC we want to see again. Um, Ooh. Pretty easy for me. I want to see Davian, and I'm 100% certain that he will show up next season at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when or how, but it's the one thing I was like, Austin, I don't care what we do for the daily season, but man, we gotta have Davian come back. Where's the, where's the green bit? Are we... I feel like it's like around one of these two upland Zoranas. Um, well, that's okay. We'll just go look. I'm sure we'll spot it pretty well. Um, oh, man. There's so many really cool, uh, um, that's fully the wrong direction. Okay, I thought so. Uh, I don't know, there are, there are a lot of really cool NPCs. I think it's more fun that they just kind of turn up when we aren't expecting them. Um, mm. in terms of ones that I think it would be great to just, like, get more time with because we got so little time with them, I think, uh, that one, like, really buff lion man we hung out with, uh, on the way to the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or Athos or something. Yeah, because he, cause he's, like, a friend's character or something, right? Um... Yeah, I think Austin and Wally may have played with a friend, and that was their character. And that's just so fun. Oh, excuse yeah. me. God dang it. Oh, right, sorry, I forgot I wasn't using my extremely busted sword. <laughs> Buster sword, more like... Okay, anyway. Wayo. Wayo. Uh, yes. I mean, what am I doing in this fish armor? Let's go back to my normal grip. I want my pathetic little man back. I want to have my good time boy hanging out. <laughs> I want him to... My silly my rabbit. Again. My no. silly little dude. I have special secret knowledge from the future that suggests I'm going to need to wear these pants. Ooh. Well, there's also a hint in the in the 
description of this last bit. Conquer the ancient mm. foes. Oh. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cold read on that one. Why? I'm going in the wrong direction again. But maybe I'll be able to see the right direction from here. Sirens in the background. Uh, we both live in cities. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it happens. I'm sorry someone else's emergency is slightly inconvenient for you. Ah! Enemy spotted. Oh, hello. Mm. What's up, my dude with a shark for a head? Segan? Hey. <laughs> Link, exquisite timing. Look over there. Whoop. Link. The same creatures that this? appeared when Lady Mifa challenged her sacred trial have returned to Upland Zorana. Uh, Lady Mifa defeated Upland them with her usual Zorana. grace and skill. I wonder, is the trial calling to someone new? Uh, I just work here. We're talking about Ambulance. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know the movie, uh, it was just called Ambulance, but it was set in L.A., so the L.A. Ambu LA. <laughs> ambulance, but they just emphasized the L and the A in the title. I didn't watch it, but I think it's an inspired uh, choice. <laughs> That's stupid, and I love it. Ambulance. 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 Um, we love it. Amber lamps. It's, uh, it's the school of title creation that Too Fast, Too Furious comes from, <laughs> and it is my absolute favorite uh, school of movie titling. Like, anytime you can make a really, really bad pun in your title in a way that almost infuriates the viewer, you're doing it right. I'm still mad that we got Fast 10 and it wasn't your seatbelts. Your seatbelts? Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> They're cowards is what they are. Damn right. Wait, is this working? Whoops. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I misread the situation. Like, like, come on, man. Okay, cool. Mm. All right. I feel like bomb arrows work on those, right? Oh, I only have a few of those. I wonder... In terms of things I have an awful lot of. Ah. Well, that did very little. Except mm -hmm. antagonize it. That's okay, we got this. You got its attention. I did. Thor should have been Thor with a four in the middle of it. I feel like that's pretty uncontroversial. Just like, these are, these are the titles we could have. Okay, how to do this. Well, let's see if it can... Sense attacks from the skies! It can. It's targeting my butt. Okay. That's okay. How likely do we think a Zelda movie is to happen? Oh god, come on Mario guys. Movie? Don't fucking... I could see it happening. I wish they I did. Know. Whoops! <laughs> I don't know if it's necessary, but I could, like, I, Tears of the Kingdom inevitably sells incredibly well. I wouldn't be shocked if Nintendo's like, oh, we have this other IP that we could make into a movie. Mario did great. The problem is giving Link a voice is going to automatically alienate almost everybody. Because True, but consider they don't give Link a voice and it actually kind of rocks. I would love that, but they're not going to. <laughs> well, sure, but we can make... This is our hypothetical Zelda movie. We can do what we want. It's true. I don't know. I think it could be fun. I think realistically it'll probably be kind of IP grabby, but that's how a lot of movies get made these days. So if you can get people who care about what they're doing already, you might be able to make something pretty decent out of it. All right. We're gonna... We're just gonna... We're just gonna spin to win. How much help do you even have?! I feel like the Zelda movie has almost more of a built-in story than some other games. Because, like, you just kind of have to do... Fantastic. What the? Oh, Zelda and Link it got all of them. I will try for saying it's like a built-in story structure that's relatively clear compared to... Like, the Mario movie, yeah, Princess is in another castle. Um, but ultimately, movie, like... I don't know what the plot is, but, like, that's a pretty thin sp space to start writing a script from. The Zelda Whereas movie... Zelda, I feel like, has kind of got a baked-in, like, starting point for your storyboards and all that, depending on... Like, you don't even have to pick one game. You've got to pick one kind of general story Whoops. to go with. Oh! Oh, dang it. It was swaying. I did a cool mm. parry, and it didn't even matter. Oh. Ah. Why is the beam still there? Okay, whatever. No, come back! Face me! Ugh, whatever. How did Mifa do this? 
You'd think there'd be more like waterfalls and stuff around if this was Weepa's thing. Oh, that would be such a great idea. But they didn't do that for some strange reason. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, you over there. You know the trailer would open with just like black screen, little glimmer of blue. Hey, listen. <laughs> oh, God, you're so right. <laughs> Aren't I supposed to be able to... Ah, eh, whatever. Come on, buddy. Show me the big money. Hey, what? Am I not good enough for you? <laughs> What's happening? No! Rude! Stop making me waste my bomb arrows. They're expensive. Whoops! <laughs> We're okay. It's cool. Can I? Will it let me? Nope! <laughs> cool. Awesome. You know there'd be a scene where he has to face down a cuckoo at some point. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess that depends on what flavor of D and, uh, of a Zelda movie we're trying to make. Based on how most movies are made, I feel like the, the flavor would veer more D&D &D movie, less uh, exis not existential, but like slow contemplative horror. The good version? Slow contemplative kind of adaptation of Breath of the Wild. That would be so good, but realistically... Probably very more Stop letting me. Oh! Dang it, Daru. I think the ideal thing would be to make it a different Link and Zelda than in any games. You know? Yes, 100%. So it should be the its own version. The best way to do it. Yeah. Be its own version, do a less lore heavy version of the Link oh, Zelda. That would actually hit it. Ganon, try for a story, lean on the like bigger archetypes. I think you could for real pull something off that would be not awful. Yeah. Um, would it be the best movie ever made? Probably not. Certainly. The games are likely going to do it better because a lot of the fun of the story is that you are one of the protagonists and you play through it. But uh, I think they could make a competent movie. Uh, like, of all the Nintendo IP that could potentially be being looked at to be the next movie after the Mario movie. First off, I think 100% they're going to do like a Mario Galaxy sequel to the Mario yeah, movie. Yeah, of course. I feel like they got to get that Rosalina in there. But uh, other IP, I feel like... The Legend of Zelda is the one that makes the most sense to, to a marketer for sure. A movie. Yeah, um, it's both extremely popular. It's gonna have a major game drop this year. Um, I also, like, it would go of, animated of, for it. Yeah, of course, that would be the only way to make it work. Also, like of the main uh, video game like characters that are iconic, you got Mario, mm -hmm. you got Sonic, and you got Link. Mario and Sonic are now two for two on having movies. Yes. Um, you got Link, like, you could make an argument for Kirby, but that IP doesn't translate to, like, a story quite Kirby as well. Kirby does not like, movie no, well. No. Yeah. Oh, dang it. In the way that, like, there is an inherent drama in the Legend of Zelda that is not... There isn't the same level of drama in the Kirby games. Like, yes, he has these monsters to fight, but, like, my favorite Kirby game is where he has to go get all his cake back from a bunch of little mice. And that's not really a movie, is it? Mm. That's not, it could be, but it's not gonna be. In the uh -oh. contrast, like, I have to go defeat this great evil to save uh, my, like, closest friend, possibly the love of my life, and I have a sword, and I gotta fight some bad guys. Yeah. That's a movie. That's that's a film that's been made and Whoops. could be made again. And he's a pretty elf boy, you know? It, it, the appeal makes itself. It's easy. Yeah. Dang it. I would not be surprised if they were, like, we're making a Zelda movie at some point. Do I think it's gonna happen tomorrow? No. But do I think it is a thing that they might start considering, especially if Tears of the Kingdom inevitably sells really well. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, especially oh, after, like, the weekend the Mario movie just had at the box office, I feel like they're like, ooh, people will turn up for this stuff. Um, which is, you know, whoops, I'm a nerd for that. But uh, I mean, she I'm just fucking see putting how that today. Yeah. Stop it. I want to parry. I don't want them to just bounce off in a random direction. There we go. Rivali's Gale is now ready. Thanks, bud. I wish they would stop wiggling and these parries would actually hit it where they're supposed to. There! Like that! Was that so hard? Oh, I get it. So those, those like, the stationary ones are just the flying parts, but without the flying bit and upside down. Okay, cool. I'm up to speed. Alright, where's the last one? Tingle absolutely played by Jack Black. I don't even think that's a question yeah. that you need to ask. Yeah. Or Ganon played by Jack Black. If it's voiceover, could good. he could pull that if off. If it's voiceover, but I do still kind of love the idea of, like, let Jack Black be the comedic character, you know? Definitely. Um, I, he did a great Bowser, but... No, 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 no,
Ah! No! Highly you know. shield! Yeah, definitely. Someone with some gravitas. Yeah, someone with a little more. If he's goofy, good. there's no really like a. There's not really like meat to the threat, you know? Mario, you can get away with the villain being kind of goofy because it's kind of just an inherently goofy thing. Yeah. But I do. Not that I don't think Jack Black has the range, but when, if he's getting cast, and that people are typecasting, and, I, and you know, put some limits on it. Oh boy. Whoop! <laughs> All right, Mifa, anytime. Let Matt Mercer voice scan it in the <laughs> That would be nice. Ooh, Mark Hamill, that would be fun. Ooh, could, he'd be I good. I could get behind that. Yeah. I had to watch um I had to watch Batman, the, the uh Michael Keaton Batman recently from Movie Struck upcoming Heck episode. Yeah. I guess it's sort of a spoiler for a future episode way <laughs> in the way in the future. But um it still rocks and uh <laughs> it reminded me how much I like the Mark Hamill Joker from Oh, the Mark end. Hamill is but. a stellar vocal performer. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, come on. I like that the era of Jokers that, like, Jack Nicholson and Mark Hamill kind of embody, where everyone is sort of doing their best Caesar Romano in the way that, like, <laughs> um, the current generation of Jokers tend to be doing their best Heath Ledger, and I feel like people have a harder time grasping what really worked about that performance than Agreed. they did of what really worked about Caesars, and it's like, oh, no. Like, there's there should be some joy to this, and uh, Nicholson and Hamill really nailed that. Yeah, definitely. Come on. Ah, they're so playing sway. Fire Emblem Engage, and in the same way that I felt uh, shocked and surprised hearing Matt Mercer's voice in the Tears of the Kingdom trailer, uh, he shows up to he reprises his role as Crom in the DLC, and I was like, "Hey, of Matt Mercer does." <laughs> Obviously, like, why would he not? And I guess I should have expected it, but it was still a moment where he started talking. And I'm like, "Huh, it's Matt Mercer." Yeah. Whoops. He's Matt Mercer. <laughs> Thank you, Mipha. Uh -oh. I was a little bit on fire. <laughs> Just explode already! What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. fine, I'll get it. It does feel a little bit like a Mercer jump scare every time he, he pops up now. Like, I know that he's an established voice actor who does a lot of work, Whoops. Uh, but Whoops. so much of my college years were contained with watching um, Critical Role's Campaign 1 all the way through, and of then course. the first half of Campaign 2, that it's like, well... Link, you're really disappointing That's who he is in my head now, you know? I have a similar effect with J. Michael Tatum, but for very different reasons. <laughs> Did I get him? Oh no, I think I I think I blew us both up with that one. That's okay, it works. Link, my man. You're making us look bad. After all those perfect parries, now you choose to make it not work? I mean, to be fair, he's at point blank. Just do it. Nope. Danny DeVito as Tingle also could be very good. Did you get him? Hold on. Let me eat some food, I guess. <sighs> okay. Nope. Oh! Oh, okay, I see how it is. Running scared, are we? <laughs> I feel like Danny DeVito would have played Tingle if they made this Legend of Zelda movie in the 90s. A hundred percent. Not that he can't do it now, it's just, you know, he is getting a little bit old. Yeah, I think that the, the, the one character that could work for it is Tingle. I do think you're 100% right, though, where this the 90s, he would be, like, first on the cast list for that. Whereas and it I think would have now... been awful. <laughs> you we don't want that man yelling at you about rupees? No, thank you. Are you dead yet? No, of course not. That would be too easy. How did Mifa even do this? Mifa doesn't have a shield. Mifa is demonstrably bad at fighting you people. Hello? Thank you. Are you close enough? No, of course not. This might not work as well from close range. Nope. Link. Focus on the primary threat, please! Well, whose fault was that? <laughs> oh, I was really hoping I Am was I excited for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem? Uh, against... The deep, deep-seated dread in my heart, I think it looks like it's really good. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really good. The way they say ooze in the trailer scratches an itch in my head that I can't explain. Okay. Just, just that little wiggling turtle thing is going ooze. 
Die. Yes. Okay. Thank God. Love it. Oh God. Are we done? Love those freaking. <laughs> we love some turtle boys. That's for sure. I like that they sound like teenagers. Uh. <laughs> I just like it looked really like a love letter to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in kind of the way that the Spider Verse trailer got me excited for that movie. So mm -hmm. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, I, mean, I really love the uh, art style of the animation. I think they, it, it calls back to the comics in a, in a really neat way. And I'm excited to see if they maybe do a sequence where they go for like kind of more of a black and white noir effect, like the or Eastman and Laird comics kind of looked. I wonder if I'm just jaded. I feel like maybe we need to go like a year or two between TMNT adaptations at this point. Like. Mm. I feel like we've had more than one at a time at this point, like like multiple of them within yeah, I like, feel like a year. I agree with you for TV shows, but I do think for the movies they get a little bit of leeway because yeah, it's true. It's been a while since there was like a fully animated TMNT movie, today, Satan. Uh, bigger budget production, not like a direct TV Fuck TV you. thing or like an, a TV special. So I, I think they should go longer so between cartoons, for sure. Um, but I am extremely excited for this movie, nonetheless. Yeah. Okay, we're good. <laughs> it's been a while for me since I was excited about a Turtles movie. So <laughs> you know I'm what? That's ride. fair. I, I won't take this from you. It's just like, <laughs> I remember, uh, I think I tried to watch like the early 2010s version uh, that mm, had... Like um, CG? Yeah, 3D, uh, yeah, 3D animated. And it had... The guy who played Samwise Gamgee, voicing Mike, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Raph. Uh, yeah. Which was interesting casting. He, he did a very good job. It would only come through occasionally <laughs> when he would do like a motivational mm -hmm. speech. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's probably my least favorite version of like the recent Turtles cartoons. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on the 2003 version. That's my ride or die. But well, I did think that Rise was like visually really cool and I, I thought it was doing some fun things with the series and like modernizing it in a way that still retained like the core of what made it great uh but and i you know i, I wish they would have made more of that but if they're gonna move on to a new animated thing of some kind and it's gonna be a movie i think the direction they're going in is good um right i don't think that the 2012 kind of 3d one was bad necessarily uh it just wasn't my cup of tea personally it was a little bit too um, and I think maybe it's skewed for a younger audience. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's the other thing. Like, most of these turtle which is, you know, stories are, like, they are aimed yeah. at children, and then, you know... Which is completely fine, you know? That's... Right. And then it's like, you grow up a few years, and you're like, oh, well, why am I not relating to this anymore? Oh, yeah. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I think it just lost some of the, like, tone that I really liked in Rise in 2003, where it, it's... I don't think serious is the right word, but there was a little bit of edge to it. Uh, not that it was... This is, see, this is where it gets complicated to talk about. It's not that it was like grim, dark, and edgy. It just mm -hmm. was like I had a little bit of like something sharp around the edges that made the whole tone kind of call back to the Eastman and Laird comics a little bit and like work in a way that I think could appeal to a broader audience than just the kids that it's made for. Um, but that's not to say that the 2012 version was bad. Again, just not my cup of tea. Um, right. Ah. And I think that the thing that excites me about the trailer is it looks like it was made by people who just really like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and kind of get why they like them they get the kind of fun and the campiness of it all so i'm excited to see that interpretation with the budget of like a more major studio picture um that's good i saw a little bit of either bebop or rock setting in the trailer i don't remember which one off the top of my head right now oh, that alone was like they're in this <laughs> they're digging into the archives um now i'm not entirely sure what to do i guess we nudge it a little bit Oh no, hold on. No, it's gotta go in there. Be very, very careful. Nope. Cool. Awesome. Uh, the Michael Bay adaptation. I I don't think the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should be live action. No. <laughs> well, I, I think would not that... call that live action. <laughs> I would that technically release that counts as live action uh do i think it worked no. no of course not nah i think that also didn't quite get what made the turtles so beloved they they have to be equal parts like goofy and action heroes and i don't think that they quite nailed that they almost have to be more goofy than action heroes frankly they're teenagers they gotta yeah. be teenagers and they, they don't didn't, feel like teenagers they didn't feel like teens yeah. they're missing one of the four key words to make it a tmnt movie I'm not even sure if that would work. Oh, I guess it might. Okay. Okay. 
come on. Whoops. Yeah, I will say the 90s live action movies, uh, chat, you are correct. They do work. I rewatched all three of them for my birthday in a row. <laughs> that was how I celebrated this year. I highly recommend. They're extremely goofy, but they are extremely fun. Um, the first one, the like puppet effects are passable too good, and then they just get so, so much worse immediately after in Secret <laughs> of the Ooze, and I could not be happier that that's the case. Like, would it have been awesome to get three high quality movies? Absolutely. But do they de decay at exactly the right rate of like, oh, the budget has been cut because it's a sequel now? A hundred percent. And by the time you get to Turtles in Time, they're like barely articulating Fuck. turtle masks and it's, it rocks. I love it so much. Oh, I hate this puzzle. Oh, I hate all the puzzles. Turtles in Time is indeed a classic. Secret of the Ooze, probably my least favorite of the three. Uh, not that it's bad. Secret I just, of the Ooze. Um, they find out the secret of the Ooze that turned them into the TMNT. Also, though, Casey Jones not in that one, and oh, I think that boo. that is lies. Cody says Casey Jones does not appear in Secret of the Ooze, and that is a huge L for me as a person. Uh, <laughs> there's like a ride-along kid instead. Oh, uh, he does return for Turtles in Time in sort of a roundabout way, and that he is both back because there's the future and the past. And he is in the future as Casey Jones. And then in the past, there's a guy who just sort of looks like Casey that like ends up becoming part of their crew while they're in the past. Um, that was a thing in the 90s, wasn't it? Adding tag-along yeah. kids to stuff. Like I feel like what happened is like they were like, we can't get Elias oh, Codius back for this movie, God, so we will um, get a kid instead. I think it was like... Kids are our only guaranteed, like, moneymaker, so yeah. we need to hit the right demographic for them. They're our target audience, so we want to, in kind of the Wesley Crusher, we want to give them someone to, like, see themselves in. I just watched TNG, like, an hour ago. <laughs> no, sorry, it wasn't angry at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it makes sense. I understand why you do it, and I think that there are ways to include, like, the ride-along kid character that really work. Uh, but a lot of the times what does happen is that it just sort of becomes this character that seems too integral to the plot for reasons that an adult watching is like, why is this kid constantly in this, in this very avoidable danger? Uh, and that becomes a whole problem in and of itself. Yeah, the danger of like, oh, I thought we were making this character lovable, but instead we just made a really annoying character and then made the audience feel like uh, we wanted them to love them because we were mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, yeah, why would that work? Of course. How stupid of me. Alright, what the fuck? Are you sure it doesn't have to slide past the, um... Because there's that bottom left-hand one? I'm not sure of anything at this point. Like, there's the bottom left-hand tilting thing. If that was tilted towards the... Yeah, if I could get that to tight. tilt that way, it would be fantastic. I wonder. I wonder... Huh, how about that? We're in the game now. I am the pinball. Is that gonna... Nope. Okay, cool. Let's see if we can fuck with it from this. Who cares, right? Like, nothing matters. Life is pain, and this is stupid. And frankly, I don't believe that Mifa did this either. I think that they're lying to me. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a trial we all had to do to get our Divine Beast. No, totally, bro. Definitely. This better be good. Fine. Like a hundred percent. That chest is attainable. Mm. 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 Oh, hello. What? Well, I still don't know what that button did. 
Oh, I get it. It's for the ball. It's not for me. Okay, cool. Oh. Well, that makes sense. Because I really... <clears throat> I want this tilted the other way. It's hard to get that. Nope. Oh, almost. That's okay. I think we can make this work. This is definitely not how you're supposed to do this, or how I did this the first time. Casey Jones is not a mutant mayhem. I will be devastated. Uh, I rate most TMNT properties based on how good their Casey Jones was. Oh, come on. You cowards! The oh, camera has no idea where I am right now. Come on. You know you want to let me climb on the thing. Wouldn't it be just so fun? Come on, you cowards. Yes! Oh! I'm a genius? I'm not a genius. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! Guys! What do you have against creative solutions? Ugh, fine, whatever. This is stupid. Stupid with two O's. Alright. Alright, I'll stop fucking around on the inside of the pinball machine and go see if I can actually do this the way you're supposed to. I guess. I guess. I guess I'll do that. Okay, where was I? I love 2003's Casey Jones because he's what I grew up with. Um, Is that I, I the, love uh, the... That's the lovable meathead, Casey Jones. He's no, no, very no. much just Elias Codius, but also animated. <laughs> that was the... Oh, right, that was the 2D animated series, right? Yes. Uh, Sam Regal voiced Donatello. Right, that's the one where my boy Usagi oh. shows up like eight times. That one loved pulling characters from the comics and being like, you want to be in this for like 20 minutes? And they'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Um, they, cause that series, they did 2003, there was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then they did a sort of like, they're sort of sequel series, but they're really just continuations where they kind of changed the paradigm of the show. So like there was, Fast Forward was the first one um, where they got sent to the future and then they meet Casey and April's son and he runs this big tech company and they go on all sorts of future adventures and they don't have to hide anymore because it's the future and aliens are just yeah. around everywhere. Dicks! Um, and then after that, what they the did shit? Back what? to the Sewers what? where they what? just reset everything what? back to the original series kind of dealio where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are back to the sewers and they do regular stuff in the usual time. Um, super fun. Oh. That's what the one I grew up on. He used to play on four kids all the time. <laughs> huh. I, I guess I did it. All uh, right, fantastic. That one I would say, like, in terms of TMNT adaptations, is pretty straightforward. They do a lot of pulling characters and stuff from the comics, um, but, like, the actual characterization of each of the turtles and, like, Casey and April and everything is pretty close to, like, a slightly more serious version of the 90s cartoon mixed with a smidge of... I am a character who has to participate in storylines where, like, yeah. people might die. Um, oh, great. There was, in between that, there was the 2007 animated movie where Chris Evans voices Casey Jones. Oh, we love that one, uh, though. That's I got love fucking that. uh, Patrick Stewart it's, as the bad guy. <laughs> it's got an absolutely stacked voice cast for zero reasons whatsoever, and I love it. The funny um, thing is, like, it, it did the thing that a lot of movies do, where it's like, all right, we've got just some absolute pros for the main like six guys. And then we've got Kevin Michael Richardson and Jennifer Hale doing everybody else. <laughs> it's great, uh, 110%. Casey is not very important in that movie, but he is still great. Um, yeah, we love him. We love him. Gets points for being voiced by Chris Evans. Uh, gets points for rising, riding a motorcycle on screen. Uh, doesn't do too much else to like push him above the 2003 version or like the live action movies from the 90s or even frankly the 90s cartoon. Um, then there was the 2012 animated version. I'm probably missing some movies in between, but I don't care. Uh, I like that he's a teenager because they kind of just aged down the whole cast even more. Um, I think he's otherwise pretty fine. Like, I like him being a teen. I like that he kind of does dumb teen stuff, but in the same way that everything in that show is a little bit more almost low stakes, it just doesn't click for me. Mm. Um, was that the uh, was that the 3D animated one I said I watched? Yes. I think I remember Casey, but I am not yeah. sure. 
Um, and then from what I've seen of Rise, I believe Casey is a girl in that one, which does slap. Oh, um, yeah. I haven't seen enough of Rise to put uh, in, in the rankings so much. I liked what I saw. I liked the style a lot. They did play a lot with the characters, but I think they did it in a very smart way. Like, they shifted the group dynamic. They made Raph kind of the big guy leader. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then they made Leo the kind of Lancer. I don't love that but I think that they handled it relatively well. Um. I guess. I think it's, um, I've only seen a little bit of it, I've, mostly because people are like, the animation's incredible, and I've seen it, and it's like, yeah, the animation's really good. I don't know why they're the Ninja Turtles. These characters are basically unrecognizable, but like, yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right, I think it's like a fair palace. interpretation of them, but like, it's not, um, in terms of like, there's a few ways you can rate turtle shows. There's how good is the show itself just on its own merits, and then there's how close do they stick to like the turtles canon. And Rise is like way over on the side of non uh, canon compliant, but pretty Whoop. good in terms of being a good show on its own merits. Um, in contrast, like 2003 is like deeply, deeply, deeply on the canon compliant side of that spectrum. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, excited for the movie Mutant Mayhem. Um, okay. like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a lot. Of course. <laughs> I'm a big fan. All right. So the gist for the folks at home is that I have only Mipha's gear and I have to beat Waterblight Ganon. <laughs> nice. I've been talking so much smack. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually do it. Which turtle weapon would I want to have? In fascinating question. I think about this all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the real answer is I want Casey Jones' hockey stick. But ah, if no, I my ice that, block. I needed um, that. I mean, Leo is the one where like he just straight up has two Hold swords, on. and that's okay, I've I fence. I've done a little Hema. I understand hours. how to use a sword enough that I think if I had to in a pinch, that's the weapon that I could be the most effective with. But I do love the idea of just showing up to every fight with a big old stick. Gotta give my boy Donnie some credit. Um, it's kind of like how in the second Bionicle movie you find out the mask powers of all the guys and some of them are like mind control and um, invisibility and like talking to all creatures and then one guy just glows. Uh, I love that you and, uh, hate it when everyone else brings up Bionicle. And now you are the I one. have to know all of this, so do you. <laughs> and um, it does feel a little bit like Donnie is the glow stick of the Team Inti, and uh, I love that for him. I think he does an incredibly good job with it. And I think it'd be fun to like swoosh it around a bunch, you know, do some twirls and whatnot. So I'm going to go bow staff. Um, Hold on. This is not. This is no disrespect to my boy Raph, who I love dearly, with all my heart. But uh, I don't think the size are the things. They're not in the top three. Of, they're the last thing I would go with, probably on that list. Here's what I love um, about the Ninja Turtles, specifically the parts of the 2003 one that I've seen. Um, yes. Which is that. Uh, wait, where am I? Oh, goody. Um, You're around. Leo is the only one with a bladed weapon, which, according to cartoon rules, means he's the only one who's never allowed to hit anybody with it. Oh shit. Yes. A hundred percent. Constantly, Leo is being disarmed in that show. Yeah, and like, <laughs> or like when getting it stuck in something. Yeah, and when me and when my boy Usagi shows up, the, the two of them are just like kicking people because they both have swords. There's an arc later on where you get they get like sent to a essentially like a battle planet, and they got to be in a tournament arc for a while. Right. And I think in that one, Leo does actually get to use the swords like as swords for a bit. Out of the water, um, get out of the water, get out of the water, Link. Extreme circumstances like <laughs> lampshaded by the show for him to be able to just go all out right. uh, as opposed to all of the other turtles who are constantly hitting guys with their stuff and it's very funny because especially I mean you know obviously I only watch the episodes of Usagi in them because who could resist he's my boy oh hold on let me see if I can come on Urbosa yeah oh that's busted 
I don't know why they let me keep my champion abilities here. This feels really silly. Um, yeah. Oh! Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh! Ow, 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 ow. Oh, my bones. Oh boy. Wait, do I have any food? Mifa, tell me you packed a snack. Oh, yeah. Of course. A fish. Yeah, anytime um, Baxter Stockman and all the Mausers show up, you know that you're going to actually see some robots get axed in the show. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Samurai Jack for one, it's, If they're robots, yeah, you can do whatever you want to them. But it's just so it's fun. The exception. Kind of with the, um... Nope. Krang nope. No! Ah. Alien. They let them get axed sometimes, but it's a little bit more touch and go there. It depends on how much of the brain you can see at any given moment. Let me see. Where are you, you bitch? God, this is annoying. The camera's really not helping. Come on, show yourself. Oh, I'm out of arrows. That's why this isn't working anymore. Great. Ah. Wait, do I not have a shield? Oh my god, I don't have a shield. But was really, uh... She went all out. Huh. Ah! Oh, this is so annoying! God damn it. Alright. Fine. Come on, come down here, you bitch. No. Can I charge an attack without a, without a target? Oh, boy. Any chance Mifa's grace? Nope, okay. Great, I guess we have uh -huh. to do this again. <sighs> it's fine. We're fine. This is just stupid. You'll get it. Yeah, I know. Why none of the turtles use a trident as a weapon? <laughs> hey, it's not my fault they're making me deal with Mifa's dumbass weapon. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Ugh, it's like the Master Trials. They pretend I didn't even do it. Who's ready to see the cutscene? Again! <laughs> anyway, yes. Of the turtles. Alright, fuck it. Skip it. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maz Kosho, whatever. Into my mind palace. Let's go. Um... <laughs> <clears throat> I'm down to half so fast. But I guess we gotta really keep an eye on that. I hate having to use Cryonis to break the blocks. Especially when he's right, mm, like, yeah. above me, because then the camera really does not cooperate. Yeah, yep, okay, yep. Bite. They changed what the skip button was to weaken me. What's up, bitch? Haha! <laughs> you think that will stop me? Where you going? Where you going, big man? Venus Milo from the live-action TV show, The Next Mutation. Uh, that's probably my least favorite piece of any turtle. <laughs> all the oh, worst elements of the live-action movies combined with all the worst elements of a lot of TV show. Did I get you down to half yet? You bitch. Okay, great. <clears throat> Lucky, I'm actually on a platform this time. That's nice. Nope. Not today, Satan. Oh. Oh. Wait, where'd he go? What the heck? Oh, I see. He's right above me. Fun. Nope. Move your hand. My headphones are about to run out of power. I'm going to leave this call and jump back in after messing with my inputs a bunch, which we all know is great and Discord loves to do. Super so fun. I will be back in a hot minute. Please uh, do your best to not die in the meantime. And if you could, when I get back, have an answer to the which TMNT weapon would you most want to use. Perfect. Uh, locked and ready? Yep, see yep. you in a bit. All right, here be. Come on, Link, get up. Can I? <laughs> oh, it works! Alright, one more of those. Oh, no. I can't 
cancel that. All right. Oh, oh god, oh god. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to have happen, Link. Great call. That was annoying. I mean, none of them are fun. I think Waterblade is the one where I, I dislike the terrain the most. I want, I feel like he has a lot more health than he did the first time I fought him. So I know that the Blights basically gain health in order that you defeat them. So the first one you fight has like the lowest health bar, uh, and then the fourth one has the worst, which is why saving Thunderblight for worst isn't always the best move. Uh, oh, plot stuff. My, my. So, Princess, may I ask who the other chosen champions are? Goron Vigilance, Daruk. Rito Confidence, Ravali. Confidence. Gerudo Spirit, Robosa. And also, the Hylian with the sword that seals the darkness. <laughs> oh, me? Me. Oh. I like him a normal amount. Can you uh, hear me? Hello! Ooh. Ah, I could find my good uh, over-ear headphones that plug in, because I guess since moving I haven't needed to grab them, but it's okay because we have the shitty earbuds instead! Mm. How goes it? I see that you defeated something. Yeah, we uh, we killed Waterblight, but beefier, and um, now we're somehow having flashback for an event we weren't present for. Cass nice. is, is painting us a word picture with his music. Mm. Join me. Do a little Fish whatnot. Hemsworth baby edition. We'll go together so you can get a feel. I if I describe Sidon as like a Hemsworth. <laughs> no, no, chat loves that, but you're right. He's got the completely wrong build. Waterfall, a little flip. Sweet Sidon, should fate ever pass us, <laughs> I'm counting on you to protect our beloved home from harm. That's got big, like two weeks from retirement Stood. energy. Yeah, you know, like the whenever flags <laughs> were strong with this one. <laughs> I believe I'm reminded of the one time I watched now, Mortal Engines, uh, mm. which ah. Uh, which isn't a good movie, uh, but does have a few benefits. One of them being the casting director and I have exactly the same opinion on what constitutes a hot person. Uh, and also the writers are of the opinion that uh, classic tropes 
or a, of a gospel to be followed. So everything needs to be done by the book, which is great. Um, because that means that A, all the protagonists are these just gorgeous specimens of human perfection, and B, every character talks uh, like it's the first draft of their dialogue. <laughs> oh. So much stronger than before. The power of Mipha's grace will now recharge much faster. Thanks, Mipha. As powerful as you are, I am certain you can save Hyrule. As well as the princess had this exact conversation you. about the mortal engines before. Yes. I think on uh, Movie Struck, possibly, for the Jupiter Ascending episode. Quite possibly. I certainly didn't make you watch Mortal Engines. Um, but no. there is a bit where this kick ass, like, sky pirate. Lit no, she's not a sky pirate, but there are sky pirates. She's just affiliated with them. Um, she's, like, out of the blue, like, hey. Man, you know, I think I want to die among the clouds, right? Like, that would be pretty cool. Mm. I'd be okay with dying if it was under those circumstances. And I'm like, what an odd thing to bring up out of nowhere. <laughs> I wonder if something's going to happen to you. Um, and obviously she, she dies uh, helping them stop a big spooky death machine uh, that's making, like, like uh, an evil sky beam with a cloud effect. So she falls into clouds and it's like, wow, so poignant and shit. All right, where are we going? She did not make me watch Moral en Engines chat. I didn't. She made me watch Jupiter Ascending. I did. Very different. <laughs> you should all go listen to that episode of Movie Struck. I should really listen to that episode of Movie Struck. All right, what's closer? I did recently. I was doing some quality control checks on old episodes, and I was like, ah, oh, I'll do some of the Jupiter Ascending one. How's it hold up? about be the last. It's a fun episode. You should go check it out. Oh, um, goody. The Daru I'll go check out the next. newest episode, which was on Logan Lucky, a movie I, against all odds, really enjoyed. <laughs> Oh, Chet's calling Fred, me I even worse for this when you watch Jupiter Ascending. Look, for the record of the two, I think that Mortal Engines is a worse experience. Um, yeah. They are very comparable movies, I would say. I feel like Mortal Engines has less, like, in the bad movie system that I have oft talked of, where there are kind of three kinds of bad movies, ones that are actually bad and no fun to watch, so they're just a bad time, ones that are actually bad but fun to watch, so they're still worth it, and ones that are just critically panned but actually are really good movies. Um, Mortal Engines probably falls in the bad, bad part of that. Yeah, Mortal Engines is... It, Mortal Engines and Jupiter Ascending are both trying very hard to be the beginning of a franchise, which yeah. is not the same thing as trying very hard to be a good movie. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're both like, oh, we gotta establish all kinds of cool stuff. We gotta draw... A whole bunch of neat, like, cons man, we just got all these great ideas, it's fantastic, and we gotta capitalize all of our tasty nouns so that everybody knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, I loved watching that with sub the yes. guy with the captions on and the subtitles, <laughs> and it's like, oh, so many of these words are capitalized, meaning they are proper nouns, but that is not explained within the context of the movie itself, so if you're watching it, I don't know, at a movie theater that didn't have captions on? Right. You would never know. Whereas, like, the thing with Jupiter Ascending is that it is... It has a movie it wants to be, and it's trying to be that movie. It just feels like it's being written by people who have never seen that kind of movie. Or or have only, like, heard about them secondhand. It like, I, I mentioned there were... Written and directed by the Wachowskis. Right, which, like... and they're really good at this stuff most of the time. So, they are, but I think they also have a habit of getting, like, a little bit too deep into things. So giving them the keys to a franchise, potentially, uh, mm. does feel like asking for something that becomes so bloated and weighted down that you just can't actually get to the good stuff within it. Yeah, but um, also, like, like, the blocking in that movie is really basic. And yeah. considering the Wachowskis did the fucking Matrix, it's like, I feel like these guys are better than this at choreographing mm -hmm. stuff. And making it so that the, you know, important character moments and the important action moments go hand in hand rather than one next to the other. Like, yeah, it felt like they got so caught up on writing enough to create a franchise that they didn't spend enough time focusing on making this one particular movie cohesive and look good in yeah. addition to having all the information needed to spawn more movies, you know? Definitely. I also feel like, if anything, this movie is a, a, a really good, like good bad example for why you can't just write the big cool moments 
why you actually need wind up and character power, like like stuff that makes the moments mean something. Um, because there's so many points in that movie that feel like that, that look like a big romantic moment or like a fun dramatic bit, and then aren't because there's no there's nothing that planted there. Like the setup for it was not good, so the actual execution is just like the thin aesthetic approximation of what this powerful romantic moment should look like. Um, mm -hmm. The example being, of course, when uh, when Kane goes to, or, sorry, uh, Channing Tatum, werewolf, space dog man, angel, uh, much easier to remember, uh, goes to rescue Jupiter from, is it space kidnapping number one? The one that's not actually bad? Well, there's like three of There's them, three, so, yeah. You know. I think it's space kidnapping number one where it's the, the sister and she turns out to actually <laughs> not even really be like evil. She's just like, we should like hang out and talk about boys. Um, because you're like a genetic clone of my mom, basically. Uh, and Kane comes to the rescue, and he's like recently injured, and he's sneaking around all shirtless and vulnerable. And he's shirtless because he took off his own shirt of his own volition, and like he's not even that injured. And then he doesn't even need to do any dramatic rescuing because as soon as he shows up, Jupiter's like, "Oh yeah, I guess I should leave." And the lady who kidnapped her is like, "Cool." And then they do, and it's like this. This looks like if you turned the sound off, you could believe that this was an actually like dramatic romantic rescue from a guy who's like not at his best because uh, he cares so much. But when you watch the movie, you're like, oh, hello. You're like, well, that it doesn't make any sense. works better if you just saw the scene without the context of the rest of the movie, because yeah. then you'll be relying on tropes to understand it. And you'd be like, oh, what a cool, I know what powerful this part of the movie moment. is. Yeah. yeah. But when you watch it with the movie, uh, you're like, oh, this was completely unearned and um, I'm getting nothing from it. Exactly. So it's just, it's just, it's disappointing, but like it it's got the shape of a better movie. And then the last 15 minutes are randomly good. Like they randomly pulled it together for the last for the the third and final kidnapping. Like, I'm like the Wachowskis are skilled <clears throat> enough screenwriters and storytellers to where like there's nothing like you can see the threads of competence in this movie, but yeah. the execution is just so far off and like it needed so many more passes at the script and it just feels like it's trying to do so so much with because it, it needs to convince you that there should be more of this, and yeah. I don't think it's doing a good job of that, because no. it's getting too bogged down on what that more could be, and not focusing enough on creating an interesting hook in this uh, story. Right. Um, Whereas... For more on that, <laughs> yeah. the movie struck episode on Jupiter Ascending. Hell yeah. Um, but also, like, yeah. the, with Mortal Engines, it feels like th there is not a single surprise in that movie. You know? Like, mm -hmm. uh, up to and including, they do the thing that at this point, it's gauche to do, where the villain turns out to be the hero's father. Like, verbatim, it plays out exactly like you think it would. And early on, when, like, the, this, like, you know, the, the mysterious inciting incident girl has turned up, and the guy who's only ever known his life and the definitely not a totalitarian dictatorship he lives in mm -hmm. is like, oh man, she was saying all this crazy stuff about you being like evil and, and killing her mom. And the guy he's telling to was like, ah, did anyone else hear about it? Like, have you fucking, have you told anyone? And he's right. like, definitely not. And the guy's like, cool. And then fucking drop kicks him out over the railing out in slow motion, of course. There's not a single surprising thing in that movie. And if you're okay no. with that, it might be fun. Except the rest of the movie's not fun. <laughs> mm-mm. All right. That's the that the worst category of bad movie for me is the ones that are technically bad, like they're poorly made or poorly written or whatever, and then also no fun to watch. Because yeah. I will tolerate so much technical difficulty or like really crappy effects or bad acting if it's still fun for me to watch that movie. Uh, and it's just it's just it not sucks when that's not true. And sometimes it just isn't. <laughs> sometimes movies are just bad. Sometimes movies are just bad. Uh, seeing some questions about chat and who Indigo is. Hello, that's oh, me. Oh yes, I am uh, OSP's podcast producer, and I show up on streams and stuff sometimes because I'm just around. Uh, also, I do a lot of my own stuff. Um, yeah, I produce podcasts freelance. So if you ever if you're into listening to stuff, <laughs> um, I edit for Dominic Noble and his video editor. I'm the host of Movie Struck. Uh, a movie review podcast, which Red and Blue have both been guests on, mm -hmm. um, as well as the producer and one of the players on Rolling with Difficulty, a D&D uh, &D 5e actual play podcast that is just wrapped up its third season like a month ago and is uh, geared up for season four this summer. Yeah. Um, Red, also a player on that. I drag Red into a lot of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm an easy guest. I like talking a lot. Mm. Aha! There it Goes is. Around. <laughs> Uh, but for OSP, I'm technically just the podcast producer. Um, just pop into stuff as it. Happens. On the subject of kind things of that I don't see how Daruk could have possibly done. Yeah, the flying. You know, the thing Rivali does. Yeah. Maybe he's just really good at rolling. Mm, maybe. Oh God, let me up, let me up. How? Ziggy is doing great. Thank you for asking. She's been asleep on my bed behind me this whole time. She's been really into curling up into a little ball recently, which turns her into this sort of black blob in the corner of the room. Really into it. Aw, oh, heck yeah. Uh, and people in chat telling me to watch Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Boy, howdy, have I seen that movie. <laughs> wow, guys. Rough read on that, if you didn't realize. <laughs> I grew up, that was my favorite movie when I was a kid for a very long time. Really but also, we have done a Shark Boy and Lava Girl. movie struck episode on Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Uh, it's that same era of like the Spy Kids movies, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, that were just always on. And they were like, they were my favorite thing as a kid, you know? They were goofy in all the right ways. They had exactly the right amount of like, that would be cool if it was real yeah. stuff in it. That Explain to fantastic. me how Daruk did this game. Explain to me. That in the lava. He lava. He lava, sir. He lava, sir. Right. He We're gonna get into sir. why that could not have possibly happened soon. Mmm, maybe. Come on. Maybe. Come on. We don't know. Right, down. No! Don't pause over the lava! <laughs> God damn it! I did not see Spy Kids 4D. That is the one that I. I was too old for the Spy Kids at that point, and it just never came up. Is that the Spy one with Kids Elijah Wood? Uh, no, that's Spike Kids 3D Game Over, which also has all of the Sylvester Stallone playing, like, five characters in it. Um, Incredible. that one is probably my favorite in that it's the one I've seen the most times, and it is the one where they were just like, I don't know, let's have everyone who's ever been in this, uh, movie series come back <laughs> in the finale, it's just, like, cameo. Heck um, yeah. Not the one with the hardest line of all time, um, uh... Which is the second movie where Steve Buscemi says, "Do you think God stays in yeah, heaven because, because he too lives human. in fear of what yeah. he's created?" Which is a quote that was fundamental to who I am as a person, uh, as a ten-year-old. Was he? Was that the one with like the thumb bad guys? Uh, that's the first one. Oh, okay. I think I saw one of these movies once at, a, at like an after-school program. The first one is like a competent movie in some ways. <laughs> it's like the, the effects are goofy, but like the plot is relevant. Like they gotta go rescue the kids. Had to go rescue their parents. They find out that they're spies from mm -hmm, this guy mm -hmm. who's got all these thumb goons. And they go, and they do a bunch of spy activities, and they rescue their parents. And uh, Machete is their uncle, just playing. Oh yeah, himself. yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> dude, endless and then respect the second one, they go to like, now they're spies. They go to an island. They do an island plot. And then the third one, uh, it's like time has passed. The spy game is sort of like in and out. Of course. Um, and they, Junie gets called in on like one last job, and it's one going to this ride. video game to find his sister. It's a whole thing. Of course. I like them a lot. They're fun. Um, no! Damn it, Link! Fine, whatever. Oof. Whatever. Link. It's just a little quick on the trigger there, Ace. Okay, fine. Yep, yep. Let's get on it. Let's get on it. Ah, uh, this reminds me of waiting for a gondola in New Zealand. Link, I swear to God, you're really making this hard for me right now. I saw a question in chat about how to get your foot into the door of the podcasting scene, uh, mm. and... Just it's kind of do weird, it, right? You just yeah, that, it's, yeah, it's a weird field because it doesn't really necessarily have a scene. There are a few, like, networks that will hire editors or producers occasionally, but realistically, the best way to get your foot into the door of podcasting is to start a podcast or find a friend who's got a podcast they want you to edit or, like, go offer to do some editing for someone um, who's, like, starting up a podcast or whatnot. People are always trying to recruit editors for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a lot of gigs on Twitter. I found a lot of gigs uh, just, like, browsing Reddit. Oh. Um, oh. But really, like, I would recommend starting your own because the best way to learn how to do something is to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't even have to ever release the podcast necessarily, but just knowing what the all the steps of the process, including the host side of things, will make you that much more valuable of a resource for someone who might want to hire you to like produce or edit their podcast later on. For sure. Plus, you start to get an ear for like what kind of settings you think work best for certain systems, how to run like the tech that you are most comfortable with, how to publish things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you're in college, definitely check out your college radio station because in all likelihood they will have some sort of podcast Whoa. arm. Um, oh god! But <sighs> Yeah. No! It's... Damn it! Sorry, we're good. 
you know, it's it, it's kind of a, unfortunate. Like, I wish I had better advice than you gotta just do it. But podcasts are a very individual field. Like, there isn't a lot of um, company based upward mobility. If you're a podcast editor, you're probably also editing some other sort of audio or video for a company if they're gonna hire you full time. Uh, and if you're doing it freelance, you kind of just have to have something to show people to show that you know how to do this stuff. And the best way to have that is to just make some stuff yourself. Yep. Um, All right, I have an idea. I don't think it's rules as written. But I also don't think I care all that much. Hello, friend. Hmm, that worked great. Let's do that more. Hey, friend. Try that again. Ah. Mm. Don't worry about it, we're good. Great. The whole plan's coming together. It's all coming together. <laughs> can I parry these? Maybe. I can! And it works like a dream. Okay. Nice. Come on, block. Come on, cube. Good, good. Always with the cubes. Always with the link. There we go. Always with the cubes. Always with link. the cubes with this one. There are other shapes, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. All good stuff. Everything's really coming together. Oh yeah, it's all working great, like a dream. Yeah. I gotta go next. Okay, I think I got this. Aha, uh -huh, there he is. Judging my every action. Okay, there's something here. Yes. Probably can't hurt to do this first. Aha! Perfect. Nice. My favorite Disney Channel original movie. Um, I liked Camp Rock a lot as a kid because I wanted to be hashtag different. Uh, <laughs> but... I didn't watch a lot of um, Disney Channel original movies because we didn't have cable at that point, so it was... I missed a lot of them their first go through, so a lot of the ones I like are just because I watched them like in uh, high school at a sleepover or something as a mm. nostalgia trip, and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. Uh, but I watched like, you know, the big ones like High School Musical, um, Camp Rock, etc. Alright, someone explain to me how Daruk was supposed to do this shrine, please. <laughs> Why it was a challenge. I guess? Yeah, that's right. We were a big PBS and four kids house. Hold four it down. Four kids. Four kids. Every Saturday morning, I watched every goddamn show so that I could get to the Winx Club. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know when in the day it came on. I just knew it was the last show that aired on that block. So if I started watching four kids early in the morning, eventually the Winx Club would come on. Of course. Here's the thing. I will sass four kids with the best of them because, of course, you know, the four kids Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. dub. Haha, -ha, four kids Pokemon. Uh -huh. Four kids doing all this, the, the censorship. But they and... were holding it down in the cartoon Saturday morning cartoon block for a very long time for us non-cable having kids. Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. The dubs are awful. They did have the good stuff. Look, they had, okay. they had well, the 2003 DMT. They had Yu-Gi-Oh! They had the Wings Club. They had a lot of stuff going on for them. But, like, here's the thing. The dubs translation quality and the censorship and the localization those are of course laughable the voice actors they had were like good at anime Doctor. dubbing 10 years before anyone else was excellent uh, yeah, sonic x <laughs> like i i've mentioned this they did um uh so so a lot of the guys who were in Yu-Gi-Oh the dub uh were working together on other stuff before that mm -hmm. um and in the 90s which was a little bit the Wild West of anime dubs. Uh, basically, uh, how to describe it? Nobody had really decided what they needed to censor yet, so you would just get these extremely like loyal translations popping up. Like, mm -hmm. the, the dub version of Slayers is pretty much the same as the sub, except it's significantly worse, because all the voice actors are giving completely different performances, 
because anime dubs were the Wild West. The first, like, good dubbed anime is basically Cowboy Bebop, um, mm, because yeah. that one had an actual vocal director, and I think it's Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who's, like, been doing this for, for decades at this point and is herself a very good voice actor. But they actually had basically a vocal director who was like, here's the kind of performance I think you guys should all be giving. So everyone is kind of in the same wheelhouse. And even then, if you watch the dub, it's not great except for Steve Blum. He's like the only person in the main cast who really knows what he's doing. And this was how a lot of 90s dubs were. Like, people would just kind of do their darndest with what they thought the role required. So you get somebody who's like, okay, they sound kind of like a normal human. And you get some mm -hmm. people that sounded like fucking cartoon basset hounds. And some people that sounded like like a serial mascot. Um, and some people actually kind of doing a good job. Uh, you but... can cry One Piece for Kids Dub Zoro out of my cold, <laughs> dead hands. <laughs> but the Was thing... he doing a good job? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, any time I'm watching a 90s dub and I'm like, wow, this one person is just killing it. Like, everyone else is not doing a good job, but they're actually kind of killing it. It's somebody from Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Yeah. And not everybody from Yu-Gi-Oh! is good. All the love in my heart to Seto Kaiba. He's kind of the first <laughs> voice role that guy had that I was like, that's really good. In a lot of other cases, I'm like, he just can't really put enough sriracha on that to like make the bit compelling. It's like, okay, he can do like the, the talky dialogue, but whenever a character needs to yell, it's like, ah. Um, anyway, which is the opposite problem a lot of other voice actors had. Like if you, if you watch like the, the early episodes of Bleach, it's like Johnny Young Bosch sounds only good in the fight scenes <laughs> when he gets to yeah. yell. But when he has to talk like a normal have, person, like, Ichigo just doesn't work. an all time favorite anime dub? Cause I do, and I don't think it's gonna be the same one that you have. I don't think I do actually. Um, there are dubs that I like. I don't think I've ever encountered a show where I like the dub more than I like the sub version. Uh, there's a lot of really exactly good- I exactly once. Ooh. <laughs> exactly once have I encountered a show where I like the dub more than the sub. Uh-huh. It's Oron High School Host Club, and I need oh. you to be on this one. Because <laughs> I do think- No, no, you're right, you're right. The dub is so good. The dub is so good. It's, yeah. it's more fun to watch that show dubbed than it is to watch it subbed. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Everyone is doing exactly what they need to be doing. The translations are fine. I'm like, this is this is working for me on every level I need it to be working for. I like how they got Travis Willingham for the character that doesn't talk. They got Travis Willingham for the character who doesn't talk. <laughs> and then also you got J. Michael Tatum doing the exact same character he's always he doing. Do yeah, he like does good. that one role. <laughs> he does that one role that he's always doing. And then sometimes Travis Willingham will just have to like make a mouth noise once an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest 50 bucks he ever made. <laughs> He's great. And I'm just like, everyone is doing an excellent job. All the voices sound perfect for the characters that they're playing. Mm -hmm. It rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's so good and it makes me so mad there's not more of it. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. There, there's a lot of shows where I'm like, this dub makes sense, but you know, then I watch it subbed and I'm like, oh, I can take this. And the so. songs rock too. It's just the one theme song and the one outro song, but both of them are excellent. Heck yeah. Uh, Hold on, we can resist some luminous stones. You when can't tell me that when you hear Run start playing, you don't get a little bit hype inside. <laughs> that end credit song goes hard. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reacquaint myself. I've only ever watched Oran Host Club once. And, it's uh... a whimsical feeling that cannot be explained. <laughs> you just feel it deep in your soul when you hear that. You hear that song, and all of a sudden you're like, "Yes, I am in my, in my. I'm at some exclusive academy, and I've knocked over an expensive vase, and I'm feeling sort of wistful about it. It's perfect. I it nails like... it exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Oran is in the same category as like Ranma, where it's like, it's doing gender fuckery in a way that the author definitely did not intend, but definitely awakened a lot of people who watched it to be like, oh, oh. Oran has like a weird, I haven't done any research into the author or any of the, like I've just seen the show, right? But just on vibes from the show, like they do a lot more like openly queer content than a lot of other shows of the same era did. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Like. Especially with the main character's dad, and there's an episode where they go and they're working for, uh, like, a similar character, and it's just like, if nothing is explicit, because it is still, like, an early 2000s animation, mm -hmm. so, you know, within those confines. But I think it is doing a lot more, a lot more openly than a lot of other shows were doing at the time, and it is a bit goaded for that. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Certainly there's definitely, not. definitely some stuff in there that's, mm. but, uh, in terms of, in the same way, Shoujo has always been holding it down. 
doing yeah. the good stuff. People need to put some respect on its name. I feel like okay. shonen anime is only ever gay when it like it just it it's so misogynistic that it like circles back exactly. around to being gay by accident. Whereas shoujo has been like, we have had Sailor been... Uranus and Neptune for decades. We're from the beginning. Yeah. So, this is gonna be fun. This I understand how Daruk did. This makes sense. <laughs> This feels like it's exactly up his wheelhouse. Oh, let's go hit something really hard until it dies. Oh, boy. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, a, just a bunch of the, um, the, the early Yu-Gi-Oh! dub actors were just killing it, like, decades before everybody else really got a handle on it. Uh, Dan Green, obviously, is, like, the number one, because it, it, cause he, he did Yami and Yugi. Um... And obviously there's some hilarity where it's like, that's supposed to be a teenage boy, and, uh, that's, that, come on, really? <laughs> um, all right, here we go. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but he's just, performance-wise, can't be beat. Um, oh boy. Why did that work? Oh boy, my stamina. Like, no. Oh, good, it did work. Stamina recharge! Woo! Let me land on him, please. This is a really aggressive wind tunnel. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Arbosa. Uh, we got a question about the comic making process in chat. Oh yeah? You know, what was the question? You seem to be relatively uh, 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 not busy at the moment. Uh, um, yeah, why would I? Why would I need to uh, practicing before putting out your comic? What sort of things did you do to practice? Uh, they're, they're looking uh, for us. Uh, oh, damn it! <laughs> your own creative process. So what kind of stuff did you do, you know? practice in art and whatnot before you put out the comic. Okay, hold on. Okay, it's how far is so close to dead. Give me just a second. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, let me just see if I can... Let me see if I can... Oh, well, that sort of worked. A couple more of those. One more sriracha on that. Yes, I did it. Okay, so comic stuff. Uh, yeah, uh... I mean, obviously I did a ton of, like, figure drawing and, um... You know, just like and whatnot. Yeah, the normal amount of learning how to draw. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna do this until I felt like I could consistently put down on paper what I saw in my head. And boy, it took me a while to get there. Um, but for that, you know, you 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 either do a lot of figure drawing or you just get really really used to like sitting down and trying to draw out something that you want to see, you know? Just mm -hmm. <laughs> find something you want to be weird about and uh, just draw that a lot. Uh, <laughs> and you'll get really good at that one thing. Uh, yeah. This is also why you can usually tell from an artist's style <laughs> if there's a thing they're weird about. <laughs> it, when, <laughs> when I say weird about, I mean this with the least amount of judgment possible. It's like, sometimes yeah. it's just like, okay, these per this person's like, faces are pretty normal and like, the hair is pretty nice. And then, like, the hands are really, really detailed. Like, that kind of thing. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, you, you naturally practice the things you want to draw, and you get better at the things that you practice the most. Um, so, as a result, you often just end up getting accidentally better at, you know, just the things that you like doing the most. Um, oh, uh, and for comics specifically... The very first thing I recommend you do is pick up a copy of Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. Uh, mm, yeah. Because it is solid gold. It only makes more sense the more I watch it. Oh, shit. That was easy. Ah, because the true trial starts now. Um, but yeah, Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics is solid gold. I A while back, somebody on Tumblr asked me this. You might be able to find the post. It's actually pretty helpful as far as resources go on this, um, and, that's not gonna, is it? Nope. I'm way too far. Uh, someone was like, oh yeah, a lot of this sounds similar to Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics, and uh, I reread it, and I was like, oh, that's because I internalized all of this from Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. <laughs> um, 
And it is, in fact, extremely good, and I highly recommend. Okay. I like to... I don't publish any comics because uh, my art is a yes. the only hobby I have that has not been monetized, and I refuse to do anything with it. But I yep. like to... Because sometimes I want to draw, but I don't have any ideas. I have a comic that I just constantly work on whenever I can't think of something else to work on instead. Right. Um, and I have a process for that that I really like that I think actually could be useful if you were making a comic. So uh, I like to do a really rough storyboard all on one page where I just like write down all the dialogue and do little like stick figure doodles of where people are going to be standing so I can line up all my boxes and whatnot. Then go and do, you know, your rough art. Then you go do your line art. Then you go do your color. But just like having a nice little like board to look at of what a chapter could look like. I love working on those. I would mm. do so much if I only had a draw stick figure <laughs> to go with it. Um, so, you know, there's infinite processes to any sort of art. I feel like you gotta just kind of find a starting point that works for you because I know like Red and I have two very different processes for approaching a similar project. You know, yeah. every artist is gonna have a different process that works for them. Uh, and just kind of finding things like the amount of prep you need to do, what kind of prep is actually useful for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It just kind of involves fucking around and finding out, for lack of a better term. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, also, a yeah. lot of it you're kind of gonna learn on the go. Like you can only do so yeah. much preparation. Um, you know, you can only prepare for the things that you know you'll need to prepare for, and there are gonna be things that you don't know you need to deal with until later. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. hello. What? Did I... What? What? I don't know what just happened. It didn't open the door. How That's... do we address writer's block and or uh, artist block? Um, I basically just work on the comic is my artist block thing usually because I find that mm. working on something that I have... Because worst case scenario for that, if I really can't even think of a single thing to write down, I'll just work on some of the sketches or line art or something where I've already done the thinking part and I can just mechanically exercise my hand and sometimes that helps jog it. Um, sometimes it does not, you never know. Uh, sometimes you gotta just do something completely different for a while and hope that it'll spark something. Uh, that's usually my go-to. But Red, how do you deal with like artist block, writer's block kind of deals? Oh, uh. Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on the type of writer's block, because sometimes the solution is, oh, I, I just need to sort of play with this concept. Like, I'll, um... Basically, when I don't know what I'm going to be doing, I will just take a blank page of my actual physical sketchbook and just start drawing out little character moments and interactions and stuff, and, like, ways mm -hmm. that scenes could play out, fun little one-liners, moments like that, and I'll just play with it. Um, and that can sort of shake some ideas loose sometimes, but sometimes the writer's block is just because, you know, there's no gas in the tank. And when that happens, I need to do just literally anything else. Like, yeah. get outside, watch a movie. Why does it keep going late on the draw list? Oh, okay. If I'm really having, uh, if I really want to write specifically and I'm having some blocks, sometimes I will just put on the Trope Talks playlist and, like, shuffle it and just use Aww, that as background shucks. noise. Because it's talking about the thing, but it's not necessarily talking about a thing that I need to listen to because I've seen all these videos before. So it's True like, that. okay. Great. I'm in the right zone, but I'm not really listening. So it, it kind of what? What sparks is something. It's the same reason I was always used to put um, procedurals on in the background when I was editing, when I worked at this uh, company where I did very rote editing jobs, where like you kind of just had to zone in. You had to force yourself to be in the zone. Having right. some sort of like ignorable noise on the side really, really worked for me in a way that like putting on score and stuff wouldn't, because then I would kind of zone into that, you know? Hmm. Okay, so hitting that again is not the solution. It's like a timing thing, isn't it? Well, of course it's a timing thing. It's just, it looks like the timing thing is I have to get it in over here. And like, I don't know how I'm supposed to do that because the ball don't fit through the slats. And also that thing isn't like a thing. And the chest in it just had a diamond in it. And the diamond doesn't open the door. <laughs> To the right of the door, you already got that chest. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, I see. There's a second cannon. How silly of me. I was yelling about that. Thank you, chat. As always, I really appreciate how kind and generous you are with my patience, and the fact that this game is not always laid out the most intuitively. 
one's here for the game. They're here for our thrilling team and tea based banter. Oh yeah, of course. Do you have a favorite Master Splinter iteration? Not really. Yeah. Like he's. Fine. I love the funky rat puppet from the '90s movies, but oh, I do think, like, realistically, my favorite's probably just childhood bias, the 2003 version. <laughs> yeah, of course. Everyone likes the Master Splinter they grew up with. I like when he's a like actually competent mentor and not just sort of like a goofy con man. They do tend to do that with him sometimes, where they're like, well, what if we made him kind of silly? And I'm like, well, he can be silly, but he still needs to be, like, a good... He needs to be wise ninja. and shit. Yeah. He needs to have guided the turtles to be better turtles. Okay. Easy. Easy does it. Sure. Oh, boy. Oh yeah, so so for writer's block, there's a bunch of stuff about it, but oftentimes it's ah yeah yeah why not? Um, uh, sometimes it's because you need to be just doing anything else. Uh, often, I think when you're writing, sometimes it feels like I have to figure this out because if I don't figure it out, it's not going to get solved. And in actual fact, mm -hmm. um, in my experience, a lot of the writing gets done by uh, what my dad affectionately refers to as the better writer in the back of your head, which is, you're not touching it, you're just sort of letting it sit and percolate in your like subconscious, and then your brain will do something with it. And you'll wake up and be like, oh my god, this makes perfect sense, how did I never think of this before? And it's like, well, you did think of it, it's just the part of it that thought of it is not the thinky brain part that you, you know, you think in words with, it's the behind the scenes part that does a lot of the complicated stuff when you're not looking. Um, so sometimes you just need to let a concept alone, and the reason why you have writer's mm -hmm. block is because you're trying to pick it up and like use your thinky brain on it when your your background brain is the one that needs to take a crack at it. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what I wanted to happen. What got us to do a D&D &D podcast? Um, me. Yeah. <laughs> I pitched it, it was so you! Often, and then we cast it after that. Um... Uh, everyone who emails us doesn't know this because we've had brands email like, Dear Austin, we want to talk to you about your podcast. And I'm like, no, 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 you misunderstand. Who does what on this show? Uh, no. Uh, I wish I was the big cheese. No, no, this is the big cheese. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wrong name. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do a D&D podcast because all of the shows I was producing at the time were pretty uh, simple and low uh, tech relative to how much like it took low effort to produce them relative to the actual content that's put out um and so i was like this will be a fun challenge plus then i get a reason to force my friends to play D, &D with me on a regular basis and we have to like take the scheduling seriously and it just really clicked we got a great group together um you had a little really too much fun. free time and you got suspicious so you obviously had to yeah. make more trouble I for yourself freelance and i was like you know what would be great <laughs> more work unpaid <laughs> Um, oh, no, come but on, it's, that was it's, close. All right, let's try one it more. It was it was percolating for a while. I'd kind of wanted to do an actual play for years before I even graduated college, and it just kind of felt like I had the technical skills and the right group of pals to, to pull it together. I appreciate um, this because I'm one of those people for whom, yeah, yeah, it's hard to do stuff if I don't have an audience. If that makes <laughs> sense, there are some things that I can do that are just self motivated and fine. But there are a lot of things that I really only enjoy doing if I know somebody else is going to see it and enjoy it later. Um, mm -hmm. Which it feels weird to say, or, or rather feels weird to admit, because I think there's a, a sect of art and artists that sort of feels like, oh, well, you know, the truest, purest form of art doesn't care about the audience at all. And it's like, then in what sense is it art? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think yeah. that art is always a communication between the artist and the, um, the audience, and art that gets a little too caught up in the artist often tends to suffer as a result. It's like, well, I'm sure the artist had a good time with this, but, like, nobody else is benefiting from this in any way. Um, yeah. I also think that there are two different elements to the creative process. There's... Or two, two, two different internal drives, and they're separate, and people have them to different levels. And one of them is, I really, really want to make this thing so it exists, and the other one is, I really, really, really want to share this thing with other people. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the sharing instinct is extremely strong, 
specifically in the space of like, hey, I want an info dump about my hyperfixation. And it's like, yeah, that's not wanting to create something. The thing that was created already exists. That is wanting to share something so much that your brain refuses to take no for an answer <laughs> and doesn't care who you're talking to. Someone's going to hear about it. Um, I and also get the element of like, Mm -hmm. Especially, particularly with podcasts, but with any production, like I do production for a living, and there is a part of me that loves the actual process of making something in this like tech-based format, right? Right. So, and there's different requirements for different types of podcasts or videos or whatever, and so a non-zero part of like, why do you pitch rolling with difficulty over any other kind of like you could have done like a scripted narrative show or like anything else? It's like, well, I wanted the specific. Like, I wanted to get to the nitty-gritty of the specific tech challenges involved in producing a unscripted, long-form uh, podcast with right. multiple cast members that would involve a heavy prose production, that kind of stuff. Um, and I feel like that was almost separate from an audience. But then uh, once we uh, started to make this thing, like, it's kind of like you're saying, like, there is still an impulse. Like, you want to have an audience, you know? Yeah. You want to feel like it's a conversation almost. Excuse me. Yeah, you, you want to share it. Um, for me, D&D, uh, &D, I have fun playing D&D, &D, but D&D &D in and of itself does not tend to give me more energy than it takes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a good time doing it, but in isolation, it's like kind of a neutral event for me. Um, doing the podcast, I have a lot of fun with, um, <laughs> in large part because I know that other people are getting hit a kick out of it. If something really cool happens, I don't need to do any work to share it. People are just going to see it anyway. And that is kind of ideal for the way that my brain works. Uh, so, so that all works out very nicely. Um, ooh, it's my old friend, the Guardian Stalker. <laughs> Ziggy has moved to be on my lap, which is very cute, but I'm wearing wired headphones. And when her butt moves, she moves them just a little <laughs> bit out of my ear. Oh. Okay. Am I in the right place? Oh, I'm a little bit south of the right place. Uh, um, killing this also thing. rolling with difficulty is just a ton of fun. I had so much fun making it. Uh, yeah. And playing the actual sessions is a blast. We have a great table. Um, and I'm so excited for season four. Me too. Uh, I am not I'm excited at all. This goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just glad we got my season out of the way early. <laughs> now I can relax. Really, we did sort of the... Uh, we had... I made Danny the character with the intent of it being like, this will be an easy character to just like play off of everyone else. I didn't realize it was going to end up kind of being like a character a season in terms of arcs. Not that everyone doesn't have stuff to do in every season, but like, you know, the main thrust of the season tends to, to vary around a particular character. Right. Uh, and I was like, great, we're doing the Kiana season. This rocks. Oh, fun. The Finbar season. Oh, no. The Veerla season. Shit. I got to be the, <laughs> the next season. <laughs> It's like, mm, okay, now I gotta really sit down and think about to myself where I want this character to go. And I don't normally do that for D&D oh, &D games. Oh, this is something oh. that's pretty unique to the podcasting experience for me. Because I feel like when I'm playing a home game, uh, I'm less concerned about... I'm less aware that there is an audience who listens to this, who cares about this character, outside of me playing my dumb little game. Uh, and I gotta make sure that it, this character is doing things that are in character, and then the actions and the plot will be satisfying to the audience. Uh, even though nothing is scripted, so I have no idea where it's going. Um, and it's super fun. Whoa! Like, like, come on, man! I wish I could say I had the Travis Willingham approach to D&D, &D, but realistically, I'm more of an Emily expert, and I'm oh, violently I mean, we, we love Emily, so... We love Emily, but Chaos do Emily. I want to be a Travis? A hundred percent. If you wanted to watch or listen to Rolling with Difficulty, hypothetically speaking, uh, it is available on YouTube by just searching Rolling with Difficulty and also all Give fine podcasting platforms by searching the very same thing. Um. You cannot win, Anakin. There he goes. <laughs> oh, right by his friend. Hmm. Oh, he's like a streamer. He's doing great down there. Remember me. All right, back to the actual plot. Does legs drop any good bits? Probably not. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Huh. <sighs> but yes, check out Rolling with Difficulty on uh, where all good podcasts are podcasted. And on YouTube, the YouTube, YouTube uploads are very popular now. Yeah, um, they're great because I they spent a long time animating them. So yeah. please. <laughs> Also, uh, what we really like is that they have a comment section so that we, we get to see how people feel about it in, like, 
real time, which is really nice. Because uh, podcasts sort of really only allow for comments on, like, easy, easy. Uh, Apple Podcast has a review section, and I do read them because often they are very funny. Uh, but it's like moment... it's reviews for the show overall, so you don't get any. Yeah. The only way to really be like, "Wow, that one moment was nuts!" is like on the YouTube video. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a Discord server for Rolling with Difficulty that's linked in all the show notes, and that, and there's a lot of great conversation in there. Although personally, I tend not to read through too much of it. Uh, yeah, me neither. But it is very I... cool that it exists. I mean, you know, some some spaces need to exist just for fans. Mm -hmm. uh, Yep. Only for fans, uh, you could say. Anyway. Yeah, and also fanfic is totally fine. If you want to write it about the characters, we have put out a product into the world, yeah. and you are welcome to make fan content around it. Our ability um, to legally read it is a little bit dubious, but it's probably yes, I probably won't be reading it because I don't want to accidentally, like, co-op an idea or anything. That's like, the main hate, thing, yeah. That's the same reason I don't listen to a lot of other movie review podcasts, is I'm like, I never want to just kind of, like, internalize something and parrot it back out. Yeah. But I am... Absolutely blown away that people even want to make fan content based on our silly little stories. So by all means, uh, right away. Um, and where should you start listening for Rolling with Difficulty? Uh, it's technically episodic, so like every episode is its own I contained mean. adventure. <laughs> but I would start at season one, episode one, if I were you, um, just because the, there does tend to be some forward momentum to the the characters and everything. Um, and uh, while well, you probably could jump in at one of the later seasons. Uh, you might miss a few of the details or callbacks and whatnot, so, you know. All right. Up to you. We found the plot. <laughs> Speak to me, fellas. So sweaty, brother. Pump it up, brother! Do you know why Champion Root chose this place to train, brother? Neither do we! But us Gar and Blood Brothers are gonna find out by completing the training ourselves! I'm sure this is some part of Lord Druk's secret Goron camp training. Intense! We're gonna do all we can to be mighty Gorons, just like Lord Daruk. It's the only thing we have, blah, blah, blah. Feel the burn, uh, brother! Season what? four of Rolling with Difficulty will be out this summer. We are meeting soon to decide the exact dates, and there will be an announcement, but summer yeah. of this year uh, for season four. Stand on the lava, brother. The game is going to make me set myself on fire. I guess technically there is an episode zero to season one, Ooh. which was like the... Uh, test session we all recorded as a practice for using all the tech and stuff, but it was not part of the original release of the podcast. It was released during the break after season one uh, by popular request demand. So um, you could skip it and you would be missing very little, but it's it's there if you want to listen to it. All right, I have to go stand on lava now. Oh, hold on. I also have to kill some stuff first. Hey, buddy. You a fire enemy? Looks like it. <laughs> nice. Lizard, lizard, lizard. Ah, oh, I didn't get the lizard. Are we doing any sort of donation thing for the stream? I think. Oh, uh, this one? No, I didn't out. set one up. Sorry. Yeah. We're just hanging out and shooting the shit, so no need to donate anything. Just your time and entertainment mm -hmm. value. Uh, for the... Come on, come on. Ziggy, no, Ziggy! She almost took my headphones with her. Huh. Get her tail on the loop of one of them and just went to jump off the chair. Incredible. Chaos. She made big cameos on this week's Movie Struck. I decided <laughs> to leave all of them in. Um, just for the shits and gigs of it all. Ziggy is so loud and I love it. It's so rare to actually have a cat that gets picked up on a mic. She's incredibly loud, and not only is she getting picked up on a mic a lot of the time, she's getting picked up on my Shure SM7B, which is an incredibly low pickup pattern, which yeah. she is, like, right on it, screaming. <laughs> she is so screamy. I love her, but she's insane. That's um, not helpful. Okay, let's, let's not sidestep into the lava. No! No! Hold on, it's got one corner out. Mm. Oh, come on. So come close. On, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, just let me have it. I want it. Oh! Fantastic. Okay. Saddle, 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 saddle. Alright. Excuse me, fellas. Squeeze right by ya. Ziggy, coming back. You left and now you immediately regretted it, huh? Uh, uh. 
<laughs> you thought, oh, I'd have a little trip, I'd be on a little bit of a, a sassy moment, and then you decided, actually, I want attention, so you've come no. right back to me, is that what's happening? Why, why doesn't it go in all the way? Okay. Ziggy is my cat, she is all black, and, um, just vibing. She's just chill. Are there any canon ships in Rolling with Difficulty other than Finbar and Best Girl Elise? Uh, no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Head cannon to your heart's content, uh, but no other canon ships that I'm aware of. I guess kind of Roy and Cressida, but that's iffy at best. I'm still fighting Austin on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah? But Roy is our best boy. Doesn't he deserve do to be Roy thoroughly topped? <laughs> <laughs> It just, I didn't see it coming at all. I was so blindsided by it that when it, uh, when Austin's like, ha ha ha, off -hand joke and offhandedly, I'm like, wait, what? what? That's funny because I think he asked me for permission about it. Uh, cause he was yeah, like, I made Roy. I think the thing is like, I, cause I keep having all these like little, like, I don't know, sort of flirty conversations with like Ioni and Cressida. He was like, hey, were you planning on romancing either of them? Cause I have an idea. Oh no, this poor Korok. <laughs> Korok, get out of here. <laughs> oh god! Time, uh, guess he's yeah, one of those ha. special. Do, 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 do. God damn it! Is there? Why can't... This is stupid. Can I? Can I cry onus the lava? No, that would have made too much sense. Do, 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 do. All right, hold on. I think I have an idea. It's not my worst. Which is, you know, high praise, high praise, high praise. Okay. No! Why won't it let me magnesis the big thing? It's right there. I can see it. Oh, I guess it will let me do it. That was neat. Okay, fine. Alright. Yeah, that looks safe. Here we go, folks! He does it. Calm. Careful. Collected. I don't know why Maz Kosha is obsessed with making me set myself on fire! Ha! Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> no, yeah, take more time, please. I love it when the shrines really fucking... Ham it up. Yeah, really make a meal out of their entrance. Uh huh. Wow, so cool, so smooth. Wow. Okay, Rivali, get me the fuck out of here! <laughs> it's very nice of them to still keep me in the lava when I spawn back in. Where the fuck is the shrine? H hello? Oh, hello. Oh, I see. You get to be nice and far away from the lava. Oh. Anyway, did Austin not message you about, like, hey, you okay if I- oh, not even a little bit. <laughs> Incredible. I was completely blind. It's like, well, I don't want to steal your girl, but I will I absolutely him steal your boy. I favorite NPC on a silver platter, and this is how he repays me. <laughs> well, if anything, I think he's more of a fan favorite. He's a fan favorite, and he is canonically in his 20s, and this is- these are- both are- both these things are true. Y yes <laughs> There was some, uh... Shock and all when the on the Rolling with Difficulty Patreon I posted the little one sheet of just quick character doodles and descriptions I had given Austin Hell when yeah. he asked when I was like oh in between seasons one and two I'm gonna give you some characters that like would work at the heap uh, and Roy is included on that and he listed his age as like 26 or something because in my <laughs> mind he's in his 20s and everyone's like wait he's not like 17 I'm like no. no why would he be 17 17 they're all adults um. But uh, that apparently was a shocking reveal. I think a lot of our fans are like a few years younger than you, and you're a couple years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like Roy being 26. Yeah, that makes sense. I had, you know, shitty internships once too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan, Dan needs like. Oh crap, what's on fire? 22. I think she might be like 22, 23 at this point. But also, I think she just kind of doesn't know and has oh, given I guess a it's rough just estimation. Me. I'm slightly as on a fire. Rat. Um, I guess someone could cast like a legend lore on her and find out, but I don't know if anyone ever has. 
<laughs> Look on my work, see my. But I lied earlier when I said there were no other canon uh, relationships because I'm pretty sure uh, Hira and Karunda Trasi, the Ergen <laughs> uh, and the um, leader of the Chef's Guild, are at least hooking up, if not. <laughs> <laughs> I not choose agree. to believe this only because Austin gave them such similar voices that such I think the concept voices. of the two of them hooking up is just inherently Having more funny. reasons that Austin has to do both of their voices in the same session is incredibly funny, but also I think he did have a least say that he, she had, like, seen them sneaking around or something. Ooh. So I think technically there are two canonic canon relationships in Rolling with Difficulty. Um, Maybe they're just secretly evil, you know? Maybe I mean, not everything so. has to be romance. <laughs> I think they're cleverly keeping me from bringing more than Relatively one light on the romance. I feel like we can give uh, these two NPCs okay. a moment. <laughs> the friggin' Arigenasi Nepo baby and the spooky dragon get to hang out, I yeah. guess. Why not? The they deserve each other. Ow! <laughs> Jesus, the knockback on that. Oh my, what the? Spicy. The hell? Like, okay, what? You, smaller block. Are you manageable? Oh, I guess those blocks are the same size, actually. Forget I sent anything. Hold on, I have an idea. Really off center, little. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's currently a Tumblr poll for best wizard. Uh, <laughs> highly unfairly, Virla has been set up against uh, Taco. Taco from the Adventure Zone. Uh, but with your powers, we <laughs> we could topple them. I'm trying. Uh, when I when I got a hold of the poll, they were at a uh, 24% versus Taco, and now we are up to th I think we were up to 34 last time I checked. For those not in the know, Tumblr recently acquired a polls feature, and people have yeah. started figuring out the funniest possible way to exploit this. Right. I would love Virla to go all the way and dominate the wizard's polls, uh, despite the fact that, you know, the Adventure Zone is a massive, uh, critical and uh, fan-based success. It's got this massive following. Um, but yeah, our wizard should... I want our, our wizard, wizard to win. Our best wizard. <laughs> our wizard is sadder. That automatically makes him better. Our wizard is better. sadder than yours, and that's why he should be the best wizard. That's why he deserves it. Get, he has that pointy hat, and he's just so, so sad. He's just the saddest. He's just miserable. Hold on, wait. Do I need this? Is this whole thing gonna flip? I think this whole thing might flip. The cool thing is they have little, like, blurbs for why you should vote for each character like, what, what their deal is. Um, and the Virla one is so detailed. It's like, he's just, oh man, he's he's like, he, he looked into the abyss and it fucked him up for a while and he's just so sad, you guys. And then the other one's like, it's Taco from TV. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I think let if nothing else... Let boy free. Let him win. Yeah, it's like, from this alone, I think that we should win. Sadder than Caleb Widogast. I'm gonna say... Having watched half of Campaign 2 of Critical Role, Virla is sadder. Um, I think, yeah, yeah. I think Caleb has like more guilt fucking him up. Yeah. Virla has a more normal tragic Virla backstory. Virla has like existential tragedy, you know? Like yeah. there's just sort of the inherent sadness of the universe. Yeah. Da, 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 Look, da, da. it's Taco, you know, from TV, but also, like, it's Virla from our podcast. Yeah, you know. We gotta rep our boy. It's sad Virla, who thought he was the data, but turned out to actually be the Wesley Crusher. <laughs> that was one of the funniest moments of that episode. It was a very uh, high-tension episode, and that was yeah. the only thing my brain could accept. <laughs> there is also always a moment in some of the higher-tension episodes where I feel like we hit critical sadness or, like, critical stress. <laughs> One of us breaks on the show and has to make a joke. It's usually uh, me. It's usually you or me. <laughs> Check in with our Goron pals. Hey guys. Um, 
Yeah, it is hard to watch Critical Role. I feel I like Critical Role a lot. Ooh. I fell off somewhere around midway through Campaign 2. Uh, also, coincidentally, around when we started doing Rolling with Difficulty. Um, and, you know, now I don't really listen to any other actual plays because partially I don't want to get any ideas. And also, um, I have to edit these episodes, so I spend, like, upwards of... 10, 15 hours a week on when we're on season, just listening to or playing D and D. And at a certain point, I gotta do something else. Uh, but you know, for, I've seen a lot of spoilers for the tail end of the campaign. I kind of tried to keep up with it through that, and um, I'm sure it, it seemed really good. It, it's just so long, you know. There's so much of it. That's why I'm having so much fun with Legend of Vox Machina. It's like this yeah, really feels um, like the correct way to experience this story. You know, I think it really shows that they are capable of condensing their story into a more digestible form. Well, they sure and, are, uh, but, like, that's not... Yeah. The, the, these, it, this is clearly a group where the fun of it is the playing of the game, and yes. the, making a narrative out of it is, like, a secondary thing, which is okay. Like I mentioned, you know, the, the, the desire to share something like that is, is a separate instinct to the desire created in the first place. Um, yeah. Right. I think it's, like... I think that's exactly right. Like, because the folk critical role is like the big first wildly successful actual play show, and they put a lot of emphasis on the actual play part of that, uh, where like a more heavily edited series, like a Dimension Twenty series, puts more emphasis on the story. And it's not saying it's script or anything. It's just like, well, we spent a lot of time putting together an edit and a story and pre preparing, and we kind of know where this is going. So we're gonna like make sure that we're producing this like story that would translate pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to like a tv show right whereas critical Role is doing a lot of really skillful work to take hours and hours and hours of story that happened naturally over the course of a game cut out all the fluff get all the key points across maintain the characterization in the arcs while removing a lot of content and i think it's a testament to how skilled the writers are and the performers and everyone working on the series that it is working as well as it is because yeah. i listen to all of campaign one and i love campaign one uh, the TV series is an equally capable way to consume the main story, and you're gonna fall in love with the characters for a lot of the same reasons. Yeah. You're not gonna fall in love with the players, necessarily, because <laughs> they're not factoring into the show, uh, other than their performances being very, very good, but, um, you're gonna fall in love with the characters for the same way that people watching Campaign 1 as it was airing, or, like, in the VODs would do so. But um, I also Without having to watch hours and hours and hours and hours of <laughs> d and I also think that, like, the desire to create um, a good story out of it is secondary to the desire to, um... Alright, come on over there, son. Yeah, boy! Okay. Oh no, she's recharging! That's okay, we got him to second stage. Um, but the desire to make a good story out of a D&D &D campaign is a secondary thing that I think arose from Critical Role being such a fucking standout success at just being a really good home D&D &D game. Like, all these actual plays that came out in its wake did so because Critical Role just kind of nailed it, but they also had the benefit of not being the first adapters, you know? So they could actually sort of just, you know, have a good time with it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think... Oh, come you on. know, as media no! will affect story, intent you will become affect corporeal story. again this instant, young man. There's Sorry. definitely valid reasons to watch like the actual play campaign over the animated series because there's certain things you're gonna get from that, particularly in the zone of like, well, they were making. All right, time uh, me, guys. What was my time? <laughs> <laughs> they were as obsessed with playing the game and having a good time and just sharing that with people more so than like crafting the story necessarily. And I think that that leads to a lot of really great, you know player to player like moments little bits fun character interactions that obviously aren't going to make it into an animated series but yeah i do have to commend them for the way in which they have uh condensed the yeah. into the legend of vox mock and i think it actually worked better than i thought it was going to yeah um i mean i got into uh critical role because i watched like a two-hour best of grog compilation um <laughs> like travis was willing was kind of a joy to watch and like just the whole the whole fun is because it's these guys just having a great time, you know, playing together, and sometimes this incredible story comes out of it. Uh, and then turning it into 
uh, oh, hold on, plot is happening. Uh, turning it into a show, I think was really good because they treated it like a second draft of the first run through. Uh, yeah. Which is great because that means they weren't so married to the original way that it played out that they, you know, oftentimes passion projects done by the people who did it in the first place just mm -hmm. they keep all the tiny details even if they don't play well these guys were like no man we'll rearrange stuff yeah. to make it better we'll retime things to make the story work we'll treat this like a team of writers yeah exactly um and it's you know i think it does show a little bit that all of them are industry professionals who have been in this world for a minute and maybe have an idea oh, of what goes into making a competent cartoon yes. Uh, but also, it just is, it's, a, it's an active skill and uh, understanding the product that you're trying to make. And uh, I think that that's fun to think about. I like to think about this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, but also I think it's totally fine to not be... Like, you don't have to watch Critical Role. You don't have to... Like, you can like that Critical Role exists without being able to get through the pacing of the live performance. Which is why I'm so glad that Legend of Ox Machina exists because it means that people who, you know, like me, like the vibe and want the story to, you know, hold together, have a thing that we can watch and be like, heck yeah, rather than having to watch like 140 hours. And vice versa, if you want to watch like 140 hours and you like all those little character and yeah. player moments, you can still go watch the VOD, it's still up, and people still watch it all the time, like these are... You can like one and not the other, you can like both, you can dislike both. All of these are fair interpretations of the text. I'm just glad that both versions exist. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Daruk's doing some fighting. Daruk's kicking ass. Yeah. Oh, the smoke cloud. Oh, yes. Perfect. Well, you better be thankful those things aren't Kukos, my friend. Oh, I see. Zelda gets to pet the dog. Only I don't get to pet the dog. <laughs> it seems our friend here was the one being attacked. Precious boy, you saved his life. Huh? Aww. Very good boy. Ah, <laughs> oh, I just like Yonobo. That's adorable. <laughs> Good riddance and stay safe. That side of me. As a kid, dogs always chased me. I still panic when I see one of those critters. I never imagined the great Daruk would have a weakness. So tell me, princess. Yes. Are there any rolling with Calamity difficulty yeah, animations? Uh, I think some fans have made animatics, but the only animation going on is me is animating it? the battle maps in the uh, <laughs> podcast at the moment. I th some Which, people have, there, takes yeah. a while. Some people have done little like animated character <laughs> moments, like not with audio, but Kiana especially has gotten some really cool ones with people just doing like the arms or just you know cool mm -hmm. punchy moments. Um, everyone loves a monk. Everyone loves a monk. What do you think of Champion Daruk's song? Hmm. I All knew right. you could do it, little guy. Oh. Now you can use Daruk protection more than ever. Yay. If you see that game, even here, more Daruk's give protection. Him a for you. Good riddance, bacon breath. <laughs> Good riddance, bacon breath. <laughs> I'll carry your words in my heart always, my friend. Alright, I just in remembered. In my deepest, darkest moment. There's a really, really annoying Rivali thing we have to do. Which is appropriate! Mm, my boy! Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Just might be better to get that out of the way earlier. My son. My bird son. Shoot four targets to win. It sounds so simple. What it doesn't tell you, well, you guys will see. Um, but, to be fair, it does seem like a thing Rivali would be able to do. <laughs> sure does, doesn't it? Uh, okay, hold on. We can, um, I've got, oh yeah, I've got like, stamina, yeah, all right, we're gonna want to cook some stamina food, so let's get yeah. to the area of Rito Village. 
Uh, Finbar versus Daruk, who would win? They wouldn't fight. One of them would cook for the other, yeah. and by the end, they would be battle brothers. They would just that, do that really buff, like, handshake meme, and then they would yeah. just be bros forever. Exactly. <laughs> Daruk would be like, I mostly eat rocks, and Finbar's like, nah, nah, we gotta get something good in you. I do, okay, so we have the four rolling with difficulty characters, and there are four guardians. I do feel like, like Finbar Champions, and Daruk would be buds. Yeah. I feel like you gotta pair up Danny and Rivali, because... <laughs> Of course. Projectiles. And if we're, yeah, if we're not going to pair off Danny with the fire guy, we have to pair off Danny with the arrogant uh, <laughs> uh, ranged attacker guy. Yes. Kiana gets to go with her Bosa. I feel like that one's also pretty no. Thank no you. Kiana, that means <laughs> that Nifa and Vila are bros, which they're both sad, so it works. <laughs> they're just doing that. My first girlfriend turned into the moon thing. <laughs> it's exactly that. It's like, yeah. That's my captain so died in my arms, and then I destroyed all my memories of him and also my entire life. Oh, yeah. That's rough, buddy. Yeah, my, uh, well, my <laughs> childhood friend, um, died for a hundred years, uh, and I died permanently, and now his life's mission is to protect the other princess in his life. And he's like, that is rough, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, indeed. Oof. Um, meanwhile, Danny and Rivali are just like, having a target shooting competition in which nobody wins. I feel like, yes, but also Rivali's personality and Danny's personality go together like fucking, like milk and lemon juice. Like, it's not good. <laughs> no. It, there's never going to be a mutual respect there, but the one-upsmanship is just going to go for so long that eventually they have to settle into some sort of, like, permanent rivalry. Obviously you uh, end up with that, like, Legolas and Gimli, like, I'm on 27 kind of thing. Uh, yeah. But as soon as Danny starts losing, it's like, okay, fireball it is. It's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, Thanks, Daruk. Urbosa and Kiana get along fantastic. Uh, it's it's a perfect combination. It's honestly flawless. Like, there would be absolutely no conflict. Just be like, is it rude to ask her to fight me already? Like, we just met. But, like, man. Yeah. It's the uh, competent female mentor figure that Kiana has never had before in her life. I, and she's pre-dead for my convenience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, pleasantly surprised with how well the uh, Guardians and Rolling with Difficulty crew in this hypothetical would interact. I think it actually works out perfectly. It's pretty fantastic, yeah. Excuse me, folks. <gasps> Beetle! Beetle, my beloved! Hello, my friend! He also buys stuff. You're almost as crazy as Beetle, which is me! I feel like Danny and Rivali would be more dangerous to any third person when they were together, but if, if they have anyone else to antagonize, they'd become the worst uh, rival BFFs. Yeah, but suddenly they're they all exactly on the same Their page. ire can only be turned on each other, and it just becomes like, don't don't get in within firing range. I mean, the problem is you're both Lancers, so we pair you guys off, and like you become completely unmanageable land? for everybody else. I, except as soon as you get separated, it's like, oh, sorry, only I'm allowed to kill that one. <laughs> Alright, I think we're good. Uh, sorry, Beetle. I guess I would like to see this fan art on my desk by Monday. Thank you very much. Of oh, course, so who could resist? Alright, we want stamina food, food and we want lots of it. Jump up again? Yes. Yeah, onto the microphone. Really? You're just gonna let me hold you? Your face is right there. Great. Hmm? Do we have any more stamina stuff? Stamina Why no meows now when I need it from you? Why do you eat this microphone every single night? I have to keep the fluffier <laughs> wind sock on it so that you don't actually damage the microphone. Drat. It is sort of revealing the inherent uh, flaw of the Rolling with Difficulty crew in that it is we have no leader, which is yeah. also coincidentally uh, the problem <laughs> that like... I guess Link is the leader, or Zelda is the leader of the Zelda's Guardians. the leader. Were, That's the thing. Yeah. Like, what I like about so, the champions is that Link does not fit in the group. Yeah. But that is the sort of, like, without Zelda around, Rivali is the Lancer who has no one to Lance, in the same way that, like, Danny <laughs> has the Lancer who has no one to I Lance. I mean, Rivali is Link's leader. Lancer, and he hates it. Yeah. Oh, come on, what do I got? Damn it. But it does have the vibe of like, well, this is just the first person who like walked into my line of sight, so I guess I'll hate him. It's true, yeah. And uh... yeah, why not? Okay. 
a few hours. This is going to be just sit on my lap, why don't okay, you? good. Jesus, that's a lot of hearts. Okay, this is gonna be so annoying. So what we are going to do is we're gonna do we're gonna try this. We're gonna take the elixir and we're gonna try it. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna reload a save. Everyone cool with that? Great, awesome. I guess Link is the sixth ranger. Which would be the... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. Like, Link and the champions... There's like are... five big guys. I'm well, yes, no but leader. what's what's really interesting to me about this is that Link and Zelda and Ganon are playing out their own story. And everyone in the universe, in this story... Oh, I forgot to change my outfit back. Knows that that's the story of this whole situation. So these four champions, who are all basically protagonists in their own right, like... They've got their own stuff going on, and they decided to... Oh, jeez, you absolute whiner. Oh, that's heat resistance. Do I not have... Oh, yeah, I do. See, we're fine. He's fine. Um, so basically, in a story that everybody knows has only one hero, these four guys were like, we'll do our protagonist -y part. We'll help out, which is great. That's awesome. But, like... <laughs> of course they're fucked, right? <laughs> like, they're not Link. Okay, so the deal is we need to hit four of these targets in one go. Nice. So we cannot, we can't pause in midair, eat more food, get more stamina. None of that. We have to do this all at once. So, I'm gonna throw that back like a shot. We're gonna switch to the correct arrows, which I didn't do before. We're going to do our darndest, okay? Sounds good. One. Two. Come on, baby girl. Hold it together. Shoot! Yeah, see? That wasn't enough. Also, my bow's about to break. Uh... Hear this? Okay. Are you getting the furs? Hmm? Are you getting the furs or the mic? Oh. Uh, I'm not. Discord might not be able to pick it up. Ziggy is so loud. It's like a motor. Shoot. Oh, we did it. We did it, Reddit. But you can see how annoying this was if I didn't know I had to do it all in one go, right? Because the targets would keep respawning. I'd be like, what? what's happening? And I'd like drop into the bottom and the shrine just wouldn't spawn. So... Okay, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Generous of them to call it my first try, when technically that was my second. Oh, there's the shrine. I thought I was forgetting something. Mm -hmm. Nope, let me in. Step it. Step it. No! Wait, thank you. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> is this your first playthrough of Breath of the Wild? No, this is my third playthrough of Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's my first that I've ever streamed, and this is in fact the first game I have ever streamed. Uh, I acquired a capture card specifically for this. Uh, and Ziggy is not named after the Quantum Leap computer. She is named after the David Bowie album slash yeah. song. I believe one of our early podcasts had you mentioning that if you got two cats, you would Ziggy name them Ziggy and Sputnik. Yes. That got animated by a fan. It yes, great. it was beautiful. Um, Ziggy, okay. I like the space theme. I would want to name it. If I ever get a second cat, I'm naming it Sputnik. It'd be great. Um, a friend of mine has a cat named Ripley. Like, from an aliens, alien. Of course. And we both got cats at similar times and independently, without consulting each other, gave them vague space names. <laughs> uh, proving that that is the best way to name Ooh. a cat. <laughs> I do not have any bond here. And as determined in the Cats episode of Movies Drug, Ziggy would be a terrible choice uh, for the Jellicle Ball. She is not going to be the Jellicle choice. Nope, thank you. Come on. Okay, now let's try something. Good. Wait, how high up did it go? Okay, it's not ideal. It's okay. Ziggy uh, was having a nice nap, and then she shot up really quickly, did a big old stretch, and zoomed off to the other room, I assume, to 
Sleep undisturbed. <laughs> Uh, if the cat's named Ripley, are, am I their Jonesy? I am not. I have a skeleton I got from Target the day after Halloween because it was on sale that I have named Jonesy. And it's currently in my dad's basement. Incredible. There's a lot of lore going on <laughs> in the Nico house. Okay. We're going to give this a shot. Let's see if we can get the bomb to work. Right height. Is it easier than going and buying bomb arrows? Trust me, bro. I'm like a scientist or something. Oh, come on. That should have worked, right? Like, look at that. It could have worked. It should have been mine. Nope. Oh, see, that worked. She's back in the room. She's now right. looking around things. I don't know. I would I like to not. Yep. Whew! Played with fire on that one. But it worked, baby! I, think I got that one earlier than I was supposed nice. to. That's okay. Let's just fly around and see what's happening. This, I understand being a Revali trial, right? Yeah. Like, this makes sense. That makes sense. He does flying stuff. He does indeed fly and stuff. Okay, I see. I see. Come on, bring me into the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Me up. Me up. Thank you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Perfect. And you? Ah. It probably right. seems like the kind of guy who would like sing little songs in his head when doing action movies kind of stuff. Oh, know? yeah. Definitely. Where's the fucking. Ah, there it is. I see you, villain. Ziggy has now made her way into the back of my one closet. Uh, notably, really hates the laundry basket. Will <laughs> not get in it at any cost, but loves to stand directly on either side of it. Huh. Mm-hmm. How whimsical and mysterious. Indeed. Uh, how do we give treats to Ziggy? We can't because she is on a diet from Sorry. the vet. The vet put her on a diet, and I'm trying so hard to... <laughs> You'll just have her to imagine to the it. treats. Um, I gave her a bunch of treats recently because I had people over, so I am putting her back on the proper diet. Uh, now what the oh, wait a minute. I know this one. I so she doesn't deserve them. It's just it's what the vet said. It's for her health, dang it. I'm trying to be responsible. Oh, no. Wait, getting a little chunky. <laughs> She's not necessarily a bad thing. I know, you. Meowing now. As I understand it, the problem is that animals have a much narrower range of healthy weight they can actually function at. Like, yeah. with people, there's there's some room. You know, you, you can be a mm -hmm. little bit squishy and you can still be totally fine, health-wise. Yeah. Cats generally top out at about 15 pounds, and there's kind of a lot less margin for error when that's the weight class you're operating in. Yeah, Ziki was 13 pounds at the last vet visit, and she needs to be 10, is yeah. basically the gist of it. So. Right, which by ratios would... That's that's a very different kind of like. I had to have this explained to me, basically, is the yeah. thing, because of course I am uh, I'm quite fond of dessert every day, as it were. Uh, but I am not a cat. <laughs> I'm a whole ass <laughs> person, and humans are designed to have a lot more internal variation for like maximum weight and build than cats are. So yeah. you know. Um, no, no, please, come please on, Link. Situations. Fuck's sake, He's also a pretty small cat, all things considered, so if she, like, uh, if she puts anything on it immediately, yeah. <laughs> it's very apparent. You notice. She doesn't wear it well, as it were. No. Um, also, do not worry if you mix up me and Cyan in chat. Uh, I am indigo, not Cyan, but <laughs> it happens all the time, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Crying out loud. Boy, you know what would make this easier? 
wings. If only I had a way if of Ziggy making it up was to a boy, she would still be named Ziggy. And this was the name I had picked out when I went to the shelter, and it just... Ziggy is conveniently rather gender neutral. Yes. Um, is there anything you wish you knew before getting a pet? Uh, I was pretty thorough in my research, and I've had cats growing up, so I don't think there was anything in particular that I was, like, unprepared for, necessarily. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew exactly how expensive vet visits were. Oof. <laughs> I knew they were going to be pricey, but some of the last one was particularly bad. Mm. Uh, but that's something you can look up pretty easily uh, by do researching a little bit about your area. Um, for the most part, you know... It, Research the particular pet you're interested in getting. Make sure that their care needs are something that would work with your life. Definitely. Um, I work from home remotely, so having a cat that can hang out while I'm working was key, but also I'm around, so it was always an option. Um, and I live in apartments, so like I was like, well, a dog is probably not valid. Uh, Dogs are hard It would not be kind to the dog, necessarily, to yeah. have such a small space. And, and a lot of apartment buildings are, like, they have breed restrictions, yes. um, which is just deeply unfair, because pitties get a bad rap, even though pit bulls are not any more harmful than any other dog breed, and in fact, there are other dog breeds that are significantly meaner and worse for pets that have a better reputation, like Dalmatians, which are terrible pets, mm -hmm. but because of the Disney movie, there, was a, there were a few years there where every family wanted one, and then had to learn that these things are vicious little buggers. <laughs> so... Yeah. But a lot yeah. of places will just be like, no pitties, no pit bull mixes, absolutely not. And it's like, all right, man, you're lost. Yeah. Those soulful almond eyes, just for me I'm, alone, I guess. <laughs> even more frequent than that, places will just say no big dogs. Yeah, um, that's a big one. like size restrictions, especially in apartment buildings. It's a little different. For sure. Um, but uh, I, I would also recommend, like, I adopted Ziggy from the New York City uh, Animal Care Centers of New York. New York, which is one of the public shelters there. They were fantastic. There are always a ton of pets and animals at shelters that need loving homes. If you can adopt, um, that is a wonderful way to yeah. help out an animal who will then love you for life. It is also uh, a way to get an animal that you kind of already know the temperament of, because yes. just like children, if you start from a baby, you never know what you're going to get. Um. Yeah, and you can find like kittens and puppies and stuff at shelters. Um, but often they have been given some sort of preliminary medical care. They typically spayed or neutered. Yeah. Uh, and the shelter will have some sort of idea of their temperament. Uh, animal care centers in particular had this really great little ranking system for all the cats. It's like, this cat would be extremely easy for a beginner to take care of. This yeah. cat might need a little extra attention. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. was marked as extremely easy for a beginner <laughs> to take care of. And I see why, because she is a ridiculously friendly cat. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's if you're a first-time pet owner, that kind of just professional suggestion can be a great little guiding system to help you end up with a pet that you are the most capable of taking care of. Because, you know, you want to make sure your your pet is going to have the best life possible, right? Right. We love them. They love us. It's a win-win. Uh, but if, also, if like, you're, yeah, by yeah, the numbers, you're, you're going to be caring for it for their entire life. Like, you're going to be yeah. its whole world. So, you know. Like, mm -hmm. try to do a good job with it. The same applies to children, by the way. Um, yes. Uh, I just have more experience in the pet department. <laughs> yes. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, just as a general rule. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do we digitally pet Ziggy? If she gets closer to my desk, I'll give her a little scritch. But uh, at the moment, she's doing this thing that she loves to do where she'll lay a foot away from my desk, just on the ground. There's a cat bed directly next to that spot. Sometimes she'll sleep in it. Recently, she's been really into the floor. I don't <laughs> tell her how to live her life. I've been really into the floor lately. Yeah. I knew it. It's just the on Hebra Peak. All right, let's go check it out. Um, I've always had... Uh, how many pets have you had in the past? Um, when I was growing up, we had a cat. Um, he was great. Teddy, short for Theodore Roosevelt. Of course. Loved him, because I was very young when we had him. Uh, my dad and him had a very contentious relationship, <laughs> but he knew exactly what lines he could not cross in order to make sure that he got to stick around the house, and so that cat was had a, a long, loved life. Um, he was also a shelter cat. And then when I was uh, a little bit older, we had hamsters for a while, 
Um, my brother had a toad for a bit, so we were a... My, my dad was never a big fan of pets, so we were never, a, a, again, like a big pet house necessarily, but we, I've had some pets in my life. Um, but Ziggy is my first, like, big girl pet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. And me and Ziggs are in it for the long run. We're going to be around for a minute. Heck yeah. Um, uh, uh, I have never had a pet. Um, I am hoping to remedy that at some point, but not yet. Okay. Oh, yeah. But oh, if you can, if you're looking at getting a pet, consider adopting from your local shelter. It's the best way to support them and to make sure that those pets get loving homes. I'm sorry, did I just ramp off a wolf? Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Incredible. I'll just talk about animal welfare and then you go and do a 360 off the back of a wolf. <laughs> uh, what are you guys reading right now? Um, I just started The Mountain in no. the Sea, which is a, a sci-fi novel about intelligent octopi and the scientists who studied them. And I'm about uh, one chapter in and so far it's pretty good. Um, I started editing for Dominic Noble last year and since then I have read a lot more and also experience no! the plot of a lot more books than usual. So, uh... Fine, whatever. Got to restart. <laughs> Sorry, we're having a great time. Ramping off that wolf did no, uh, nothing good to my speed. Uh, are you reading anything right now? Am I? Uh, not really. I sort of, well, loosely. Um, I sort of tend to do all my reading in one go, except I have recently discovered the only context in which audiobooks work for me uh, when I'm traveling somewhere or when I am, like, walking from point A to point B and I can't do anything else. Uh, so I've been very, very slowly working my way through the audiobook for A Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> I guess it's The Count of Monte Cristo. I guess there's only one. Uh, which is fucking hilarious because the audiobook is 40 hours long. Nobody else has tried to check it out from the library I've been getting it from, so I just get to renew it over and over again. Which is, I mean... Obviously, right? Like, who the fuck would listen to the audiobook of one of the world's longest books? But to, I'll be completely honest, it works a lot better in this format. It feels a lot more episodic, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So that's been good. Um, but I've been very slowly getting through that, you know, when I have time. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me! Um, and I've been getting through the uh, Andy Circus narrated audiobooks for Lord of the Rings, but uh, that is dependent on availability, and people like those books a whole lot more. So I haven't been able to get a Two Towers yet. Or a Two Towers. The Two Towers. For fuck's sake, like... Oh god. Oh god. No, 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 no. Fuck it, just sprint, just sprint. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, like, reading stuff, but kind of in the loose sense. When I read things... Oh my god, get out of my way! <gasps> Sir! Maybe this would be easier if I wasn't doing it at night. Sadly, I am. Any comfort reads or shows that you keep going back to uh, besides Justice League? <laughs> uh, I tend not to rewatch very much. Oh, On occasion, yeah. I will go back to a Star Trek uh, or like Parks and Recreation, but I have to consume so much media for my job right. that I tend not to repeat things too, too often. Yeah, I sort of have to cycle things out. Um, you know, if I go back to something too frequently, the, the analogy I use is it, it's kind of like chewing gum too long. You know, like you have a piece of gum and you're like, oh, this fucking rocks, I love this gum. Um, but if you keep chewing it after the point where it stops having a flavor, oh my god, people, out of my way, please. <laughs> He's gonna get you. He's gonna get me. Um... So if I really, really like a piece of media, like my brain will not stop chewing on it. I kind of have to mm. give myself time away from it, like on the order of several months before I can go back and really get that, that real dopamine hit. Whereas of course, if, I, if I'm trying to, you know, if I really like it and I wish there was more uh, because my brain is not done with it, the desire to rewatch it too early, like before it's recharged, can kind of make it just less pleasant overall, which mm. is kind of a bummer. Um, Oh, goody. Yeah. Just a slidey block puzzle. Um, but there's there's things that I revisit, you know, every hot minute or so. Master the orb. Y'all ready to become orb masters with me? 
We're gonna match. I feel like I never think to revisit a movie. Like I always try to watch something new when I'm watching, uh, when I'm browsing the the old Netflix. Right. Uh, Surfing the but web. Every one, as but sometimes it were. I will end up revisiting something either because I'm watching it with someone else or what have you. Like uh, me and my boyfriend rewatched the original X Men trilogy. Oh yeah. Two thousand three. Something. Masterpieces, like, right? Oh, this feels yeah. This is incredibly comforting, and I love these movies. It is as bad as they get they're still extremely fun yeah um and like so i tend not to say that i uh go back to something as like a comfort watch um but i do find like re-watching certain things comforting it's just not that i would ever think to like intentionally watch that because i need comfort you know yeah also it, re-watching like, things with friends is a completely different animal to re-watching completely them completely different experience uh, or, like, if something is, like, there's a local screening of a movie you liked, I saw Speed Racer on the big screen. Did you now? And it was absolutely incredible. I highly recommend if that is ever something available near you that you check it out. A uh, big shout out to the Philly Bourse uh, Theater for screening that, because it fucking rocked. Yeah. Everyone in the theater was having a fantastic time. They were cheering when they were doing all the cool stunts. And there was a dad with his kid behind us who was also having a blast. It was the most incredible vibe and probably my favorite theater experience I have had in the last, like, six years. Ideal. Um, there it is. So, yeah, I think, you know, watch what you gotta watch. Yeah. But, yeah, watch honestly, happy. half the fun is definitely, I think, getting other people to watch stuff with you. Like, man, mm -hmm. when someone else sees the moment that, like, wrecked you, truly an unparalleled experience. You're telling me. <laughs> you know, I really thought, oh, hold on. This seems familiar. I think I know what I gotta do now. Of course this seems familiar. This is the second time I've done this. Um, okay. Alright. Uh, we have not seen the D&D &D movie yet. And no, the, it just came Or out. the Owl House finale for everyone in the chat who is asking. Or the Mario movie. <laughs> right. Okay. Mostly, we, I also made my boyfriend watch The Mummy uh, 1999 recently. Because the Mummy 1999 starring Academy Award winner... Oh, wait a minute. Yes. I know what's happening here. Yes. Uh, Brendan Damn. Fraser? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's still great. I love that movie. Uh, it holds up so well. I had I, I watched it as a movie night with some friends, and it was one of those things where I had to be like, look, if you're not feeling it, we can watch something else. I promise. Just like, let's just get through the intro. And for the first, like, I don't know, 45 minutes, there was a little bit of like, Ooh, I don't know. I, I just don't know if we're feeling it. And then after that, no complaints for the entire rest of the movie. I was like, oh, so you guys did like Through it. Through the, like, exposition, the movie gets so good so fast. Yeah. Once they stop having to explain who they are to each other, and once, like, Brendan Fraser fucking shaves a little bit, bam. Suddenly yeah. everything is perfect forever. That whole forever. boat scene is one of my favorite, like... Seven minutes in movies. Like someone's on the wrong side of the river, but also just the bit where he's like reloading and not paying attention and to the bullets getting closer to him, and she has to pull him out of the way. It just, just so incredible. And uh, also, like with a movie in a very similar category to this for me, where it's like this movie is always excellent, and I'm never mad that I'm watching it. Yeah, uh, yeah. one of my all-time favorites. And I think the jokes still land for me every single time. Yeah, the Mummy movie is like an ideal for me, like movie night with friends kind of thing because it's always yeah. so good. And it's just so cute, and there's a lot of really good character moments in it. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's hot, and we love everyone's it. hot. I like the part where uh, where Rick like clearly starts being like, "Oh no, I've caught feelings. How do I flirt with an archaeologist? Uh, tools. <laughs> I stole these tools for you." Yeah, it's, just, it's like, "What are you looking at?" It's just like, "Ah, mm -hmm. he's sweet and a dork." Yeah, there's a lot of like there's a lot of movies from that particular era that are just like great classic. I'm always happy with them. Princess Bride's also in this category. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Just like, I'm never mad that I'm watching it. I love everything to it. Uh, Truly I think it's, evergreen it's, cinematic experiences. Yeah. It's doing everything it's trying to do perfectly, and I don't care about the effects at all. All the performances are wonderful. It's just enchanting to watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and um, who could forget Rick O'Connell striking a match on Ardeth Bay's uh, manly stubble? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Me and the boys no, doing totally no. normal straight things. <laughs> It's, uh, it's that's one of those movies where it's like this is the most bisexual het romance I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Uh, Clue the movie also falls. I like. I could. The heck! There's another shrine. I, if here. I could only watch like five movies, Clue would definitely be on the list of those movies that I. Uh, it'd be like Speed Racer, Clue, and then three other movies I haven't thought of yet. Of course. Uh, <laughs> but just like every performance in Clue the movie is incredible. The comedic, like the comedic timing on display in that movie is off the charts. For me, Pacific uh, Rim was one of those movies for a while. 
I don't think I so like anymore. I like Pacific Rim a lot. I don't know if I would put it on, like, if I could only watch five movies forever, would it be, make yeah, that list? Yeah, I, I think I've gotten certain, everything I needed to But I do think it is Pacific an incredibly well-made, like, it had it knows what it wants to do, and it's doing it well. Del Toro is great at making these kind of movies. Yeah, yeah. I think now um, I would add Puss in Boots The Last Wish to my five, but, you know. <laughs> I don't think Puss in Boots is making my five, but I respect it as a choice. I'd put it up um, there with Del Toro's Pinocchio if it didn't make me so fucking sad. I feel like Del Toro's Pinocchio and Puss in Boots are doing, like, the exact same moral, but just on, like, different wavelengths, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because like, they have two different target audiences. So oh, it makes for sure. Sense they're writing on two different wavelengths, but it is, like, very they're, funny they're having... Covering they're covering similar close. subjects. Yeah, Spider-Verse. Kind of I mean, Spider-Verse has got to be one of mine. Spider-Verse is probably up there. Um, Spider-Verse is a movie I have, have no complaints about. has the about. potential to push it out of the five if the ooze turns out to be pretty <laughs> I'm Rock uh, Uwog. Oh man, well, shout out to Rock Uwog. Power I of just reach. love the way they say ooze. Ooze. Ooh. Can I knock you over? Um, no. I can only Part of what I love about that. Movie Struck and the format of it in particular, not to gas up my own uh, show, <laughs> is that everything is guest choice, so I'm never picking. Like, I typically record like four Whoop. episodes over the course of two weeks. So for two weeks every month, uh, random people choose all of the media I consume, yeah. and it ends up being a really interesting like cross section of everything that's ever been made. Um, oh, this batch of episodes I just recorded in particular covered like of the three of the four I've done so far has covered uh, three different genres and been incredibly fun to do as a cross section. Um, the first of those was Logan Lucky, which uh, if you like like Glass Onion, you would probably like Logan Lucky. Um, it's a heist movie starring Channing Tatum in which he gets some redemption for the awful prop work they made him do in uh, Magic Mike and it actually turned out really great uh, it's a little bit long, a little bit bloated but still a pretty fun ride, I would recommend watching it um, but that movie was deeply contrasted with like a prestige drama and a Batman movie and <laughs> I'm like, great all of this is different, and it made for a really fun like couple weeks of watching movies. Oh. Um, how do I pick guests for Movie Struck? Uh, usually, I just cold e email people or people that I know. Um, I typically go with people I know personally or have some sort of following that I can like get to know their vibe through yeah. a little bit. Because I have to talk to whoever the guest is for hours potentially. I want to make sure that we're gonna have some sort of chemistry. Um, Any minute now, folks. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, the hard part about doing a podcast, to circle back to that question somebody had, like, ages ago, um, yeah. is, like, the entire appeal is how funny you can be when talking to somebody, uh, mm -hmm. and that is entirely dependent on you and the person and, like, how you're both feeling that day and all that jazz, so... Yeah, I've, and the people have been successful creating podcasts where they are the only speaker, mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like that lends itself to different yeah. formats. One of my, I haven't listened to any full episodes, but I get the clips served me on TikTok constantly, the Basement Yard podcast. I could listen to those two guys talk about literally anything. They have the funniest dynamic. Huh. Uh, I don't know what the topic of their show is. I'm not entirely sure that it has one, but I do think that it's probably living and dying on the fact that they are uh, rid ridiculously funny. Right. Hosts, right. And that's, uh, like a, and that's a rare thing for... Yeah. That kind of chemistry, you can't make that. that you can't bottle that up and like sell it. That's shit. That's all natural, baby. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah sure, uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but like with Movie Struck, the whole structure is based around booking guests and having guests on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, and the hardest part of the show is constantly having to find people to be on this podcast. Uh, and more importantly, finding people who not only will the audience get some enjoyment out of listening to speak, but that like I will feel comfortable talking to for yeah. an hour or two. Um, and I'm a pretty extroverted person, but even so, you know, there's always certain, like, uh, nerves that come into meeting new people. No, so whenever I have a batch of episodes that's all new people, it's, it can be a little stressful. So I do try to, like, kind of mix up. Um, yeah, of course. Repeat guests, people I know, and uh, new yeah. new people who I've cold emailed. And of course, This like, batch of episode is all people I cold emailed or who <laughs> cold emailed me, so it was all new people. Um, but it, I think it's also a strong batch. Yeah. I mean... You know, of course, it's it's tough to, it's a skill to curate, uh, to be able to just sort of talk entertainingly for a while, uh, and that's 
that's just a neutral statement. That's just a thing. Um, okay, race. Okay, mm-hmm. shoot the flame dragon's horn. That's the last one. Yeah. Where's my friend? There it is. Uh, I have no need of this anymore. And you, you, I know exactly where to find. Um, ish. You, I know kind of exactly where to find. Yeah. It's like down here or somewhere. Right. I do find that I've been able to artificially create some sort of chemistry by letting people talk about a movie that they personally have a lot to say about. Uh, whether that is good things or bad things, because by giving them a focused topic, uh, typically people are willing to talk a little bit more than if you just put them on the spot. Um, I don't think I necessarily needed to be on the Bionicle episode for Noir to have talked about that episode <laughs> like, that much, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. And that's probably the most extreme example, but it is true of a few other episodes of the well, podcast. Well, you also had two like, guests I on, did. so... Yes, that too. But still, it's the... If someone cares about something, they're more likely to talk about it with or without your prompting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and giving them an outlet to do that typically results in good content. Yeah. And also a fun time for me. Yeah. Um, sometimes that means people will pick Jupiter Ascending and then you have to watch <laughs> Jupiter Ascending. But that was still a fun episode to record because we have a lot of chemistry and it was fun to talk about yeah. a bad movie. You know? And I learned a lot about movie stuff in general. Like, my only knowledge of, like, the, the language of film and stuff like that is the stuff I've picked up either from where that art form bumps up against comic making, and there are a lot of places. What the fuck? Oh, I see. It's just like a breeze mm-hmm. with leaves on it. How strange. Um, or uh, stuff I've learned from talking to you because, like, you actually studied all this. Whereas, oh, it's a film school. Yeah, exactly. Whereas I'm just some idiot on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching movies like I know something. Oh, hello. What could this possibly be? Oh, let's just get my yeah. marker off the map real quick. You know, it's interesting because, like, I, didn't I have a background in watching and uh, academically interpreting movies, right? Like, I'm, I've almost always looked at a movie and been like, I need to pick this apart and understand all the component pieces that got us to this finished product, right? right. That's kind of how you're taught to look at it in film school if people are doing their jobs right. And um, that's great for a podcast where you review movies. But I always find it especially interesting when I have folks on who aren't necessarily like film industry folks, right? They're, they don't have the language of like match cut, mm-hmm. L cut, you know, how did someone's who was involved in blocking the scene, et cetera, et cetera. How did this all work? Because I feel like you get really interesting insights when people approach it from an angle of uh, breaking a movie down into what appealed to them, the layman, and explaining that, because that gives you a different lens to look through to see what actually worked in this movie and what didn't work in a way that matters. Because I can look at a movie and say it's technically perfect all I want, but if no one connected with it, then it still failed on some level. Right. Uh, And you get... I, that's sort of the thing I really love about the variety of guests that we get on Movie Struck is like, yeah, there's definitely been some folks who are probably more equipped to talk about movies in a more academic sense, and that's great in one direction. But then there are also episodes where people just really like the content of a movie, and that leads to its own really interesting discussion, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, as, uh, you know, filmmakers, I think it's important to keep an eye on that mindset of, like, actually yeah. what what does an audience actually like? Because, mm-hmm. of course, the language of film, it's, it's a language, but what makes a film work for an audience only has some overlap with the language of film. Like, obviously, having things kind of centered in shots, the audience knows what to look at, is useful. It's necessary to help communicate what the, what the movie's trying to say. But that's the whole thing. The language of film is how the movie communicates what it's trying to say, but also mm-hmm. what it's trying to say has a big impact on, you know how much the audience gets it and like what the point is and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. I think Uh, you can find... Oh, sorry. Well, I'll just... Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to shut up and you can do whatever you want. (laughs) Uh, Someone asked where you can find Movie Struck. It's on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. Just search for Movie Struck, all one word. I'm sorry, Red, you were saying? Uh, I was going to... Fuck. It was in there. It's gone. Um... Oh, yes. Uh, I think that the language of film is one of those things that most people don't really notice until something gets messed up with it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you're not going to notice bad cinematography. Well, you're not going to notice good cinematography, but you will notice, huh, I really don't know what the camera wants me to look at right now, or something like that. Um, 
No, I think it, you, editing is the idea that when you cut, it is inherently disruptive, right? Mm. Like, by cutting the tape, you have done something that the human eye and brain don't naturally do. We don't just jump from scene to scene. We don't jump from shot to shot, angle to angle. We move fluidly in one motion. And so there are tips and techniques you can use to kind of mask that. And if you are skilled as an editor and as a cinematographer, you will find a way to ensure that while a viewer is watching a movie, they are not aware that they are watching a movie and not thinking about the fact that the camera just cut. Um, and that if you don't do your job very well or, you know, something is done poorly, uh, inherently the viewer is aware that the camera has cut and that means that they are aware they are watching a movie. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, some filmmakers utilize this as a way to intentionally draw attention to that or to unsettle the audience. And that's a whole different discussion. But like as a rule of thumb, I think it's a good example of what you're saying of like the weird rule of the language of filmmaking is that we don't want people to be aware that they are listening to the language of filmmaking so yeah. much as they are just kind of experiencing the story. Uh, it tends to favor less disruption uh, and less awareness of format. Um, and again, some movies play with this in a really fascinating way. Uh, I've never felt more unsettled uh, than when I was doing my watch through of all the best picture winners, which I'm going to pick back up at some point, I promise. Um, and I got to Tom Jones, which is not like a world shatteringly crazy plot. It's sort of a comedy of errors of this like British period piece. But they have characters constantly look directly into the lens of the camera. They do a lot of jump cuts. They do some like really funky uh, editing and cinematography tricks that make you violently aware you are watching a movie the whole mm. time you're watching it. And it's deeply unsettling. And it makes the whole thing like weird in a, in, in a kind of inexplicable way. And upset, like not upsetting, but like, like offset almost. Yeah. And it at times heightens the comedy and at others makes you as stressed as the characters are in the situation. Um, it doesn't always, I don't think it necessarily always works perfectly, but it is an example of like being aware of the techniques of filmmaking and intentionally breaking them. You're having right. a character look directly into the lens and acknowledge that there's a camera there, even though of course in their world there isn't, right? right. It makes the audience aware that there is a camera there for the character to look directly into. Um, it's oh, fascinating. Yeah, that always throws you for a loop for sure. That's why every time someone's on a news report and they're like, don't look directly into the camera, someone's first instinct is to look directly into the camera, and then everyone at home is like, oh my god, they're looking directly into the camera. Yeah. It's that, but for a scripted movie. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, I never got a picture of Dinral, which is annoying, hmm. because now is the only time I need it. <laughs> nope. Not today, Satan. Dinral, you bitch, where are you? Um... Oh, it always flies Most through this valley. Most guests seem to night. enjoy getting Indigo to watch bad movies. You're correct. But I have no say in what we watch, so I guess they will continue to do so. Damn right. But um, also, like, most people don't want to inflict a movie that they didn't have fun with. I yeah, mean, I I'd do that say, like, typically like... we get, if we're getting bad movies on Movies Junk, it's movies that the person either really loves despite uh, how bad it is, or at the very least had a really fun time watching. Because the thing is, they also have to watch it, so... No one's, like, picking the room, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm sure somebody might someday, Someone but only someday because... Someone might pick the room, but only because it has a cult reputation at this point. Even but also it's... maybe because they're interested in it. Because, like, I... here's the thing. I never got this. I don't find the room interesting. Uh, I think it's bad, but not in a fun way. I think the... Yeah. What's the... Was it... Was it an older H-Bomber guy video that compares, like, a, like a webcomic to the room? In terms of, like, this is a piece of art. Ah, there he is. This is a piece of art that is so bad. There he is. Yeah, get in that compendium, bitch. Uh, this is a piece of art that is so bad that it inadvertently tells you way too much about the guy who made it. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, the story of... No, Denrell, no, come on. Stay low, bro. I, I gotta get those horns. Okay, cool. Whoops. All right, bud. He's cool. We're cool. Um, because <laughs> uh, whole, his whole relationship with Lisa, it's like, this is so clearly one side of a real breakup that happened. Yeah. And when you think about it like that, like, wow, Lisa in this movie is a completely awful, 
truly heinous, manipulative, just like she's, she's unbear- Ooh, hold on, let's get that though. Sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 shrine and stuff, whatever, we'll warp back up, but I really want to get that shard of the horn. Nice. Um. Thank you, thank you. Yeah! Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, back to the tower. Um, so when you look at it from that perspective, it's like, oh, this stops being as funny and just starts being like, man, this guy's really insisting he didn't hit his girlfriend and she broke up with him for no reason <laughs> because yeah. she's evil. I don't know. I understand oh, really? how it got its cult following because it is bad in a way that you don't often get exposure to if you don't go to film school and have to watch a lot of student films. Yeah. Like, it's a very particular kind of bad movie, and I understand why it has sort of, like, the wide following of, well, I, I love to hate it, you know, uh, watchers that you get. Uh, but personally, I don't find a lot of value in breaking it apart because there isn't a lot to break apart other than the discomfort of... Uh, how very one-sided, as you're saying, yeah. the relationship on display is, and how clearly autobiographical it was, where it becomes not about the movie itself, but about the man who made it, and that's not really the point of interest for me personally when breaking apart a bad movie. You yeah. know, this is kind of also how I feel about like, I don't know, cult following movie watch-alongs for Birdemic, where it's mm. just like, I mean, we know why this movie sucks. It has no budget, and the acting is bad. <laughs> <laughs> the effects are awful, because the, they didn't even film from a stable camera and then layer the effects on when it wasn't moving. Like, To the person in chat recommending that you uh, watch Don McNoble's video on The Room, I second that because I edited that video. Yes. And at one point, I there are two editing things I did in that video that I absolutely love. One of them was attaching little animated wings to uh, Mark and making him fly away in the background of a shot. And, <laughs> or to, <laughs> and the other one was that I needed a shot of... Um, him rising out of bed, and that obviously doesn't exist, so I just uh, slapped a little reverse effect on a, one yeah. where she fell down, and it, it looks perfect. Hell uh, yeah. So you should all go watch that video and make its, like, SEO just spike for a little bit. Oh, man, uh. so good. Huh. But yes, definitely. Watch a lot of Dominic Noble stuff. He's really good. If For those of you who haven't uh, heard of him, uh, look him up. He's really good. Yeah. Um, he has a, a series that I just watch in the background when I work all the time called Lost in Adaptation, mm -hmm. um, where he basically does these, he does exactly what my brain likes to do when I watch a movie, which is he like essentially compares and contrasts to whatever book or similar thing it's based on. Um, and I love it quite a lot. Uh, and he's talked about things like Narnia. Um, and I think there's like... Yes, he does all sorts ones. of uh, comparisons. A lot of them are requests from his Patreon. Um, but uh, it, I love the Lost in Adaptation series. I yeah. scroll through so much film footage in order to make it work. He's done Stardust recently, he just did Starship Troopers, which was a really, really cool one. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a really fun angle to look at because I ha often have not read the books these movies are based on, but seen the movies, and so it's always kind of like a really interesting, um, like, learning experience for me personally. And I think it's a fun point of comparison that you don't usually get in those sort of like film studies. Yeah, he did a whole bunch based on various Narnia books and adaptations mm -hmm. too, which is just so fun. Okay, where am I? Okay, hold on, I think I remember this. Yeah, so. Do you have any tips for going to film school? Um, do your research on any institution you intend to go to. Not every film program is built the same. Not all of them teach you the exact same skills. Um, I went to a school that had a big emphasis on writing, producing, and directing, and I wanted to do sound and production design, so it may not have been the exact perfect fit. Um, so just keep an eye out on the specific program you're applying to and make sure that it's going to have the classes that you want and the opportunities that you want. Uh, and other than that, it kind of the same advice as for podcasting. If you have a chance to, you know, make any sort of like pinky little um, movie that you can, you know, it doesn't have to be a feature. Make a little short film of just like you going about your day or something. Uh, 
no one is going to expect you to have a fully formed thesis film when you show up to film school. So I think it's more important to know what you want to do or have an idea of what you would like to explore yeah, than it is necessarily to know everything about how to make movies before you get to film school. Because that's the whole point. Oh, that's exactly what happened to that. God damn it. Okay, whatever. We're getting it, folks. We're, we're getting there. Man, if only I had a bomb arrow, I could chase this so fast. That'd be so fun. Ooh, I had a bomb arrow. Alright, we're gonna just let it do the complete circuit. Oh. But yeah, I think a lot of people, when they're just about to go to a school, basically feel like they already need to know everything they would have theoretically learned in that school, and it's like, you don't need to do that. What? That was yeah. perfect! How dare you! Uh, they don't need to do that to measure up. You can just, you know... Going to school is... Shit. There are a lot of people, especially in the film and TV industry, who work in that industry without ever going to school, and that is entirely fine. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who go to school for this stuff, and that's also fine. Um, I think it's just have to have the understanding that, like, if you are going to school, why are you going to that school? Uh, it's because it gives you an opportunity to explore a lot of different skills in a relatively short amount of time without having the pressure of like performing at a job, right? Yeah. Like you're not showing up to set and having to figure out how to do things. Um, you can learn how to be a PA, you can learn how to be a boom op, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Uh, but more importantly, you can try a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Um, I think it, you know, it's great if you do get to make stuff before you go there or like get your hands on a camera and try and shoot something. Um, I made like, dinky little videos for the school morning announcements that would like advertise the homecoming dance of course and they were not anything crazy but it was just an experience of like learning how cameras work and what looks good and what good lighting is without like having the like tools necessarily but none of that was an information that i needed before i got to film school all of that was stuff that was properly taught once you were there you know um it's the same for like an art school is never going to expect you to know how to create a masterpiece the moment you walk through the door, otherwise you wouldn't be going to art school. Right. Uh, it's great if you can do some art beforehand, maybe do a little figure drawing, sketch a little bit, have some sort of portfolio if you want, but ultimately, like, you're going to school to learn how to do something, so don't feel like you need to be perfect at it before you even go there and learn the thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think... You know, when you are applying to a class like that or a school like that, you want to put your best foot forward, but like, mm -hmm. you you don't like you're gonna you're gonna do the best that you can. But they are not yeah. going to be judging you as though you had already learned all this stuff. They're gonna be no. judging where you're at right now, and then they're gonna go from there. Yeah. There we go. Jesus. Yeah, I think there's an awful lot of stress in, like, you know, they'll never let me in if I haven't already proven myself. But, like, going to school is mm -hmm. not, like, getting a job. No. And the thing is, back in the old days, getting a job wasn't like getting a job. Getting a job, you would expect them to train you. You didn't already need to be overqualified for most get jobs to, mm -hmm. you know, be permitted. But the thing is, it's more efficient and cost-effective for any given employer to get all their employees pre-trained and pre-expert so they don't need to basically spend any time or money on their employees. So a capitalist system automatically drifts towards a point of maximum uh, profit to minimum spending. So, um, But back in the day, you could basically just show up and be like, hey, I don't know how to do this, but I'm eager to learn and I'm going to try. And they'd be like, cool, and they'd invest in you. And then you'd become an asset to them for the course of you know your career with them. Um, this is also why a lot of companies don't really uh, offer things like, you know, tenure or retirement or like job security after a certain number of years or whatever, because instead of employees being things that the job invests in, they're uh, a resource to burn up. So, but schools should not be operating that way. And currently most of them don't. Uh, you go to a school and they will teach you. Uh, and that's the whole point. And they might, you know, expect a certain level of baseline expertise. If you're going to an art college, they will probably already expect you to have like a workable portfolio and stuff like that. Um, but you don't need to already be a professional level talent for them to give you any sort of, you know, consideration. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Alrighty, three 
out of four. Or this is about to be three out of four. You got this. Well, this one I'm not super worried about. Let me be more hubristic about it. Let me really get into Ravali's character. It's important. <laughs> to the one who approaches this divine beast. In the name of the goddess <laughs> highly I offer this trial. I love how the climbing shirt comes with a dumb little belt with like a full-on carabiner and like climbing rope. I Bright love it. It's green. aesthetically pleasing. Big, <laughs> big fan. Those who lack determination, yada yada. Yeah, yeah, just put me in the Rivali outfit already. This is the part of the game that, uh, let, well, we'll, we'll get to it. We're kind of doing this in reverse order to the way I did it the first time. Um, but, uh, this is the part of the game that I foolishly thought would give Link a unique armor set in the memories corresponding to whose memory it was. But no, I was wrong. They just put you in the corresponding thing you can get from the actual part of the game. It's very sad. But it does make sense, because a lot of these guys are like, no pants! And uh, <laughs> that doesn't play as well. Blah, blah, blah. Entry-level jobs in the film industry that you don't need a film degree to get. Uh, anything that says production assistant is probably <laughs> the... That's the entry level for everyone, whether you have a film degree or not. Oh. Um, and basically, the thing that happens is once you have, like, two or three shoots under your belt, you just kind of start telling people those, and the film degree part doesn't matter uh, really at all. Um, but yeah, production assistant is what you want to look for, for the most part. Um, that's going to be basically every single position on set, and you just sort of run support for whoever needs it. like. Getting, uh, setting up crafty, helping shuttle things around, setting up and breaking down lights and whatnot. Uh, even that might be more of like a grip or a gaffer, depending on how big the set you're working on is. Um, but yeah, look for PAs. Yeah. No shield. Decent armor. And no food. Oh, just a chicken wing? Or just, just a raw bird drumstick? Is that, like, insensitive? Or a revolver? What? Oh, I don't know. This feels like the fucking... Out of my way, bro. I was just trying to. Where are you? Oh, I Chat see. wants to know what the most interesting anime we are watching right now is. Mm. Uh, the last anime I watched was like a couple months ago, um, and I was rewatching One Piece, and I was at the Annie's Lobby arc, which is extremely good. So I'm gonna go with that. You might be overestimating how much anime my favorite I watch. <laughs> I feel like I go through phases. Like, I'll only watch anime for a month, and then I won't watch it for, like, 11 months. Yeah. Okay, oh! Or I'll watch all of one show in a weekend, and then I won't watch anything else. Yeah, that's time. usually the move. Oh, I see. I see. I watched a bunch of Ghibli recently. Some fun, yo. Always fun. I guess that counts as an anime. Yeah. Oh, you big bitch. No, don't go over the side! Let me hit you! Okay, Urbosa. Help me out, girl. There he goes! I win! Uh. I'm trying to remember the last... Oh! Oh! Nope! Oh, boy. Dang it, this really cool artsy filter on this fight is making it hard to fucking spot Windblight whenever he ports over somewhere weird. Is it artsy, or is it just smog? Good point. Are you, are you physical again, bro? No. What is not. your favorite One Piece arc, and why is it any Lobby? Because it's the good one. <laughs> it's the one where the show is awesome. <laughs> ah, come back and fight me. Everyone gets to do their cool fight. They all stand on that rooftop. <laughs> Frankie's in the group now. It's super fun. Is Frankie the little reindeer thing? <laughs> nope, that is Tony Chopper. Uh, oh, sorry. Tony, Tony Chopper. No, Which Frankie's one is Frankie? with the big star's arms um, and the blue pompadour until then they shave his head and the time skip. He's the blue? He's the really big guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love Frankie. I love Water 7. It's one of my all-time favorite arcs. And then it's immediately followed by what is probably actually my favorite arc. So it kind of is a win-win for me. Um, Whoops. I didn't mean to take that damage. All right, Urbosa, help me out, girl. Why? It's dramatic. 
where you're going, bro. Oh, it's driven. that you one. Can, like, the, the whole group and how much they care about each other. It fucking rocks. We everyone's costumes family. Are, everyone's outfits rock, too. <laughs> everyone gets, like, a cool outfit upgrade in Water 7 that carries over to any lobby and it slaps. Found him. Theoretically. Aha! And then, it involves all forgotten character who I think deserves so much more love than he gets, Polly. I love Polly. All the girls out here know what's. Come on. Oh, come on. Just fall down and let me hit you. Come on. Your health bar's right there, bro. Trust me, man. It's not worth it. Just go out with dignity. Where are you? Uh, Found him. I am not caught up with the manga. I was rewatching the anime in an attempt to catch up, and then I kind of fell off it again. Um, it's just so long, and uh, I was. I was current with it when I was deep in my weed phase Whoop. in like middle school, and that was at Fishman Island, which I understand is pretty far in the past at this point. So uh, there's plenty that I have not seen. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, One Piece is I notoriously it anime; is it is impossible to keep up with. Yeah, um, I like it a lot. Here, here's the thing with One Piece: like, against all odds, I do really like it. Like, well, it's fun. Yeah. I understand why it has such a rabid fan base and why it's been going for so long. But the especially post time skip. Uh, when you start to get, like, into the different arcs, uh, I think you get a lot more variety in the quality of those arcs. And even pre-time skip, you get this a lot, but, like, I feel like it was pretty consistent uh, up through at least Alabasta. And, uh, you know, it, it gets a little harder to, like, maintain the interest when you have to spend an extremely long time on an arc that you're not particularly into. Yeah. Uh, especially because post-time skip, they start pretty strong... Uh, and by strong, I mean weak with, like, Fishman Island, and it's not great. Uh. Um, so, you know, I th it's it's definitely worth watching, and I like it a lot. Especially, I, I really love the different uh, group dynamics that the characters get. They tend to split people up in new ways every single arc, so you get a lot of really fun little, like, duos or trios running around doing shenanigans. But um, it does, you know, there's a lot of it, and I understand yeah. why it's a hard ask for people to uh, get into or to, like, catch up with. Yeah. Also, we're about to get uh, some good Rivali content. So nice, your, your boy is boy. about to get center stage where he deserves the flashback without Link in it. Give me my boy. I want to. I want to see my son. I want to see the baby. Tell me. Tell me the secret. Boy just ate shit. Sorry to say, <laughs> he's like a half step away from the fucking Yamcha pose. <laughs> he's working on his gale. Someone had to be the one to figure it out. Only he could do it. This is why he's a champion. I don't know. And why he gets I to eat must. shit because you know he's a little shit. <laughs> oh, give me your best shonen hero that just got his ass kicked performance on this one. Oh, you saw that? How embarrassing. Do you know, your highness, it's rude to eavesdrop. <laughs> this is Rivali. Hmm. I feel like... My apologies. I went to the village and I was told I could find I'm you here. Like this. Oh. Sean Chippewa. Yeah, Sean Chippewa. Huh. To defeat Calamity Ganon. To slay the beast once and for all, it will be my great it's pleasure. It's also the great Deku tree. Thank well, you, yeah. <laughs> Rivali. If we work together, I'm certain we'll be able to. However, defeat... however, shkash. Fush.
It's like, are we still having the conversation or what? Also in VeggieTales. <laughs> what? Who is he in VeggieTales? Galini, Scooter, and Awful Alvin. Oh. Uh, none, of, none of the big, big guys. Not but, the big you know. boys. Yeah. They're folly. Bombarrows are so expensive. What are you doing? I know I'm making a bunch of voices. <laughs> okay, that explains it. That Pretty much every single time I'm like, I know that voice from somewhere. It's one of the fucking Pirates. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, if he loses they his have such huge casts, they need somebody to voice them. Don't come crying to me. Don't worry, Rivali. That won't also, be. Also, noob Cybot in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Whoa, really? Everyone's yeah. favorite Cybot. <laughs> It seems the Rito champion was not one to share his feelings. Really? I think he made his feelings extremely clear. Dang. Oh. I truly never imagined you would do so well. Regardless, Rivali's Gale should be more efficient than ever. You didn't just get a flashback of my one moment of weakness, right? As you are. I guess it's theoretically even possible higher. for you to best Ganon. Uh, Deck Ganon. The term is Deck Ganon. Yeah! Thanks, Rivali. You're very cool. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh. Oh, I see. So they explain how you see the memory. It's literally Cass is painting us a word picture with his music, and we imagine what happens. <laughs> I like to believe <laughs> that Link's version isn't necessarily 100% accurate to <laughs> Rivali's actual personality. I love it. Yeah, Link's just like, oh, Rivali, he's kind of a, an anime dude, right? Yeah, I can picture this. <laughs> I got it. I have so to be gross. stronger. Yeah, I got him. I got him. The mental image is flicking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit, I forgot about this. As part of you Champions... You can read their diaries. Yeah, I can read their diaries. All right, Urbosa might need to wait. We got to go back to Zora's domain and find Mipha's diary. diary. <laughs> All right. Today, I ate <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. Yeah, all right. Great talk, Urbosa. Hold on. BRB. All right. BRB. Rivali is like Sonic the Hedgehog, but annoying, uh, implying that Sonic the Hedgehog is not himself annoying. Unfortunately, that's just Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate life form, something, something. Yeah, sword beam. Yep. Come on. Yep. Did Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the podcast? Oh, uh, ho, 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 ho. Was a good time. Much better than the first movie. The first movie is a kid's movie that is fine. I'm like, this is fine. I'm okay with it. It's doing exactly what it needs to do for the movie that it is. The second Wait. movie, I actually enjoyed quite a bit. You didn't like the part where they were like, power of friendship. His name was Sonic. He was my friend. And then he goes Super Saiyan and beats up Eggman's robot. If I was 10, that'd be the coolest shit I've ever seen. But I'm in my 20s, so it was fine. It's fair. And I, yeah, hey, hey, I don't want to shade it too much because James Marsden does not get the respect he deserves in Dude, this world. Dude, James Marsden fucking understands every he assignment. He Americans, America's sweetheart, damn it. He has the cheekbones. <laughs> he has baby blue eyes. I think Why? the problem is just, he's just too handsome. So, like, people, okay, we don't too have time. handsome and funny. They had to, they had to give him, a, a, like, they had to take a boon away. They always cast him as second fiddle to some rando. Uh, it's got Summer's effect. It's been too powerful in his career. Oh yeah, let's also just trade these in for hearts. Uh, no, but I thought the second movie was a much like, as an adult, I'm like, oh, I'm actually having a good time with this. And a huge part of that is Idris Elba's knuckles is incredible. Oh my funny. god, Idris Elba's knuckles. <laughs> Idris Elba's knuckles is the best casting. Like. In terms of full CGI characters Idris Elba has played recently, they're on a spectrum with uh, Knuckles at one end and McCavity on the other. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's 
His line delivery, incredible. He brings so much, like, life to this CGI echidna. I... I can't, like, first I was like, I can't deal with this, it's too good. I would just, I just want the knuckle super cut of this movie. I don't care about anything else that's happening. Maybe like a James Marsden moment here and there, but like, really, it's all about knuckles. Yeah. Um, it was a, a fucking Hello, incredible. Hello, your lordship. Yes! Yes! And unsurprisingly, as the angry red character from the Sonic series, he, Knuckles has always been a favorite of mine. Of course! So He's everyone's favorite. Done well. All right, let's read Mufa's diary. Everyone yeah. ready? <clears throat> At the request of Hyrule's king, a group of outsiders came to greet us at the domain. One of them was a Hylian child of only about four years of age. His name was Link. The chemistry was instantaneous. <laughs> he made quite a first impression. He was curious and full of energy with a ready smile. Oh, that doesn't sound like me. Are all Hylian children that way? <laughs> One thing that surely sets him apart is his swordsmanship, which I hear is exceptional. He's even best at adults at age four. He must be somewhat reckless, however, as he was covered in bruises. Wishing to be helpful, I healed his wounds for him. It must have been his first time seeing healing magic, as he looked up at me with big round eyes. It was adorable. Yeah, okay. Divine Beast was excavated from Zora's domain. This one is called Varuta. The first time I laid eyes on Ruta, I was surprised by how cute it was. It's so big and round with a long, awkward nose. Mifa has a weird sense of what is and isn't cute, I think. According to the Sheikah who found Ruta, divine beasts require someone worthy to control them. Couldn't be me. I, that would be way too poignant. It's fun to imagine someone piloting this enormous beast in the distant past. I wonder who will have that honor next. Link came to visit the domain. It feels like so, uh, forever since he was here last. He no longer resembles the child I first met. He's now an accomplished knight and keeper of the sword that seals the darkness. I am so proud. However... He hardly speaks anymore and smiles even more rarely. He's still the kind soul I knew, but something has changed. I asked him if something had happened, if something was wrong. He merely shook his head. Perhaps it is his newly acquired height, but I feel he is ever looking past me into the distance beyond. Ah, uh, we became an angsty teenager and she doesn't know how to handle it. The Princess of Hyrule paid a special visit to the Domain. She asked me if I would agree to pilot a divine beast. I asked her which one. She looked at me like I was stupid. So, uh, we can't really talk anymore. <laughs> Told me that she needs my help to face the Calamity. My heart knew at once what to do. I agreed without reservation. Calamity Ganon must not be resurrected. If he is, there is no way to ensure the safety of my people, or of anyone. I do not know what will happen. I don't know. He's protect Hyrule. He insisted he would be fine on his own. I stubbornly stayed. While I argued, the Lionel attacked us from behind. I was sure we'd met our end. How silly of me to doubt. With a sure hand and a fierce gleam in his eye, Link unsheathed the sword that seals the darkness and defeated our foe. His swordsmanship was swift and graceful. I was fascinated by the beauty of his movements. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's adorable. Yep. My heart is drawn to his. I'm doomed. Oh, Mifa, you're so self-aware. <laughs> A spin attack. Perhaps I will attempt it with my spear. Oh, that's cute. Yada yada. Pilot the Divine Beast. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> now I'm sad about King Dorafan again. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yep. Uh huh. Yep, the special armor you make for your boyfriend. Uh huh. Oh! Oh, yeah, we aren't. We don't know what she's talking about yet. Um. There, uh, Daruk for, um, well, for bringing me closer to Link. What does that mean, Mifa? Uh. <laughs> Link has been chosen to guard the princess wherever she goes. They shall be spending much time together. We're, we're forming some sort of triangle in the shape of our romantic subplots. <laughs> I was watching Jeopardy the other night, just like on the Pluto TV channel that only plays Jeopardy reruns. <laughs> and uh -huh. someone got a question where the answer was going to be, it was like, what do you call the shape where person A likes person B, person B likes person C, and person C likes person A, right? And I was right. like, oh, a love triangle and the woman on the show buzzed in and with the confidence of someone who knows they're correct said threesome <laughs> <laughs> a pretty awkward threesome if you ask me everyone's giving attention to somebody else uh this is adorable because i think she's talking about is it an ocarina of time where there's princess uh uh whatever one of the princes that's the first one where there's a fish in love with link anyway Ah. She gets Link all to herself. As sunset, I shall ride upon Ruta with Link. So, a princess of the past, please lend me your courage. And that's where the diary ends. Aww. Hey, King Dorafan!
How's it going, my man? Thank you, Link. You have saved us all. I am certain that Mipha is thrilled to be with you, as ever she was. Mipha's ghost blushing furiously, watching me slowly and methodically read her diary. Yeah, tell me about Mipha. Why not? Yes, of course you wish to hear about her, dear Mipha. I'm sure it would bring her peace to know she's on your mind. And internally, she's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Always kind. From the day she was born. Yada, yada. Adored you like a brother. And that quickly changed after you hit puberty. <laughs> Wait, literally? <laughs> As Mipha's diary plainly... St oh my god! He's giving us permission to read the diary. Or I guess he's like, yeah, you read the whole thing, so what the fuck are you asking me for? Bizarre, right? <laughs> There's an old legend about a fish that was in love with some random blonde kid with a sword, so I, I thought it was very nice and traditional. Mipha's diary. <laughs> I'm sure Mipha would forgive you anything. Thanks, bud. All right, who's next? Uh, Daruk. Let's find Daruk's diary. It's got to be in um, uh, Goron City. Sorry, chat was talking about this whole situation. <laughs> There's something about voice lines that the champions have after beating the blights. I don't know about that. Oh, if you if you rechallenge the blights, like what? you get different voice lines from them when you beat them. So I think one of Mifas might be her yelling at you about her diary. Wait, you can like, rechallenge the blights? I think so. Huh. All right. What else is on fire? Oh, like everything. Everything is on fire. Okay. Um, let's just go back to the actual good shield. And let's be not on fire if we can help it. Uh, let's just do the pants. Let's go full wrong trousers on this one. Did that, did that work? Are we good? Great. Alright, let's go to the boss's house and see what we can find. I feel like Daruk is going to be, like, the only no drama one of these. Like, another good day in the mines. Beat up some bad guys. Bargo. Now, if only I could remember. Hold on. Lizard? No lizard. Be gone. If only I could remember where the boss actually lives. Ah, hello, boss. I think I remember where the boss lives now. Hey, Bluto. The Let's one chat. big house that has a different colored rock outside of it. Tell me about Daruk. Mm. You want to know about Daruk? Popular subject these days. Not long ago, Reno Bard came by. I wanted to know all about him. Told him all about all kinds of things. For example, the Boulder Breaker. No valid blah blah. Yeah. What? What? Wh why? <laughs> why? Why do you think? Make it easier for us Gorons to get all that tasty rock roast. Uh, okay, yada yada yada. All right, later. Give me his diary. Come on, Daruk. Daruk? Wait, guys, does Daruk not have a diary? Training journal, thank you very much. Oh. Where would his training journal be? Yeah, no idea. Doesn't look super comfy. Chat, where is the training journal? Yeah. Tell me the secrets. And no lying this time. Oh, Yonobo! That mm. makes sense. Hey, boss, where's Yonobo? Boss man. Hey, your little mate. Aww. Where's Yonobo? Staring off in the distance on top of the entrance gate. Typical. Ah, ah. No. Where's the entrance gate? Oh, I found him. <laughs> I see him. Nobo, you're being so silly. He's well, just in a silly, goofy mood. Oh, I saw him. Boy! There he is. Alright, let me up. I am going to go use the bathroom while you handle this whole awesome. training journal nonsense. Don't talk about bad movies without me. Of or course. Do. I don't know. It's your life. You can live <laughs> it. Oh. Alright, chat. Best indigo impressions and good bad movies to chat about. Mm. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, 
Aw. <laughs> you know what was scrawny by Goron standards? All right, where the hell is Yonobo's house? Oh, right. Let's grab that real quick. Behind the inn. Okay, let's find the inn. And then let's talk to... Oh, okay, we're, we're pretty close. Oh, we're really close. Wait, behind me. Okay. Behind the end. Am I taking you guys too literally again? <laughs> oh man, Last Airbender. I would love to dish about Last Airbender. Is it that? Wait, hold on. Did I already check this? I think this is a shop. Oh, maybe not. This is cute. But uh, if it is Yunobo's place, I don't know where the training journal is. So I'm guessing it's not here. Lizard! Yeah! We got it! Okay, anyway. What did I miss? Uh, chat actually led me to the right place for a change. Oh, nice. Daruk's training journal. Also, they suggested we discuss Last Airbender. I'm going to start Ooh. writing in this diary thing starting now. Ugh, well, it, the movie was bad and the show was good. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. Well, I'll, I'll dish in a minute once I'm done with Daruk's training journal. Because he's calling it his training journal. Yeah, simple life. Hope simple stuff counts. Today's journal entry. What should I write about? Oh, I know. I had some rock roast from the peak of Death Mountain. It was delicious. I think I'll eat more of it soon. Hylians, Calamity Ganon, Tiny She. I love how the Goron are just like, everyone else is so tiny. Do you hope that divine beast or whatever? There was a video I watched about this, uh, either by Celtic or Nintendo Black Crisis. I can't remember. Uh, basically about where did they dig up the divine beasts? Because it's specific mm. in the diaries that, like, they were dug up in these areas. Um... Oh. Aw, Daruk mm. found us when we were fighting off monsters. That's cute. Mm. And then and then he, we also saved Daruk because he got distracted <laughs> with how cool we were. Got a respectable appetite. Loves to eat meat, fruit, vegetables. All sorts of things a decent person wouldn't dream of eating. Great A rock roast. <laughs> he liked it so much he was speechless. Cool, I ate a rock because Daruk peer pressured us. Oh, see, see? Our uh, bullet time is indeed an ability we diegetically have in universe. <laughs> nice. Love it. Uh, I'll have her back, also have a nice hearty meal with. Aww. From now on, Link is an official brother. Okay, well, last time this happened with Mifa, we, we didn't stay that way, so. <laughs> Little princess, mm. blah, blah, blah. Great Daruk never turns down someone in need. Seem really happy. Four champions, one swordsman to take on Ganon. Anti-Ganon team is six strong, made up of all different kinds of people. The makings of an epic feast. Oh, man. We would have had such a cool after-fight dinner if everyone hadn't died. Aw. Princess Zelda didn't like the rock roast. That's sad. What to eat is so many rocks. I'm a champion group. now. Feels good. Haven't talked to Link in a while. Seeing him at the inauguration ceremony was nice. Good day! Chosen the appointed night. I hear one of those ancient machine things went nuts during some test and shot out deadly beams. The true Goron spirit Link grabbed a pot lid from the ground and deflected the blast. Yada yada. Well, that's adorable. Redania. 
Blah, blah, blah. He just shoved me into the Divine Beast so I could explore it aimlessly all day. Huh, that's cute. Dang it, this is adorable. Yada, yada. <laughs> Something princessy, like I guess we're the same, you and I. Sounds heavy. Must have been bonding over their food preferences. <laughs> Daruk! Why must you be so lovable and so dead? <laughs> to really drive home the angst. Right, makes me hungry. And that was all he wrote. All right, that was great. Let's go see what Ravali has to say. Oh, yes. I want my angsty son's book. This one we gotta read in full shonen protagonist mode. Oh, you know it. You know it. Hell yeah. I got this one if you want. <laughs> You're gonna be a few seconds delayed. You just gotta flip pages really quick. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when people are watching it back, they're gonna see it a few seconds delayed too. I think I'm in time with the stream, is well, the thing. Well, the thing is, you're a few seconds behind me. I'm in time with the stream. If I read it aloud, it would appear synced up to everybody else. If you read mm. it aloud, it'll have the few seconds delay of coming through me. I mean, we can still do isn't, it. <laughs> isn't that what Ravali would have wanted, you know? Well, to be as disruptive as possible. Let's yep. do it. Hello, sa. Oh, wait, hold on. I actually think I know where Ravali's diary is because I noticed a conspicuously empty table the last time I was up here. Excuse me, sir. Ah, pardon me. I'll just, uh, Show <clears> the table. read the diary of Ravali the Rito legend. <laughs> Hell the fuck yes. The diary of Ravali the Rito legend. All right. In your own time, madam. <clears throat> I won another archery competition today. As one would expect, the village can't stop talking about my winning streak. In short order, I've managed to break all the previous records and set an insurmountably high bar. <laughs> Just turning into Danny. <laughs> yeah, well, Everywhere I go, I receive praise and affirmations that I am the pride of the Rito. I could get used to this. The Elder asked me what I would like as a prize for my achievements. I told him I wish for an archery training ground. If I am to keep this up, I need somewhere to train at varying elevations. I'm hoping to master a new move I've dreamed of. <laughs> okay. I keep pushing my archery skills to the limit. My drive is ideal, but the ensuing ascent is not as smooth as I wish it was. Really stumbled over a scent there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more take. Take it again. <laughs> I must return to the flight range again tomorrow. There, I will become stronger, better. I won't rest until I succeed. You must become stronger. <laughs> better. The Rito children look up to me. I hear they wish to start training at the flight range too. Perhaps it's not a bad idea to allow everyone to use my training space. These are dangerous times after all. Tomorrow, I will try a new strategy I've been devising to control the updraft. I refuse to believe it's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Oh, boy. <laughs> there is a persistent rumor in town that Calamity Ganon's resurrection is imminent. It can't be true, right? Uh, impossible. <laughs> M a few years ago. <laughs> Sorry. A few years ago. <laughs> a few years ago. <laughs> A few years ago, scientists dug up an ancient mechanical beast called Mito. It was supposedly used to fight Ganon by the power of young children fighting giant mechs. <laughs> Hyrule's royal family is in search of someone to pilot the beast. They say to do so requires something beyond skill. They say one's soul must contain an incredible sacred power for a divine beast to recognize them as a master. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the next line. They should have just asked for me by name. <laughs> 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 yeah. To control the divine beast and defeat the calamity will finally allow me to prove myself in the world. I'm gonna be the next Hokage. <laughs> <laughs> That's my ninja way. Uh, <laughs> I rules princess stopped dawdling and asked me to pilot the divine beast. <laughs> I asked what her plan is. I wish I had it. 
It's completely absurd. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. Divine Beasts are little more than backup for some Hylian knight who has the honor of fighting Calamity Ganon. He's talking about me! <laughs> me! A sidekick! <laughs> I thought of declining, <laughs> but then she looked me dead in the eye and held my gaze and she said... We must protect the precious life of this yes. land from the Calamity's grasp at all costs. Hyrule needs you, Rivali. Oh, big Miss Piggy energy on that one. <laughs> Thank you. I was so corny. I almost died. <laughs> uh. But I won't soon forget the look in her eyes. She meant it with all of her heart. Imagine if that had been how Rivali died. She was like, Hyrule needs you. And he's like, oh, so stupid. <laughs> Someone else has to pilot it. I thought Helene's only thought of themselves. But I suppose there's an exception to every rule. God. I'm going to accept, of course. But out of self-respect, I'm gonna let her sweat it out a bit longer. What an asshole. <laughs> right? Hyrule's princess is coming by to ask for my answer tomorrow. She will surely be overcome with joy when I accept. <laughs> and her timing is exceptional. I am close. So close to mastering my new move and showing everyone what I'm capable of. Then they'll truly understand my greatest power. <laughs> when they see it, they'll know without a doubt it should be me fighting Ganon instead of that pathetic knight. <laughs> God, Rivali. <laughs> I can see it now. The king and princess and the knight. All on their knees, begging me to defeat Ganon for them. I've drawn a picture of the knight on his knees, just to really help me visualize it. <laughs> They'll say, please, Master... Wait. They'll say, please, Master Rivali, please use your otherworldly skills and intellect to defeat Calamity Ganon. Oh, God. I look forward to that day. It'll be a cold day in the Elden Region, my friend. <laughs> I journeyed to Hyrule Castle for an inauguration ceremony. I now bear the grand title of champion. Meaningless pomp, if you ask me. If true strength relied only on title and uniform, everyone would be a champion. That's why it relies on the sword that seals the darkness. Oopsies! <laughs> I do like the blue scarf, though. <laughs> God, the <we're folly. laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> he sucks so bad. He's the, he's the, the worst. I love him so much. <laughs> uh, that annoyingly silent knight was as emotionless as usual. <laughs> I could never tell what's on his mind. Likely nothing at all. <laughs> Somehow I can't help but believe the stories about him beating adult knights in swordplay when he was only a child. <laughs> Dill, he doesn't stand a chance against me. There's no one alive who can keep up with my aerial combat. That reminds me. It's about time I came up with a fitting name for that new move I created. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of name would be worthy? Rivali's something? Tornado? Whirlwind? Masterpiece? Hmm. The princess came to the village on official business, along with her shadow, that insufferable knight. I'm the only shadow in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to talk to him while the princess met with the elder, but he was his usual quiet self. <laughs> Why do people like him so? <laughs> oh my god, this is great! I also gave him the privilege of seeing me perform Rivali's Gale. Nothing. No reaction at all to my impressive feat! I showed it to him even knowing there was a chance of failure. Since it's still so new, he must truly be slow-witted. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to provoke him into facing me, but to no avail. It's like talking to a stone! So this is his perspective on the memory when he showed up. It was like, pardon me for being so blunt, but you suck ass and you're useless and you have no way of making it up to that divine beast on your own. <laughs> Link's just like, cool story, bro. <laughs> Rivali's like, I just can't get him to notice me. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Why doesn't he notice my cool move? And maybe <laughs> shout a name for it or something out. I'm really working on it. <laughs> Our interactions were a waste of time, so I flew off to find solace with Mado. I belittled him and everything, and he still wouldn't give me the time of day. <laughs> What's wrong with that guy?
Daruk informed me that we have been asked to escort the princess to Laneru. We're to see the princess off at dawn at the mountain's base and meet her there when she returns at sunset. <laughs> Must I participate in this nonsense? Though friendship. I still remember that look on the princess's face. Okay. <laughs> Power friendship, whatever. <laughs> When she asked me to pilot the Divine Beast, she was not only determined, but she seemed desperate. She's aware she can't fulfill her sacred duties, and anyone can see how it weighs on her. <laughs> oh my god, Rivali. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult for me to comprehend the troubles of the talentless, but I'm trying. <laughs> bro, bro! <laughs> It's not that such an asshole. <laughs> it's the worst. He's just a terrible bird. <laughs> it's not that I dislike the princess. She tries her hardest. It's simply not good enough. Wow. No, I don't think I can spare the time to send her off in the morning. But perhaps I will fly over to greet her at sunset. <laughs> perhaps that alleged ceiling power will show her some mercy. I'm finally awakened this time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he is I like how awful. the other two have had like an endearing moment with Link and Rivalis is just like, I was an asshole to every single person in my last <laughs> words there. Maybe someone won't fuck it up. <laughs> wow. He's j I mean, my God. But also it's so funny that like, he doesn't even mention the other champions. He barely mentions anything about Zelda. Just like, yeah, she really wanted my help, so I guess I can oblige. And then he has like four pages just about Link and how Link won't pay attention to him. <laughs> just like, it's wow. It's probably my favorite piece of writing in the entirety of the game. God, that's so fucking funny. They were like, we can make Rivali secretly be like, uh, you know, the princess believes in me and that makes it easier for me to believe in myself. No, he's just a dick. <laughs> Literally nothing good about him. It's, it's incredible. Uh, okay, let's put on my good oh, pants. It's his greatest skill. His greatest boon. His yeah. greatest, uh, hubristic trait. It's, it's truly, truly astounding. Who could possibly dislike this guy, honestly? Like... He's so endearing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like how when he gives you Ravali's Gale, he's like, the sacred p power that has been dubbed Rivali's Gale. It's like, has been dubbed Rivali. <laughs> has been. By who, exactly? <laughs> Perhaps your diary will inform me. <laughs> Heck yeah. One dollar. Alright, back we go. Man, that was good stuff. I just, he's wow. he's just the worst. Awful. Just a terrible bird. And that makes him the best. <laughs> you know, I wonder you if- You have someone truly terrible in a game to make the game fun. That's why Tom Nook is so important when he's a bad guy. It makes mm. Animal Crossing fun. Um, Rivali uh, is not the only reason that Breath of the Wild is good, but having just a truly terrible bird in the game does make it better. I am wondering if Daruk's like, they say I need to write some kind of diary, but I don't really know what I have to talk about. It was like the writers being like, fuck, we have to make like champions ballot entries for everybody. But like, what the fuck is Daruk going to talk about? What rocks he ate today? Uh, I guess we're doing that. <laughs> it's just like, is that it? No, that's not right. Where are the fucking missing rocks? This pattern is so hard to see. Mm-hmm. This is why I don't do Korok puzzles, folks. They're dumb. They're fun. Eh. You get to meet a little guy. I guess I do want to meet a little guy, but eh, whatever. We're just gonna go to the thingy. Do the thing. You know, the stuff. With the... <sighs> Man. Ooh. Is that one of my old friends? Respawned for more, I see. I can oblige you. Can you find a talisman? Oh, no. Guardian. No, no. It's not a, yeah, come on. 
if there are any okay, in the area. Okay, of all of these streams that I've been on, like, 90% of the time we've been fighting Talos. Well, that's game. because it's easy and fun and rewarding, but now I have almost nothing to spend money on, so, like, what am I going to do with it? I don't know. Yeah. I guess I could try fully upgrading some armor sets. I have, for those of you at home, uh, as mentioned, we are rapidly creeping up on the part of the game where, like, you basically have to go be Ganon because you have run out of other things to do. Uh, that are actually any fun. Don't at me. I'm not getting all the Koroks or all the shrines. Uh, but I do have, like, a little short list of, uh, if we do more fundraising, <laughs> things that could be, like, donation goals for, like, hey, you know, let's do this side quest or this, this side objective or something. Um, so. There he is. So innocent. So naive. He'll show him the error of his ways soon enough. Come on, buddy. Everyone in chat asking if Red died any particular piece of armor red, the answer to that is almost a certainly uh, Yeah, all of them. <laughs> all of the all of the sets in the game have been died. Right? Well not all of them. We haven't tested all of them out, but all of the ones that you've been wearing have been pretty red. Yeah. No, where'd the rest of it go? Ah, that's fine. It probably wasn't a core anyway. And I bet those grapes were sour. Anyway. <clears throat> we could be any Breath of the Wild species, which one would you be? I mean, the Gerudo are all so buff. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's tie a tie between Helian and Rito for me, because I like the idea of being able to fly, but I don't really want to be covered in feathers. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like, you know, the way that Hyrule is built, being... Uh, being a Hylian is kind of the objective correct answer, unfortunately, because you have the chance to be, like, a cool chosen one, and you get all this nifty magic, and depending on what time... Bugs. Yeah, you get to live on, like, flying islands, depending on what time things are happening. Uh, that's always nice and fun. Got any bits? No bits. No bits. Okay, that's fine. I'm not mad. Um... I get the Sheikah are like a subcategory of Hylian, right? They're not like a distinct people. Yeah, they're like like a tribe. I guess they're so extra think. chosen by the goddess Hylia. Um, mm -hmm. Being a Sheikah would be pretty neat. Get to be a ninja. It's always fun. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had this thought. Like, what if the Gerudo were like, oh, we've gone... So many centuries without having any men born. I guess we must be free from Ganondorf. And then some, like, young Gerudo girl is like, Well, uh, I figured some stuff out about my gender. Uh, and I'm going to be going by he, him from now on. And it's like, oh, great. Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Okay, that's, like, near the top bit of the city. Oh, that's just the middle of fucking nowhere. All right, we'll deal with that later. Ooh, that's right by the labyrinth. We know where that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... Never played Kingdom Hearts, but man, the simple and clean ain't a song that's really catchy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, come on. Okay. We are gonna go... Oh, let me just delete that old map. We don't need it anymore. Get out of here, you. All right, that is... Okay. Uh, looks like north of the city. Like, ish Oh, wait a minute. I think I remember that one, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, what? I've never... What? What? We're doing this clean, for sure. Um, oh, by the labyrinth. Okay, yeah. You know what? Forget this one. We'll deal with that later. We'll do the fun one by the labyrinth first. So that's like here-ish. Perfect. Okay. Alright, later's cast. Ah, oh, just in time. Okay. Hup, hup, hup. 
Man, it's a good thing there's still more stuff to do with the Champions Ballad. <laughs> it would be a shame if we were just gonna wrap up the party this soon, but no! We have a whole other dungeon that's gonna open up after this. Lucky I mean, us. I'm probably gonna jump off the stream in 45 minutes. That is take. wise! You should definitely do that. I, on the other hand, am still recovering from New Zealand time, so I've got plenty more pep in my step. Very wise! <laughs> um, chat wants to know what our preferred mediums for art are. Well, that is entirely dependent on the story that's being told with it. I think, like, in context of you, like, drawing or... Oh, you know, preferred medium something. to make. Uh, yeah, yeah, comics. Nice. Do you do, like, I guess digital then, or...? Oh, yeah, 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 digital art. It, <laughs> I guess that makes sense. For me, art medium is more like... Well, no, I guess that's accurate, like, digital versus painted. Yeah, digital would be correct. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Whoops. I like acrylic paint a lot, um, because I hate having to use, uh, I just do art for funsies, and I like to do a lot of, like, very pop art inspired stuff, so I don't, I like my harsh clean lines and not mm. having to mix stuff together, and acrylic's really good for that. Um, but I'll do pretty much anything physical if I can get my hands on it. Um, I'll do some digital art from time to time too, but like, man. I do so much digital stuff day to day for work that, like, when I go to do my hobby, I'm like, I just want to do literally anything where I'm not looking at a screen. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me all of the. I hate pastels, but I would gladly work in pastels over digital some days. Ooh, I hate the texture on pastels, though. I know, right? Pastels well, and pastels charcoal. I can deal with chalk pastels, awful. No, anything that gets something dry and gritty on my hands is an immediate no no. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. I do love charcoal. No. I've done some fun charcoal stuff in the Can't past. Can't stand it. It was my I least to, like, favorite thing to do. Last legs of my sketchbook from the last few years, trying to fill in a few pages, and I'm just like, what? Literally, what? Anything I can do to just like fill pages in this so that I have an excuse to buy a new sketchbook and start from scratch. Incredible. Um, I did a whole page of Ziggy's that I'm really fond of, where I just like watched her for an hour and any pose she make, I just drew in the book, uh, in this cartoon form. I'm pretty fond of that page. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have just done this for the whole sketchbook. Well, Duke King is too far away. All right, Ravali, you better recharge this nice and quick. Thank you. Oh, we're fine. All right. Oh, we are not going to make it. That's okay. <laughs> Don't touch the floor. Floor is lava. Don't touch the floor. Floor is floor. lava. Okay. I love oh. fighting the Moldugas. They're so fun. Yeah. Hey, you big bitch. Yeah, I see you, Lumen. Ha ha ha! Got the big question mark on his head. Come on, buddy. Nope, almost. Missed it by that much. So I gotta use the round one so it can eat it. Where are you hiding, big fella? Come on, you want to eat the tasty bomb? Doesn't look delicious. Uh, I guess not. Okay, I think I should lure it with the square bomb. Yep. Well, that's not really helpful either, is it? I usually let the blue, like, you kind of kind of let him loop around a little bit till he gets a smidge closer. Yeah. And then throw the circular one, and then he usually goes for it before you blow it up. Yeah, normally. I I'll wait till he's closer. <laughs> he might just be eating the random lizals that spawn in this part of the desert. Also very possible. You coming closer, big fella? Come on, come on. You want to eat this tasty bomb, don't you? Where'd my tasty bomb go? Oh, tasty bomb, maybe shouldn't lure it over here. Shoot. The wind, it betrayed me. It betrayed me. I have awoken the wind. Oh, I was really hoping that would do something. All right. Yep. Gale is now ready. Thanks, Rivali. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm a tasty normal thing. Come closer. Oh, eat shit, my friend. Come closer. All right, now. Here we go. Come on, Arvosa. Come on, one more! Whoop! 
All right, perhaps that was a little bit ambitious. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's terrifying. I love it. Hey, friend. I have something Every delicious single person for ever in charge of a story is like, oh, the sand where all the big giant worms are. <laughs> Dune, this game, the movie Tremors. Of course. People love their sandworms. Everyone loves a sandworm. You're gonna eat. Oh, bro, what are you fucking doing? Ooh, I was really hoping that would do more. Um, Your Naruto bow is badly damaged. Yes. Didn't last much longer after that. He wants me to do something. Does it now? Yep. Well, it was circling around in such a way that inclined me to believe that the game had something I could have done during that sequence. I just don't know what it was. Yes, yes, come on. Come on, do it. Whoop. Oh, God, its face is so creepy. All right, here we go. Yeah! It landed on you. That would have been extremely funny. I would accept my death if it came at that cost. Yep, yep, come on. Pop! Whoa! So many bits. I would use bomb arrows if I had any. <laughs> I keep forgetting to buy them. <laughs> The first time I fought this thing, it took me a while to figure out lightning would work on it. It was like, I was doing the strat for the old, you know, Mulduga thing. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Um, just, uh, and none of these weapons are great. Uh, and it was like, this is taking so, this is doing so little damage, there has to be some other way to do it. And then I used Urbosa's Fury, and it, like, took out a third of its health bar, and I was like, oh, whoa, this thing's fancy. Whoa, that's... Hold on. All right. The Fuck royal this. bow? No, uh, you'll see it in a second. Oh, um, the royal shield? It's very nice looking. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Oh, really? I find yeah. them sometimes in Hyrule Castle, I feel like. Oh, There's that one. might be it, yeah. And you, my friend? Oh, that's, that's nice. Okay. I like the implication that this thing ate a bunch of guards. Like, yeah. well, that was fun. All right. Anything else? To drop any cool bits? Just the weapons? All right, great. Let's go to the shrine. <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like I haven't seen- I've seen- well, hold on. We had, like- like, we have the knight's shield, obviously. We had the royal guard's shield. But this mm -hmm. is the royal shield. It's visually distinct with more gold bits on. Uh, and I like it. It's cool. Oh yeah, let's talk to Tracy. Oh, I should've gotten those sand boots by catfishing that guy. Eh, hindsight. I do love that that quest is basically just like... Catfish! I don't know. I don't feel great about it. He's creepy. Alright. He's a weird dude. He's a weird dude. Hey, girl! Get to have boots. What is this? Are you that pretty gal I saw in Gerudo Town? I mean, who's asking? Don't try to hide it. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you wear, his eyes see all. Oh, Tracy wasn't born yesterday, after all. Oh. Tracy is the NPC I would ah. most want to be in this game. It's because only women Get can get to town. Clever boy. I'm sure you had your reasons? I'll keep that gossip to myself. That's called integrity. You hear that? Real actual news sources nowadays? <laughs> Aw. Bashful. You there. I saw everything. I can't believe you were able to defeat that weird Mulduga. I'm speechless. Me! Okay, not really. But this has scoop written all over it. Mind if I write a tell all about you? Uh. Link, come on. We could have been famous. <laughs> Female attention and adoring fans. Translators really had to specify the gender of the attention Link would be getting after writing Rivaldi's diary like that. All right. <laughs> Laters, girl. Why is the the heart thing is shooting off more hearts? <laughs> I still don't see this thing. I feel like maybe I have to like update or something. I maybe it's on the app. I haven't tried it on desktop. Uh, it's just a little button in the corner. I'll just take a take a 
Anyway. Oh. There we go. All right. What do we have here? Oh, boy. Another lightning puzzle. All right. Get out of here, Kiva Tala. Big or small. All right. What do we got? Um... Huh. How interesting. That was working for a second there. Now it isn't. I can't tell what it's powering. Maybe nothing. Okay. I see what we're doing here. It's a pretty clever. Pretty basic, just connect the currents puzzle. Nice. That will do nothing. Cool. Just checking. Just keeping the game sharp, you know, keeping it on its edge. How am I supposed to. Like an ice block, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Uh, looks like not on that one. Like if you uh, put it under that platform? Yeah, I tried. I think I need to raise the plat- I think this thing needs to be powered to raise the platform. Um, which begs the question of how exactly that happens. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that Dude. powers that. Yeah. Like, move those two. Maybe. Balls oh, hold closer. on. Like, the box in the middle and the box. Maybe the temporarily two branching that does something? Uh, not really. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm doing something I can do here. That's not doing anything. Hmm. I know it's power plant. Oh, wait a minute. I, okay, I got it. I see what's happening. Uh, I think this is a little, yeah. I see, okay. Well, that only works if I have enough boxes. Oh, wait, I get it. I have more boxes. All right, we're good. It's all coming together. I see. Big or small is about the boxes. Ha 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 ha. Everything is coming together. All right, that charges all the way to there. And then, okay, this needs a cryonis for sure. And in fact, I think the big box needs to go here. Oh boy, and then there's an apparatus over there. My favorite. Mm. All right, hold on. Everyone thinks an apparatus. Everyone thinks they're the one special monk who can do a good apparatus thing. <clears throat> when really all they're good for is breaking the game in exciting new ways. I think maybe the apparatus is for the chest. Oh, well hopefully we don't need to do that. All right, that'll stay there and that ought to work. And then I think we only need to power this once, so... Oh, you know what I can probably do here? Maybe? Okay, let's get you out of the way. Because all I really need to do is get that ball closer to the other one. So this might be a job for... Ionis, maybe? Does that work? I think maybe you use the cube further down, and then you just, since you only have to power it for a second, you can just manually magnesis the two orbs closer together. That's what I was thinking, yeah. So, 
I don't think you need like crayon assist. I think it just needs to put the cube in the right spot. And right, then try but it. there's just enough stuff. All right, this in the right place should work. Okay, okay, come on. Great. The bath on the platform. Okay. And then you have that. Oh, I guess that one cube is connected to the power plug. Hold on, let's see. We'll be able to see the door from here, so. Come on, get in the water, charge the other thing. You can do it. This should be working. Deeply inconsiderate that it isn't. Okay, hold on. It charged it for a second. Maybe if you drop that one, it, like when it's still stretched out like that, and then move the other one closer to it? Oh, I think I see the problem. I feel like the circuit isn't completing up there. Mm. Ah. Okay, I see. Needs to charge it up enough that this... I wonder if I could do Cryonis under it now? Actually, I wonder if I could do Cryonis on it when it's paused at max. Okay, that might work. Actually, I don't think I would need to do Cryonis on it under that if I do that. Okay, so that lifts it up, and that does not complete the circuit for some reason. Okay, cool. Oh, wait, I see. It's just literally not against the wall where it needs to be. Alright, let's try that. I don't remember this being this annoying the first time. But I think I had the thrill of discovery keeping me going. Alright, hold on. Okay, it's charged. Come on. So if you take that cube off of the platform and use it to let those two connect the circuit, you could take the cube away from the like power source when, it's, when the platform is at the top and then just move that cube up top, right? I'm not entirely sure how it- Oh! It worked temporarily, and then it closed again! I'm sorry, I have no idea what you just said. Um, so you know how there's the two cubes, there's the- with the lifting platform, and one of them makes the platform go up? Right. I don't think you need the second cube on that platform. Oh. You can put it between the two balls, and then just once the platform's up top, it'll pause up there if you take the cube away from the power source next to it. Okay, I got And then you I can gotcha. put that up top, and it should be like a stable where... Okay, I, I see it. All right, I'm gonna put that up there. I'm gonna take you, use you to complete the circuit, allegedly. And then when it's paused... All right, yeah, 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 whatever. Zap it around, I wanna see what's happening. Okay. All right, it's not completing the circuit, I'll fix it. I want to know how Urbosa was supposed to do this. Okay. Come on. Perfect. Okay. That makes sense. Alright, now it's going, and now that's going, and now it's actually open. Okay, fantastic. Great work, team. And then we gotta do the, uh, sand seal thing, which honestly might be the hardest part. Because sand seal controls are bad. <laughs> Hello. Give me the extra special sporb. So I have to fight Thunderblight again. Three emblems, yep. Alright, great. Bye! Awesome. Okay. Whew! Alright. Two more, then we get Thunderblade. Then we get to do the other stuff. Do, let's see. Hmm. So I've been streaming for about four and a half hours. It's not inconceivable that I could finish the thing I wanted to do. Well, you know. Follow your heart? Yeah, maybe. Okay, that one was the, uh, by the labyrinth. 
get rid of you real quick. All right, we got the one in the... Oh, huh. I remember. We have Yiga Clan Part 2. Mm. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. Let's try whatever the hell this is north of Gerudo Town first. Uh, let's just warp so we don't die. I think that one is the sand seal thing, but... Okay. I am excited for Yuga Clan Part 2. I don't remember it being appreciably <laughs> worse than Yuga Clan Part 1. Also, once you figure out the uh, cheese strat for just getting on the ceiling and going from there, a lot simpler. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, wait, what am I doing? We need to get the guns out ASAP. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's go north of the town. Mm -hmm. All right, we are looking for, like, yeah, like, this direction should get us ish there. Ah, perhaps it's where all those sand seals are hanging out. Oh, hold on, do we have heat stroke? Uh, maybe. Ugh, Link, you are so whiny. Okay, um... Oh. That's not enough for you? Okay. Um, perfect. Those pants look stupid. Um, can we do our regular pants? Or will you die? He's fine. See? It's cool. Alright, let's go. Hup, 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 hup. I hope they don't make me catch my own. There it is. Okay. Clearly. Now, uh, what sh we're not going to use the Hylian shield for this. We're just going to do a net shield. That sounds nice. <laughs> you don't want to blow the fancy shield on surfing? I worry how long the Hylian shield has held up already. It won't tell me what its durability is, and that makes me <laughs> nervous. Yeah. Hello, sand seals. I what wish certain items in the game had better, like... Uh, once you got it, there was an easier way to re-get it. Kind of like how the um, champion's weapons work. I don't mind fighting like... the Stalnox in Hyrule Castle for this one again. Also, I think you can buy it in Terrytown or something? Oh, I don't think oh. you can. Yep, yep, okay. Uh-huh. You must be a trained one, right? Can I use this one? Is that okay? Oh. <laughs> okay, thanks. You can indeed rebuy it in Terrytown. Uh -huh. it the first time. Hello. No. Why? All right, we're gonna do the. Uh, we're gonna do. If this one runs off. Ha ha! I did it. Nice. Out of my way. Nice. All right, let's let's. Oh god, the controls. Okay, fine. Nice. Out of my way. Swing low, sweet chariot. Okay. <laughs> Out of my way. Yeah, why wouldn't there be a sandstorm? Easy. It makes life so green and <laughs> anime. We're both as pure as ready. Thanks, girl. Perfect timing. Oh my god, that reminds me. I don't. I try not to call out specific dumb comments on anything, but there was somebody who just popped up on the phones video that went up on Friday, who's like, huh, Red is so stupid, you couldn't have cell phones on alien planets, you need satellites for that, and it's like, what? What? 
And he was so ins people were like, you know, only satellite phones use use satellites for phone stuff. Most others use cell towers. And it's like, well, yes, but if you went to an alien planet, huh, your cell phone wouldn't work. And it's just like, we're talking about magic and science fiction. Are you okay? So, hope that guy's living his best life. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. Really goes to show that, like, I can put all the work and love in my heart into making a video that's accessible and, like, holds together and has a good thesis, and it will not stop people from just getting it wrong. <laughs> That's the other side of having an audience for stuff, you know? It can be yeah. very creatively fulfilling to see your work uh, engaged with, but on the other side of that is that um, people are going to engage with your work and they're not all going to get the gist <laughs> yeah. necessarily in the way that you intended. Well, this is um, why I don't read all the comments. Mm -hmm. That's a very healthy mindset. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Best humanity for you. It's just doing its thing. Ah, clever. Ah, so, so clever. So in smartitude. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. It's time for another exciting episode of The Floor is Lava! How do I... which do I... Everyone's favorite game! Who could possibly resist its twists and turns? Link, come on, man. Alright. Okay. And uh, you, Link. All right, we just gotta get the power source away from the thingy with the stuff. And let's get you over there. Okay, we just need to get power from there to there, and I need to be able to get on it without dying. Normal stuff. Normal stuff. Link, Casual. my dude. Casualary. All right, let's just climb on up again. Oh man, I don't know why that reminded me. Um. <laughs> I was suggested to watch Jim Cotta a while back. It's not good, but like in a really fun way. Nice. It's like Mortal Kombat, but for gymnasts. Trying so hard. Nothing is more serious than a, a show that is only about one very specific sport. Yeah. Oh, and we love it. My favorite part is when he goes to the, the spooky, like, the bad guy village where everyone in it is a bad guy that he can just beat up indiscriminately and there's just a fucking like uh what's the, damn it i remember the word for it uh it's one of those vaulting horse there's a fucking pommel horse there's a pommel nice. horse just in the middle in the center square so he can just get on it and swing around and just immediately take out all the bad guys so some top quality uh, town design right there, that honestly. That gets right to the core of something that I think we as modern filmmakers have abandoned too soon, and that is the um, miscellaneous high-low bar just in <laughs> built diabetically into your set. I mean, Mortal yeah. Mortal Kombat in the 90s did it, The Princess Bride does it, and it's always great. Mortal Every time Kombat it happens, it's like 100%. It. The Mortal Kombat one is, like, transcendent. When well, that's because Johnny, Johnny Cage, Cage needed an excuse to be able to, like, <laughs> keep up even slightly. Oh, God! Oh, I didn't when know When Johnny that Cage is in what looks like hell and just in the middle of it, does a full gymnastics routine, my soul leaves my body, and I realize that this is a perfect movie. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. I think he says a one-liner, too. I don't remember what it is, but... Of course he says a one-liner. He's Johnny Cage doing gymnastics. You're so right. I don't know what I was thinking. Of red, of course. How could he do anything else? That's a movie I'm disappointed no one has picked for a movie truck yet. Is the 90s Mortal Kombat? Oh, really? I love that movie. There, I have a list of movies I'm like, if I was ever on a movie truck, here's what I would pick, and it, none of them have been picked yet. <laughs> Not even a little bit close if any of them come to be picked. That's so tragic. It's my my boon, my bane. Curse to there. What the? Oh, what? Oh, okay. I gotcha. I see it. I smell what you're stepping in. Okay. What? Isn't it connected to the one on the left? Yeah, yeah. 
I just gotta scooch them all over. And the power must flow. The spice must flow. Yeah, let me in. Give me your special spore, old man. It's desert power, Red. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> like you've always wanted. Desert power. You know, sometimes I watch a movie and I'm like, wow, that bit was so stupid. Someone must have been fucking strong-armed to put that in there. Like, that must have been executive meddling. And then I tur it turns out it was in the original book or, like, the actual directorial vision of the original director. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Desert Power was certainly one of those. Uh, I think the only other one I can remember is when I, when I watched the Snyder Cut to compare it to the cinematic version of, uh, of Justice League. Right. And every single joke that they had in a scene with the Flash in it was from the Snyder Cut. <laughs> All of the, like, yeah. what, what's your superpower? I'm rich. Uh, you know, him calling himself a black hole for snacks, a snack hole. That's from the Snyder Cut. And I was like, boy, I was, foolishly, I was blaming Joss Whedon for those things being bad. How silly of me. Oh, God. Oh, beans. Do we have to get out of here the old-fashioned way? Oh, That's just no. awful. Oh, hold on. Let me put on pants so I don't die first. God, you, such a, you're so needy. All right. At least all the sand seals nearby you can go ride. Oh, boy. Diggy, hello. Welcome back to the arena now that we've hit the post 1.45 a.m. hours oh. for me. I scared okay. away the sand seals. The sand seals you have can't been... You can on the back of this chair. You need to either commit to jumping on me or jump back to the bed where you were asleep at. Because you know right what? now... You're standing on my shoulder in a way that is hitting some pressure points I'm not fond of. <laughs> While we're here... Decision. This is the exact tone I talk to my cat with all the time. Incredible. There's a pro ZD sketch about, like, if we talked to cats and humans the way we talk. Like, if we swapped it. Oh! Mm -hmm. Oh, boy! <laughs> Thanks for pointing, sword lady. I almost didn't notice that blood moon. <laughs> She has, I uh, will update for the audience, remained on the back of the chair and is in fact still causing me some slight pain. No. But she's so warm and soft. No, 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 no Oh, you have to lay on arm of narrow arm of the chair instead. This is comfortable for you. This is what you want. It's what she deserves. She is watching the stream. I want you to know that. Ah, hello, stream. I think because there's lots of little things moving on it, and she's susceptible to this. Uh, well, who can I've, resist lots of little things, really? I've been calling her. Um, uh. I've been showing her cat TV sometimes to get her to chill out a little bit uh, in between getting fed because she's been a little antsy as I've been decreasing the amount of food that she gets fed uh, for her aforementioned diet. Mm -hmm. And um, she really gets into it. I'm a little worried I've turned her into like an iPad kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since this is the... Um... This is, the shrine, uh, this is the shrine at the end of a shrine quest we haven't gotten uh, that involves taking sand seals through a sandstorm. I'm hoping that solving this shrine will make the sandstorm go away so we can warp out of here and go do Yiga Clan Part 2. Nice. Uh, I'm just not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing. might not be what I was supposed to be doing. Just standing there menacingly. Great. Okay. Awesome. Just standing there. Now I have an orb. We love an orb. Uh, Hello, glowing orange thing. Do you take orbs? It does. How is Ziggy? Ziggy is oh, great. Cool. She's Amazing. still just perching and watching. Um, this is the time of night where she gets really chill before like 4 a.m. where she starts to go a little crazy again. Ah, the zoomies. We love them. Yeah. Well, because she decides she wants to get fed at 6 a.m., which I'm so not about. I'm trying to get her to be like, oh, 8 a.m.? That's a good time to eat, right? Because um, that's when I could, you know, be waking up. And uh, 
very much she's like no 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 <laughs> five or six a.m minimum and i'm like no 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 no. i will throw you out of this room <laughs> and we do this back and forth every single day and then i get terrible sleep afterwards because i've interrupted my rem cycle she and just ziggy gets fed. so you know yeah yeah, but her idea of love is smacking me in the face with her <laughs> ball repeatedly until I feed her, so... Yeah. Oh, game's taking its sweet time with this one. At the far reaches of the continent, there's a being that trades in hard containers and stamina vessels. Okay! We did it! The, the stuff went away. We can come back here whenever we want. All right. It's time for Yiga Clan 2, uh, which I think is, like, up this away a little bit. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, we'll go to the Gerudo Tower and then go from there. Oh, we're actually pretty close. We are actually quite close. You know what? Why not, right? Let's see, are we going in the right direction? Vaguely. Perfect. Take that, and... We have a new routine, Ziggy and I. Um, I've been re-watching a bunch of Midsummer Murders because it's been a while since I really went through this incredibly long show. And um, I have been spring cleaning my apartment, so it makes for good background noise. Mm. Uh, and what will happen is I will sit on the couch directly in the center, and then on my side, Ziggy will come and curl up like a little hamper <laughs> pillow. And it's adorable. But then, if I interrupt this routine in any way, she becomes uh, unconsolably furious for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh no! I mean, cats love routines. They do, but I can't spend every week doing nothing. So no, of does course not. Feel a little bit like this might present some problems later in life. Cats certainly don't enough. understand the concept of a day job. Yes, I'm like, I don't know how to explain to you that I need to sit in a different spot in this apartment and edit some video for a while. <laughs> we can't watch the British people solve the grisly murders right now, Ziggy. It's nearly two in the morning. <laughs> well, we're solving a murder of our own, sort of murder of all our friends. The way. In a bit. Okay. Hup, hup. Let's go check out the Yiga clan hideout. Oh, that's fun. Never seen those just hanging out on the side of a pillar before. A bit spooky. I think Ziggy does have hunting instincts. She's not just a thousand percent vibe, but <laughs> like... Because my old apartment in um, New York, she did catch two mice, but also it took a really long time. Like I could see her hunting it for like an hour beforehand. And it was a kind of moment where I'm like, well, I don't want her to eat the mouse because she could get like a parasite or something. Right. But also I don't want this mouse to be um, running around my apartment. So what do, how do I intervene into this? And what ended up happening is that Ziggy did kill the mouse. Uh, but. They were playing out some kind of Tom and Jerry routine the whole time. Yeah, it was. It didn't feel very vicious. It felt very much like she's like, this is a game to me. And I feel like that's a bit uh, concerning for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she's seems to more... just kill for sport now. Like, <laughs> Yeah, she's a bit more brutal with, like, if, it, if a fly or something gets into the apartment. So it, that, that means war. But, like, mm. mice, she really... I don't think she quite grasped the concept of a mouse. I think I have at times flip-flopped on which of the two channel-affiliated cats I, I think this about, but I think I've come down on the side of Ziggy is not aware that she is a cat. Um, I think Cleo is aware that she's a cat and a cat that's popular on the internet and uh, acts accordingly. Cyan did at one point tell me that Cleo has been trained to pose for cameras. Uh, if she sees someone get their phone out and point it at her, she'll like stay in whatever cute pose she's doing and then she will expect a treat. So if you just take the cute picture and they're like, man, she's so cute and well-behaved, she'll be like, uh, my fee. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like Ziggy came into this world not knowing a damn thing, least of all who <laughs> she is or what. So like, I truly believe that impulses just occur to her and she's like, I guess this is what I am. <laughs> Every day is an adventure. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> she's a bit chaotic, but like in a very manageable way. Oh, yeah, yeah. As again, she was described as extremely easy to care for by the shelter, and they were correct. Yeah, it's the that whole like I was put on this earth to do one thing. Luckily, I forgot what it is, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just a big cat, you know. She's yeah, doing her cat stuff. Um, and most ninety nine percent of the time, it's great. It's just six in the morning. Sometimes I'm like, God damn it. 
I would like to not be meowed at in my own home. <laughs> like, I must follow the inscrutable exhortations of my soul. I'm sorry. I need you to feed me that really smelly fish food right now because <laughs> I refuse to eat any other kind of wet food except for this really smelly fish one. So you have to get the really smelly fish one or I won't eat for weeks on end. I'm like, I need you to understand that you are very, very stinky. <laughs> it's amazing You're for her to have that problem and also needing to go on a diet. So, so incredibly stinky you are. I was really worried about when the vet was like, yes, put her on a diet. I'm like, oh, she really only likes this like one food. I had a really hard time finding a wet food that she liked. Uh, they're like, okay, can you try switching her to this dry food that's like got a dental formula? Because if you don't do that, you're going to have to brush her teeth every night. And I'm like, I will find a way to get her to eat this dry food. <laughs> and luckily, she switched to that with like zero problems. Oh, so now good. she's on the dental formula dry food, which is fine. Am I in the right um, place? I hope you like that now that we are at 1.50, 4 a.m. I've just switched to talking about Ziggy's exact eating habits. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm loving it, so no complaints here. Like the extremely smelly wet food, and then she seemed to not mind the dental dry food, which is uh, yeah. great because it's the one thing that I have not had to fight her on so much. Um, oh, hold on, let me switch to. Uh, let me switch to. Why not? Hey, Fee, you want to kill some evil Sheikah? Yeah, we'll deal with him later. Let me catch uh -huh. up. <laughs> Daruk, thanks, my man. Love the enthusiasm. Not super necessary for this random scrub, but thanks. Um, Ziggy's a pretty comfortable cat with like being picked up and stuff. She doesn't mind too much, but my boyfriend very accurately explained the word for like what happens after you've been holding Ziggy for a minute or two, where like <laughs> you have to start fushigiing the cat because she'll start to like half wiggle out of your arms, and then you have to like hand over hand try and like keep the cat in your arms as the cat keeps trying to wiggle out and just end up like fushigiing them. You well, know, like okay. the uh, orbs from the oh. commercials. Wait, okay. Fushigi. <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of that. Uh, you don't remember the Fushigi commercial that played nonstop? <laughs> it's on early what? 2000. Oh, whatever channels it could get on. It was the, it was like a little orb that a uh, like middle-aged man would yell Fushigi at you, and then he would like roll it along his hands and stuff. Oh, interesting. So this isn't like this was formative okay. for me. Okay, I don't know how to explain this. What the fuck? Who dares bar me entrance to the Yiga clan? What? I want to go inside. That's what I want to do. All right, chat, did I fuck something up? Hold on, am I in the... This is the right place, right? Album? No, oh wait, we can delete this one. Uh, f uh, oh no, do I need to go somewhere else to start it? Because chat. What was that? You have to go in the back way. Oh! Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. You really don't remember Fushigi at all? I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, but this is reminding me of those, like, toys, you know, the... I don't know how to describe this. You know those, like, gelatinous tubes, plastic, like, yes. filled with water? Yes. Yeah. 100%. I yeah. understood exactly what you mean instantly. Yeah, the things that look like they have some kind of unsavory purpose, but do not, in fact. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, it's basically that exact motion, but uh, like you would with a Fushigi ball. Um, the Fushigi okay. commercial was extremely formative for my generation, and I feel like... <laughs> This is the first time I felt truly young hanging out with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, here's the thing. This might not be a generation thing. I just basically never watched TV when I was little. Um, They'd yell Fushigi and then a group of kids would all play with these like orbs that they could roll along their arms and they all just shouted Fushigi and no one ever really explained what a Fushigi was. Love it. Hold on. All right, where is this in relation to? Nope. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're like right it's in the on right the place. Correct kick. Midsummer murders does indeed slap. Every episode is like an hour and a half long, so it's like watching a full movie, and it's incredibly slow, and it's just like the exact same thing every single episode, and I love it. Every time there's like a dysfunctional, wealthy family that's at odds with their local town pub, it's mm, the good stuff. 
Although it's not the best British murder mystery show. It's up there. It's goaded. It's like it's it's the big one, you know? Hmm. But I do think that there are better shows. I really like Death in Paradise. Uh, that's my personal favorite. I think they got a really fun cast and they had the balls to do um, something that I've never seen any other show do at the uh, uh, beginning of season three, kind of end of season 20. Uh, season 20, season two. Um, that I won't spoil because it is truly incredible. Um, yeah. But super fun show. Um, there's, you know, like so but basically infinite oh. other British murder mystery shows that you could choose from. But Midsummer Murders is kind of the classic. All right, let's go. I mean, I feel like Ms. Marple has to be the quintessential British mystery thing. Ms. Marple's up there. Uh, I think Midsummer Murders has the edge for me because it has like the kind of long, uh, long episode, small season that you can only get when you were like truly made to be a <laughs> with a BBC mm. uh, show format, um, and it because it's all set in these like various small hamlets within Midsummer County and like you get these like portraits of these different characters and they have the, the sergeants and everything coming in and out you just really get like cover a lot of ground over the 20 some seasons it's been running well we um, love small hamlets they do love their small hamlets so full of murder and also so so violent for being such a chill show otherwise that's like, how I feel about um incredibly brutal that's but how I feel about murder so, she wrote yeah very similar vibes Midsummer Murders, if you get through an episode without, like, four people being dead, then that is a low body count for that episode. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. At least they in Murder, she wrote it, you like, taps out it, too. Yeah, they always have, like, a huge murder spree, and then also some other minor crime or scandal that is happening. Like, there's always someone's having an affair, or someone's, like, embezzling, or, like, some other, like, non-murder-related crime. That is like the B plot of the episode, even like as the red herring sort of thing. Of course. Every episode without fail. Whatever your first instinct is, don't worry about it because 100% those people are just like, I don't know, stealing from the local art gallery or something. Oh, yeah, something normal like that. Midsummer Murders is the one with Inspector Barnaby. And that's true for both of the inspectors because the first inspector is named Inspector Barnaby. And then the second inspector that comes in after that guy's contract was up is uh, his cousin, so he's also Inspector Barnaby. <laughs> huh. An incredibly efficient way to keep the same name through the entire run of the show. Um, also, the second Inspector Barnaby first appeared in the show as like a character actor in one of the really early episodes where he played a gardener who is not related at all to the detective. And I guess he was just good enough that they brought him back later on and they're like, actually this guy, forget that you ever seen his face before because he is now going to be introduced so that he could take over for the lead in like the next season ah classic yeah okay the problem is i don't think i can do my normal cheese strat of just climbing over my problems the episode with the fake painting is so good i just watched that one um oh. fuck okay am i gonna have to actually be fucking tactical about this Damn it. But my cheese. I feel like my favorite sergeant was Jones, but I have been rewatching from the beginning, and I do have to give some respect on Troy's name because truly. Okay, how do I. Hold <laughs> that on. man has a new romantic interest every goddamn episode. <laughs> okay, just a sec. I might be able to make this work. Your roof's protection is now ready to roll. I like that the vibe this stream has been uh, indigo info dumps about a show she's been watching recently while Red struggles to do actual things on <laughs> I mean, tale as old as time, right? Like, Is this what Blue f Well, now you know what Blue feels like, and I feel exactly the same as I always do on these streams. I mean, I'm having a Ms. great Fisher's time. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries is a fantastic Aussie one. I love that show. <laughs> Some of the hottest actors in that murder mystery show. Miss <laughs> um, Fisher's Murder Mysteries is like 1920s Australia. Extremely fun. Uh, great female lead. Hot detective. We love to see it. Great, oh, great so show if you're looking for an Aussie version of these like slower murder mysteries. Okay, hold on. 
Easy. I love a murder Actual mystery. Jewels. It's my favorite. Uh, like procedurals, murder mysteries, all these sort of kind of co-opted mystery genre shows. Okay. They're 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 my love. They're what I what I live for. Okay. It's what I do. It's what I live for. Miss Fisher's is so funny. I I should rewatch that. It's been a I watched it years ago. I should really go back to it and like catch some of the old episodes again. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Um, fuck. Murdoch Mystery is also very good. There, it's hard to find a bad one is the thing. Like, there's so many of the British Murder Mysteries, but like, if it's one that is on, you know, your Netflixes and your HBOs and whatnot, they're probably good enough that you're gonna get a pass. Um, a lot of people like Father Brown. It's not my personal favorite, but I think it's, it's objectively very, very good. Um, oh, okay. There's... All right, we're home free. I think. the one where it's like a full season. Uh, Later, fuckos! Man is sad for a whole season investigating it. Oh, sorry, Father Ted, not Father Brown. I'm mixing up my shows. Hi -ya! Your sacrifice pleases the pit. H Hello? There was a long form one that I am blanking on, but it was also fairly fun. Um. Anyway. Whew. Okay. Red uh, has played this game before. I have. I've done this DLC exactly once. Uh, and this part, this one they telegraph pretty hard. They have those two treasure hunters and they're like, Oh man, I hear they stole some kind of glowing orb. I sure hope the Yika clan don't throw it into this giant pit. Like they say you should in the song, and it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, one more, then one more boss fight, then one more dungeon, then one more thing. And then we're done with the champion's ballad. Whew. I too am glad that Philly exists, both because I'm <laughs> from there and also because the word John does indeed slap. Uh, it's so multi-purpose and more people should use it. Okay. So I'm not entirely clear on, like, what you can use John to replace. It's any any noun. Any oh, person, place, or thing, you know? Any noun can be a John. Yeah. Interesting. So you could say, like, that John over there, or do you remember that John, or, um, that John is crazy, you know? Uh. Basically, you know, instead of saying the word thing, say the word John. <laughs> okay, we got, it looks like, I see two purples. Uh. Thank you to everyone in chat for spelling it correctly. It is J A W N, huh. not J O H N. I have seen that before. Okay, I see. Uh, so there are wolves in Pennsylvania. Uh, one, I have no three. idea. I've never encountered one or felt like I was at risk of seeing one, so I want to say no, but Looks I'm not like genuinely uh, sure if that is true. Okay, I so saw only one pink. Also saw only one green, but that might not be correct. Wait, do I have those under the correct? Nope, I got them swapped. Nope. Right, I'll take another look if these go wrong. Nope. Okay, and I think I saw three purples. Nope. Mm. I'll take another look in a second. Wait, is that right? Yes, good. Okay, and how many orange? This one I kind of like. Who is this for again? Urbosa? She must have had a great time doing this one. They're like, well, we can't make you fight anything because you're just gonna wreck shop. So I guess, I don't Two know, pick oranges. up some spears? Yeah, rotate this thing. Why don't you fushigi a little bit, Ubi? <laughs> Maybe you'll calm down. Right. <laughs> Can I offer you a fushigi in this trying time? Okay, one of these is wrong. Probably the number of greens or pinks yes, I have. Yes, we do say water here in Philly, typically, if you have the accent. I do not have a particularly strong Philly accent. It is just in comparison to all of these normal ass talking people around Fucking flyover ass accents. Me. Okay, is that one green? Okay, one green. Oh, two greens. All right, that's a good start. Come here, you. Did we? Nope. Okay, cool. 
But we're getting closer. Work. OSP, what are your thoughts on the Canadian swimming wolves? They're basically fishing wolves that got sadly hunted out. I don't know, good for the wolves. Good that they could swim, I guess. Nice. Oh, there's yeah. four purples. I think if I saw a wolf swimming when I was in the water, I would just accept that <laughs> this was the end of me at that point. Wait till oh my god, so my youngest brother goes to school um, in Maine, and mm -hmm. he... Uh, before he left to go to the kind of like coastal area he was going to be in, my dad was like, I have one, like, safety worry for you. I just want to make sure you're aware that, like, moose can swim. <laughs> we were all like, hold a second. What do you mean your one safety concern for your new college student is that moose can swim? He's like, I saw on TikTok videos of moose swimming, and, like, they're huge and scary. Like, you should be really careful when you're in the water to make sure that there's no moose about. And I'm like, if for any reason he's in the water in Maine, he's got much bigger issues than a moose swimming. <laughs> that is a very, very funny concern to have. Hilarious concern, but this isn't what my dad does, uh, is whenever one of his children is going somewhere... Uh, he has one kind of irrational concern that he'll really, like, latch on to. Um, I studied abroad in China, and while I was not in uh, Xi'an, the city where the Terracotta Warriors are based, my dad's one fear was that I was going to go visit the Terracotta Warriors and knock them all over like they were dominoes. <laughs> and I was like, I had to reassure him so I'm like, I'm not even going to have an opportunity to go to Xi'an to see the Terracotta Warriors. I can't express to you how, like, they don't let you get that close to no, them. No, of I course can't not. And they probably you. don't have them all lined up like dominoes. No, of course they don't. It's like, there's not a situation where this is even a little bit possible. God, that's so funny. As I understand it, moose are swimmy enough that one of their primary predators is the killer whale. That's what chat is also saying. Uh, we must have seen the same Tumblr post. <laughs> I feel like if, like, it's, it's like if you see a moose, a killer whale can't be that far away. <laughs> I'd be so much more worried about the orca in this situation. Yeah, than the moose. yeah, you gotta watch out for the fucking orca in that scenario. I mean, you, you should watch out for both of them. Obviously, the last yeah. of the North American megafaun is nothing to sneeze at, but like, yeesh. Yeah. I know the orca get a bad rap and all, but still, I think I would be more concerned about them if I was in the water than the moose that's unlikely to like be out for blood, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, the killer whale attacking the moose is like, what is this fucking gangly monstrosity that's all elbows? I, I gotta fucking figure out what that thing tastes like. Whereas with a person, it's like, oh, that's like a weird seal. Let's get it. Yeah. All right. Who's ready to fight Thunderblight 2? We get to see Link's hottest outfit in this one. Nice. This is the first one I did when I, when I did this for the first time. I went straight from doing Thunderblight, you know, vanilla, to doing all the champion trials, and I just started with this one because it was closest. So I fought Thunderblight twice in one day, which I wouldn't recommend, but um, at this juncture, I had never seen the Gerudo Vo outfit, which is what we are currently rocking. And so I assumed that we were going to get a chance to fight, you know, uh, wearing some simulacrum of every champion's outfit. But then that wasn't the case. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Now this one was an absolute bitch the first time. Yes. Now we have to do it with I only- I do want to express that I, and the orcas get a bad rap, they do not hunt humans for sport or anything like that. Well, they don't hunt humans I'm for sport. I'm just saying that if I'm in the ocean and there are two things swimming near me, a big fish shape, massive, beyond belief and a goofy looking moose i know the moose is dangerous but i'm not gonna get any closer to the fish shape either great of course her boza doesn't have a bow why would she <laughs> ah. hiding bitch come on her boza Haha, <laughs> so the Thunderblight is weak to electricity. How ironic. <laughs> okay, that wasn't so bad. And this is probably fine too. 
Are you hiding, bitch? Aha. Uh -huh. your faith in hunting mode Ziggy uh, chat, but I do think a moose will be able to take her out uh, even in hunting I'll mode. Do it again. <laughs> would I want her to win? Absolutely. Oops. My guy. Do you I got struck by lightning a little bit. Um, I fall this easy. Where are you, bitch? Oh, I see. No, come on. The one that's right next to you. You know you want to. I think he's one advantage is because she's an all black cat, so given the right lighting, she could kind of just disappear into the shadows for a little bit. Oh shit, I found him. On to winter protection, don't fail me now. What D D class did you Rogue? She's a black cat, so everyone's always like, well, rogue, yeah. But I don't know if she has, like, the right attitude for a rogue, you know? She's not the most subtle cat in the world. She's not, she's not the very, like, efficient hunter, you know? So I don't, she's definitely not a ranger. On. I don't really think she's a ranger. One more! Okay, two more. Okay, we did it. Whew! Man, having the Rook's protection and her boss's fury kind of makes that fight a joke. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I fucking earned those. At least her boss's fury. <laughs> Rook's protection is a bit of a joke because Fireblade is a bit of a joke. But that's okay, I did it. You look so bad. Anyway, yeah, I feel like Ziggy... You know what? I feel like Ziggy is constantly struggling to understand the complexities of a universe beyond her mind. So I think she has to be a wizard, right? <laughs> like... I, would, I did try really hard to get a little witch hat on her for Halloween last year <laughs> and she didn't seem into it. But I think maybe that's just her resisting her natural fate. I feel like... like Pawing you in the face. Strong contender. True. I feel like pawing you in the face to wake you up on the regs is like the closest thing you can get to slapping a god in the face. <laughs> well, let's not compare all wizards to our wizard, the superior wizard. This, the well, this is Which, true. By the way, how is he doing in that poll? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll check uh, while Cass fucking serenades us. Uh, ah. Wandering around here and listening to the anecdotes about Champion Urbosa has truly invigorated me. Wow. In fact, it has inspired me to honor her in my own way. Wow. Bad wow. To you. I wish Where's I could do that anime wow yeah. sound. It's so cursed. I've written a song to try and capture the essence of Champion Urbosa. We call the voice of champion of <laughs> I can't hear any of the audio from the game. <laughs> well, he's not singing the lyrics, so. She was lost to the <laughs> You're also like five seconds she behind. Her heart was strong. Okay. The princess came along. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. I worry that if we ever, like, if I ever had to play a different character in an actual play and princess I went to the bar, like. Mm. I accept Ow. your proposition Ow. without okay. hesitation. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the in the poll, Virla is currently at forty one point eight percent of the vote. Taco is at fifty eight point two. But this is it's better than it was. Uh -huh. also so Chad, if you want our sad wizard to win a silly silly Tumblr poll, I won't go go so, yeah, the the Tumblr you are looking for is called Wizard Bracket. It's match two of thirty two. Obosa, on behalf of Hyrule and its king, I thank you. Think of the upset. Yeah. If we take down Taco. From TV. <laughs> Aww. Girls night. I've never seen you so serious, Urbosa. Oh my. I can't say the same. Ten years ago, you rarely smiled, my little bird. Kind of unfortunate that Link Urbosa, used to smile all the time in like Zelda. Bird before. Only started smiling more after she met him. Where you got that name from? <laughs> Halt and face me. Fuck him up, girl. Unlike you traitors, I prefer to fight my enemies head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Do your worst. <laughs> yeah, Perry!
<laughs> oh, she's so cool. <laughs> Out of respect for our princess, you may keep your lives. Now go. Oh, please put Ziggy Wizard fan art on my desk by Monday. I would love that so much. Please. Warlock might also work if you're her patron. Warlock also could work. You asked me why I called you little bird. Pa I don't know what's the patron of the cat. You know. You. When the patron you of the cat is you. Child, She's one really ungrateful warlock. <laughs> Aren't most of them? I want more spell slots. Actually, that might be completely perfect. To why do you make me do stuff? <laughs> She keeps dangling this worm on a string ago. in front of me, but then pulling it away at the last <laughs> Your mother second. Had How cruel. This world. Yet her little jail for still jail spread her jail wings jail and became the beacon of jail light I will need. I don't think Ziggy I has myself. me end vibes, if I'm being realistic. I'm mm. lost in the past. I don't think she's <laughs> dignified enough for that. True, true. She has, like... Like Charlie Day energy, realistic. <laughs> Ziggy's got I've connected yeah. the dots energy. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. What do you think of Champion Urbosa's song? Well, the the word yeah. picture I just imagined is pretty spicy. All of this should be a I musical. Must say, you are an impressive All of these cutscenes, they should be like an opera, Urbosa's you know? Oh. <laughs> far more that would make it more text accurate. Since yeah, you know, why not? You're a you song. Bride of make everyone have to do a live opera princess. performance. I'm God, every time absolute someone hits nightmare. Cutscene, all of the actors have to pick up a little microphone that they carry around with them. Terrifying. Oh, man. Um, so on Dimension 20, yay! On Dimension 20, uh, they have a series called Make Some Noise, which was spun off from Game Changer. Oh, mm, yes, Maz Kosha. Yes, yes, I love that show so much. Yes. Uh, and there's an episode where they got just basically a bunch of, like, trained, like, you know, Broadway, off-Broadway singers, something like that. Um, okay, Shrine of Resurrection. Why not go back? Sure. Uh, and they are so impressive and so stressful for me to watch. Because it's just like, let's get three absolute top-of-their-game people, and then let's force them to improvise musical numbers! <laughs> And I'm just like and this. Everyone does so well. They do, but like, for so this is kind of like you with Tony Hawk, right? Whenever I look at these, <laughs> I'm like, what if I got put in this situation? I would disappoint everybody so much. I think about that sometimes, but also I feel like. Oh I shit! Rose's diary. The skill set that they're drawing from is not. All right, don't like, panic, everyone. We'll go back. Vocal performance alone, it's almost more of the improv background. So yeah. I do think like. I feel like it doesn't stress me out that I don't think I could necessarily do that perfectly in the same way that they do, because I'm like, well, I don't do improv, so I feel like I'd be That's at fair. a disadvantage. As contrast, you put me on, I'm actually, I'm gonna fucking wreck shop. No, I no. will defeat Brennan Lee Mulligan in single combat, this I swear. No, leave me alone. That's uh, how I will know I have achieved success God as a damn person it, Maz who has been adjacent to the content creation realm for a minute now. If I ever get on, I'm actually. I don't even have to win, I just be there. Okay. Sit on the couch. Do a little one-liner when they introduce my name. Of course. Maybe I'll find a correction that's not even the intended one, who knows? And <laughs> it's anyone's game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, come on, stop it. Let me go. Let me go. All right, we're going back to read Urbosa's diary. And then we'll come back and do the final thingy. And then the finalist of final trials. I wonder if the Korok comes with us when we go. Hmm. I hope that one we left in that lava pit is okay. I'm sure he's fine. He's only made of wood. I am so excited for more Korok stuff in Tears of the Kingdom. Like, obviously, as soon as that 10 minutes of gameplay trailer dropped, people were going through it with, like, a fucking fine-tooth comb. Yeah. And aside from all the actually important plot stuff, what I love that everybody zeroed in on is that there's a brief, like, one-second shot of a Korok in a backpack. Uh, and Backpack Korok has a little word bubble that says, like, I need to find my friends! And just, I want to help Backpack Korok so much. Alright. Hello, ladies. Excuse me. Alright. Let's go find Urbosa's diary. Oh. Yeah, if you need to, like, tap out and go to sleep at some point, 
Feel I free. I want to hear Boris's diary and then I'm going to tap it. Okay, sounds good. I want to know the tea. I Me want the too. secrets. Do I? Okay. I should probably talk to her first. I want to hear how you specifically voice out to her. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thunderhelm, a name out of the winds, yada yada. Mm -hmm. Tell me about her, Perfect. All right, let's go upstairs. Get the hot goss. Find out exactly how much Urbosa and Zeld's mom were like totally bone zoning. All right, let's go. Bit in love. Examine. Diary of Makila Riju. What? Wait, that's the wrong one. I mean, I am a little bit curious. Fine, why not? Oh, wait, hold on. I see the problem. Okay. I found it. Yes. <laughs> it was the other diary. <laughs> It is always... Uh, my dear friend came from afar to visit Gerudo Town today. It is always a pleasure to see the Queen of Hyrule. I bet it is. She described her reason for coming as urgent. She wished for me to meet her newborn child. Her sweet daughter's name is Zelda. She has her mother's smile. I cannot help but cherish her already. I told her that Zelda is sure to grow up into a dignified and beautiful queen, just like her mother, assuming no catastrophic calamities occur. <laughs> yada yada. Looks are fleeting. Instead, she wishes for Zelda to be blessed with true happiness. Hmm. With this destiny? Odds are low. I have never seen such unconditional love. King Rome Bascarama's Hyrule could learn a thing or two. <laughs> it has been a long while since we laid my dear friend the Queen to rest. I only now have the will to write again. It was so sudden. I still can't believe she's gone. All of my sweet memories of her keep running through my mind. Even now I can hardly keep the tears at bay. Young Zelda kept her head held high as she said her final goodbye to her mother at the funeral. She carried herself as a true princess, but I can sense the deep grief she is hiding within. I worry for her. Yada yada, speak with the king. My concern for Zelda brought me there. The king allowed me to keep her company as she went to the spring for her training. There, Zelda prayed and prayed in the spring's icy waters until the sun set. I told her many times to stop, but she wouldn't listen. I eventually had to drag her out of the water. Zelda gazed at me for the longest time with heartbreaking vulnerability. Eventually, in a tiny voice, she told me of the pressure and panic she feels at not being able to fulfill her sacred duty. She whispered over and over, Why can I not do as the royal daughters of the past have done? What is wrong with me? All I could do was hold her close and listen. I pray that that is enough. Allah, pile of divine beast. Gonna totes do it. Let's fuck up Ganon. Ganon is closely associated with the Gerudo, an association I deeply resent. Zelda, let's go hang out with Zelda. Champions. Everyone is very young. Except for Daruk. Zelda was uncharacteristically cold towards Link. I can imagine why. Hope they find a way to get along. Link requested to meet with me. <laughs> he tells me Zelda exploited our law that restricts men from entering town to slip away from him. <laughs> I told him of a trick that would allow him entrance and he was able to get in. <laughs> Great! No wonder Riju figured us out. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Maybe we can hang out, talk out our feelings. She took a nap, sent word to Link, who fucking sprinted the entire way. Uh, give them a bonding moment or whatever. Zelda smiles more often. That's adorable. I'm concerned we may be running out of time. Monster attacks. My little bird. <laughs> I hope she has enough time. Last diary entry. <laughs> Zelda's mother, my dearest friend, how I miss her. That is rough, my dude. Heartbreaking. I feel like... I, I think... Here's the thing. I think it's really easy to be like, oh man, Urbosa, like like Zelda. And of course, I think like Urbosa cares very, very deeply about Zelda. I think Urbosa was super in love with Zelda's mom, and that translates a little bit into how people read their interactions, but the vibe I get is that Urbosa is like, you know, previous generation. And Zelda's like a kid until the very beginning of the game, so I don't know. It's a very cute dynamic, I just think it's easy to read it in one way that probably wasn't intended. 
On the other hand, if I called somebody an affectionate nickname 24-7 and wouldn't stop talking about how she was just as beautiful as her mom, I feel like that might be easy to read one way or the other, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go on a happy, fun little adventure. I am going to go to bed. Good. But I hope that this adventure goes as chaotically as possible. Oh, I'm sure it will. And that at some point, the worst bird in the world uh, also shows up and does some shenanigans. Um, cool, cool, cool. Perfect. Well, thanks for sticking around. Great. No problem. Bye, chat. All right. Uh, please behave. Yes. And um, I will catch you all on the flip side. Perfect. All right. Listen to the OS podcast when yes. it comes out in a few hours. Yes, definitely do that. And you if get to you sleep. If you don't know where it is, it is available on all fine podcasting platforms. Okay, goodbye. All right, bye. Okay, let me just close out of Discord real quick. Take off these uncomfy headphones, and then we will be good to do whatever this is. Discord messages piled up when I wasn't looking. Sorry, I'll deal with those later. I wonder if I get to take the... No, of course not. That would be too easy. Alrighty. Hello, everybody. Oh, come many trials to reach me. Now it is time to face the final trial. Trial is a complex labyrinth. To start, you will need a map. It's a divine beast, baby! It's a divine beast under the Shrine of Resurrection. Do you see where the Guidance Stone is? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, oh, there it is. Perfect. Easy peasy. Mm, gimme, 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 gimme. I'll deal with you later, sir. All right. Oh, uh, yes, for those of you going to bed, very sensible. Uh, the VOD of this video will be up pretty much immediately after we're done. Live chat should probably have processed by the time you woke up, so... All the good times will be rolling. My aim for this stream is we're going to finish this. We're going to finish the Champion's Ballad. And then uh, the next time we stream, we'll be doing other stuff. I have an idea for that one. Uh, we might do it for charity. And it'll need to be in like a week or two, so. Okay. Fantastic. So. We basically need to get this big lock open. And we need to do that by... Oh, yeah, let me kill that thing real quick. Let me see, do I have... Yeah, we're good. Backing up won't save you from my wrath. Okay, let's see. We got... Oh, we're facing one. Oh, I think we're facing one in the lava zone. Well, that's okay. All right, let's see. How do I... Ah, oh, There we go. So now the gears are moving. Some of you may be able to tell what this divine beast resembles. And if so, the thing we're going to get at the end should not surprise you. For the rest of you, it'll be a fun surprise. I mean, I've also said it on various streams before, so not that much of a surprise, but you know. Hmm. Oh, they won't let me use... I can't use Vomito in here. No. 
I mean, Revali scale, you know what I mean. I can't use my champion abilities, no, but that would make this so easy. I guess they, unlike the other Divine Beasts, where they know exactly what you're going to be capable of when you go in, or at least they know what you won't be capable of when you go in because it's the champion ability you're, oh, sorry, uh, you're going to get next. Um, I feel like in this one they know exactly what you're going to have because of course they do. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I remember this now. Um, so they're like, well, obviously we're not going to just let you... How do I... Okay, hold on. Okay, I see it. Okay. We got this. Um, anyway, since they'll know exactly what you can do, you'll have all four champion abilities, you know, leveled up. They're like, well, we're not going to make something that you can just friggin' cheese whenever you want. Oh, hold on. What am I doing? Yeah, perfect. Right, I think that'll work. Right, and that'll knock it down there, and then I think we gotta reverse it. Yeah, okay. Whoops. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, just ignore that, I guess. I've never done that before. Okay, and... So we we'll be done with the waiting game. Oh yeah, so I mentioned I had a dream that I was playing Tears of the Kingdom. Like, either it had gotten released early and I somehow had a copy, or, like, uh, it was later than I thought it was and the game had just come out for everybody. Um, and a few people were like, oh boy, you gotta tell us what the game's like. Maybe you got Prophecy dodgeballed. And it's like, guys, no, 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 no. The version of the game I played was not good. <laughs> in, my, in my head. In my brain. Among other things, uh, there was a part where the game opened up, like, out of the tutorial area, and at the same time became a mandatory multiplayer only. So, like, it was this really big mountain to climb, and there were, like, five million other links all running around with their own little, like, posse of friends trying to climb this mountain. And uh, this might just be me, but I think what makes Breath of the Wild work so well is that you don't even have a companion character talking to you most of the time. Like, it's just you against the world, baby. Like, you you get the occasional little, like, text from Zelda, and sometimes the champions weigh in, but you don't have a fee, you don't have a Navi, you don't have anything popping up in your head to be like, Hey, here's where you should go next. Um, except when you're within the Divine Beast, the champion does that. Um, and the idea that the designers would misidentify so desperately what makes Breath of the Wild work and be like, no, no, we should have a multiplayer bit. It's great engagement. And like, maybe we can do season passes for it. Like, it. It's a nightmare, but at the same time, is it not so believable that somebody would do that? Like, how many video games have been good and then just haven't understood why they were good? And then just wrecked what made them good? Excuse me, sir. Because season pass or something. <laughs> anyway. Oh, pardon me, folks. Oops, that's not great. Ah, that's fine. We're, we're good. Anyway, yeah, so that part was scary. Um, and it was like, of course, there was a single player section. Oh my god, is the Korok still in the bed? Hold on. I don't want to leave yet, I just want to see. Oh god. He's dead! Alright, let's get out of here. Um, 
Anyway, yeah. It was like the first part of the game, like the tutorial part was single player. And then after that, you just couldn't get away from all the other, like, Links and Zeldas running around. Truly a nightmare scenario. Okay, what am I... Okay, I gotta connect something somewhere. I can feel it. Aha! There it is. Okay. I'm just gonna... Whew, let that narrowly miss my head. Um... Okay, hold on. Let's just... Oh boy. No, 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 Link. Oh, well, I don't think we were supposed to do it this way. Eh, that's okay. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. circle around. Whoop, whoop. We're good. Everything's chill. Uh, oh, this one's moving speedy. Let's see. Uh-huh. Okay, interesting. So we have to make another connection. Okay, Link. No panic. That's good. All right, I see. Nope, come on. Shoot, all right. Just not sure what I'm supposed to do with this. Oh, I guess I just keep it, that's cool. stairs up here. How lovely. Alright, uppies and... Oh, very generous of it to just kind of lock that bad boy into place when it really didn't light up as well as it should have. Ah. Who thinks it does not connect up there? Thinks it connects up here. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe I can do that. Perhaps that is why there are stairs. Anyway. Okay. What's chat doing? Oops. Did I fall? Sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Um. Dang it, chat. This is why I never listen to you guys. Oh, hello, terminal. It's just ready now. Wait, let me in. Give it to me. Huh. How about that? I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Okay. Oh! Ah. That is not how those pieces are supposed to go together. But I... I guess if it's stupid and it works, it isn't stupid? Okay, cool. Uh, 
Great. Let's get out of here before the game decides I fucked up. Oh, right. This thing. Hold on. Ooh. Hey, hey, that's very rude. That is also rude. Oh, you know who doesn't have Mifa's Grace right now? Me. Uh, okay, cool, okay. Cool, cool, okay. Cool. All right, Link, my man, we need to get a shield out. Pronto. Whoops. Hey. Okay, cool. Just ignore the- Oh! Oh, you cheeky bitch! Oh no, don't fall in the lava. That would- That would not be good. Link! Alright, that one wasn't my fault. For some reason he didn't lock into it. Like, lock onto it as an enemy. Oh my god! Oh, that's bad. It didn't even say it was low durability. Well, that one I guess I could have expected. You know what? Fine, whatever. Maz Kosha, do you even want me to do this? God. Okay, well, that's disappointing for several reasons. Maz Kosha would be mad if I just left. Came back after I bought the Hylian Shield replacement in Terrytown. Boy, this is not good. That's not really what I wanted to happen there. You're just the worst. All right, let's try this again. Nope. Yeah, how about that? drop a core. Why would it? Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Well, that was very disheartening. Um, Alright. After we finish whatever nightmare scenario Maz Kosha has for the rest of this, we're gonna go to Terrytown and buy a replacement Hylian shield. <laughs> I got so used to having it, I just don't know what to do with myself now that it's gone. friend. Oh, I wouldn't do that with me today if I were you. Okay. Fine. It's no... It'll never replace what I've truly lost. Only the replacement of what I've lost will do that. Okay, let's see. Okay, we got that, and then we got, what do we got, um, okay, there's one at the far left, and there's one at the far right, okay, cool, okay, lefty Magoo, what do you got? Ah, another case where the thingies are not spinning when they should. Hold on, I still gave me. Oh yes, of course. This. You go somewhere else. Come on, buddy. Oh, I see. You go in there, don't you? Come on. Come on, game. I'm doing my best with your camera controls. The least you can do is indulge me. There 
we go. Okay. Ah. Ooh. Ow, scintillating. Okay. Whew. I think that thing is gonna respawn when we come back. Yeah, the Hylian shield broke, unfortunately. I had to figure out a way around that guardian turret thing that I think is going to respawn as soon as I get out of this nightmare scenario. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, it's a big fan and it only goes the direction of the way that it's blowing. Alright, we'll deal with that later. Platform we want. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Now it's blowing that way, which I think. Yeah. Nice. Whew. shield for the for that that thing that thing that's gonna happen ah that's okay I don't think it would have helped me anyway okay okay great All right, now Close. We are close. Let's try not to go to ground level so that uh, that turret that definitely just respawned isn't gonna kick our ass. Okay. Alright, well, we need you to not do that so I don't die, but that's okay, I can wait. No, no, please. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you know what? I probably want to try and get out on the upper level so I don't need to fight that turret thing I talked about. Um, actually, I think we're probably okay. It's fine. What could possibly go wrong, right? I missed the Hylian shield. I've had it almost the entire game. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Bro, are you serious? Like, why? Why would you- why? Maz Kosha, do you even want me to win this side quest? <laughs> Perhaps Maz Kosha was subverted by the Yiga clan. Shoot, shoot, go on, get. Get out of here, you dumb animal. Whoop! Oh, you heard me talking back. Okay, what do we got over here? What's the, what's the sitch, folks? What's the situation? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, I see. already doing the thingy and the stuff and then we just gotta uh, we just gotta let's see no no of course not that'd be too easy truly how silly of me okay um huh it's good game design it's a good game. I like it. And all the hoops it makes me jump through. It's so fun. No, I mean, I, I legitimately do enjoy this game a lot. It's just like, boy. I 
if I turn it the other way? Does that do anything? No. How silly of me. Um. Okay. Oh. Uh. What? Uh. Okay. Sure. Why not? You're not giving me a lot to work with here, are ya? It is Cryonis. And I don't know how to tell you this, but it's certainly not gonna work down there. Do I need to push the thing out of the water with Cryonis? Looks like not. Aggressively not, one might say. Is there something in there? The axle? The axle. Using me. Is the rotation wrong? Well, I can't hurt to switch around. Nope. Maybe. Nope. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> right, let's check outside again. So, cryo under the clamp is indeed the correct move, and the fact that the game will not let me do that is... Oh. Oh. Oh! Okay. Cool. Great work, team. Soup's good game design on that one. Oh, we love a game that makes us question our sanity, huh? Alright, now we reverse. Yeah, yeah, come on. Just scoop us up. Okay. We're getting there. Perfect. Alright. This might be the hot take. Uh, the, the part of this game that I enjoy the least are the dungeon parts that have the most in common with the old Zelda games. Alright. Okay. Perhaps? Nope. Of course not. That's okay. Alright, let's just see what that does. jingle to tell me I did the right thing. That is good game design. Alright, what did that do? Ah! Not a lot. Except... This? Okay, let's, um... Ah! Classic. Oh, I was kind of expecting that to do a little bit more, I'm being honest, but that's okay. I think at this point, 
All we need is Cryonis. Yeah, there we go. Hello. Let me in. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Considering all that button did was undo the problem I had to do to get to the button. And then I guess let me cross a wall? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I'm just being negative because this is the only part of the puzzle that actually feels a little bit dumb. Alright, now how do I scooch? Well, there's no way out on that side, of course. Um. Oh. Okay, let's figure this out. Did it go behind me? Oh, yeah, I see it. Duh. Yeah, that makes sense. Boy. Oh, stellar design on this bit. Okay, actually, I did see that cage before, so. Alright, it's not the worst. And it's DLC, you know, nobody's twisting your arm to do this or anything. Although now we do need to get to the... Oh. I don't think I looked up before. Were we always in this beautifully illuminated cavern thing? Oh, for God's sake! No, I refuse! Fuck off, sir! Alright, great. You can't see me, I'm behind this extremely opaque ladder. Couldn't just give me this. Now that I've done all the hard parts. And pick. Ah, here we go. There he is. Ah, so majestic. Truly beautiful. Oh, it won't let me. Okay, fine. All right, Monk Maz Kosha. Let's go say hello. Hello, sir. Boo. You have proven to possess the power of a true hero. Goddess Hylia. <gasps> oh God. I offer this final trial. Yes. Ah. Oh! When I say, I hope that the next Zelda game has like re-deads and stuff in it. This is what I mean. <laughs> More spooky zombie fights! Alright, this is gonna be an absolute nightmare. Let's go! Oh -ho 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 -ho. Oh, of course it's raining. Let us begin. Oh my god, he's so cool! Oh god! Ha ha ha! Okay, hold on. Uh, let's just, real quick, um... Yeah, okay. And let's just, um, let's put on our good pants. Oh, I guess our good pants are already on. Let's put on our good shirt. Let's just have a little munch. Just 
just, just, just a little, just a little much. All right, bud, let's go. Oh my god, his health bar is so spongy. Thanks, Daruk. Oh, he's got a sword. That's cool. There you go. Oh! Come on, bud. Oh, what? What? What was that? Oh, not now, Fee. Come on! Oh, that was like what Thunderblade did. Where are you? Where is he? Woo! Eh. Oh, right, arrows. Oh, he's done. He was. Whoops, hold on. Uh, pfft. Ooh. Ew. Uh, eh. I really like being able to parry. But I guess we're gonna have to not do that. Oof. Oh. Come on, man. Ah, dang it. Come on, buddy. All right, this one. Ah! Well, at least the knockback from that canceled his other attack on me. That's nice. Oh! Excuse me, sir? God, this attack is so slow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Come on. I his head is in there somewhere. Oh! Cheating. Wait. That's not half his health bar. Was it? This is probably fine. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Eh. No, my royal claymore! Literally, which one of you is real? Oh, goody. I love it. Okay. No, why would that be one handed? Of course not. Uh, pfft. Eh. That would be faster. Nope! Well, at least they're only doing chip damage. Down to the last one. Is it you, you cheeky bitch? Nope. Of course not. Oh! He's real! Ah! Unfortunately, he's real. Oh, come on. No! Ah! By me. Whew. Ah! Come on! Bro, bro! Oh, found him! What? How many of them are you? Aha! It's you! Yeah! Oh, thank you, Rabosa. Oh, that was the last one. Oh, I should have let her recharge. Aha! Why are no one... Why is everything breaking? That's okay. Alright, where are you hiding, bitch? Okay. Oh, I really thought that would be cool. Thanks, Rivali. You failed me yet again. Oh, I see. Oh, weird. Where are you hiding? 
Uh huh. No! Stop it! God, you are so annoying. Whew. All right, just that one. No, no. God, he recovers so fast. No, hold on. No, shoot. I can see him. I just couldn't follow which one. If you're gonna make me do this, at least have the decency to let the camera controls be okay. Oh! Found the real one! For a second. Where'd he go? No, not that one. You! God, every time. Alright, where are you going? Uh-huh. Shoot. Ugh. That's okay. It was the real one. No. No! Speed over here. It's that JoJo meme where I'm just getting stomped. Cool, awesome. If you guys are gonna drop those fancy swords, I would love a nice one-handed sword right now. I tried this before and it didn't work. Yep, they all go stasis, so I can't distinguish between them that way, unfortunately. Thanks, Rivali. Perfect timing. I'm just gonna, just gonna run around until these guys tuck themselves out a little bit. Nope, just kidding. Alright, what do we got? Oh, it sucks on the damage, but these things only go down in one hit unless they're actually the real one, so... Wait, is this one not even... Oh, it's not even one-handed! All right, how long? Okay, well, I can I can probably get my ass kicked for another five minutes before I can get the master sword. Back. That's okay. Oh, thank goodness! That should help these guys out just a little bit. God, you guys are such weenies about getting hit. Thank you. <laughs> when a boss's fury recharges, it's over for you, hoes. Is it you? Are you the real one? Nope. Hey, real Maz Kosha, you want to come down where I can... No, okay. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, do it. I dare you. Nope. Awesome. Oh, damn it! No, Urbosa! He's going into his second health bar. None of that did anything. Yeah, come on. He's getting big. He's going kaiju mode. We're fighting him King Piccolo style now, boys. Yes, yes, very spooky. Come down here so I can kill you like a man. I'm just gonna assume you don't like getting shot in the face, right? Boy, normally those do more. Oh, Link. My dude. When I tell you to pull up the shield, I expect you to do it. That's okay. It's been a long and trying day, I understand. Come on, just do it. Oh, fantastic. Nope! 
I guess now we know where Master Koga got it from. Hey, you should definitely do that. You should do that right now. Excellent. Okay. Now, Urbosa. Right in the junk. With everything you got. Ooh, that really didn't do much at all. What? What? Stop that. Whatever you're doing, I don't like it. What does it take to stun you, man? feeling these. Yeah, they're not doing anything to his health bar. Well, as long as he's having a good time, I guess it's okay. Alright, what now? Come on. No, Link, come on. There we go. Okay. Oh! God, they always fall so far away. No, come on. Spin! Spin to win! No! Oh, whatever. At least he got hit by lightning a little bit. Oh. This fight is stupid. Everybody knows it. You don't look like the good guy here, man. Oh, for God's sake. Here it comes again. Ah. No. No! I'm just gonna avoid all these. Feeling this one for a month, my friend. Shit. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Eh. That's okay. Just feeling these. Boy, the camera doesn't know where to go. That's okay. We can just kind of keep at it. Whoop. We're good. We are good. Got one more hit in you, my friend. And I'm just about to do it! Whew! Okay. Yeah, so there's no clever shortcut to that. He just kicks your ass a whole bunch, and you just kind of have to deal with it. Alright, get it out of your system. Oh, boo-hoo! Look, that's probably fine. Now he's teeny weeny. You faced that challenge with great courage. Oh yeah, I guess if wisdom was the solution, it would have been a different trial. You've erased all doubt from my mind. You are a true hero. Putting up with that relentless ass pummeling was truly the mark of a legend. You were destined to take hold of this ancient masterpiece. Are we gonna play my favorite tune? Oh, they're playing my song! Oh, wow. This whole cool pedestal for me? Oh no, it's a thing that's coming out of the pedestal. You have unlocked Divine Beast Boss Space Laser. We're just gonna park this over the castle and shoot again with it. Oh my, what could this be? Oh ho 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 ho. Yeah boy, the motorcycle. Oh God, excuse me, the motorcycle. Or as I call it, Divine Beast Va Epona. Click. Right? Yeah, got it. They show you the cool cutscene, but then you have to do all the paperwork and, you know, gas it up for the first time and, uh. Schmorp. 
They don't show you getting insurance for your motorcycle, because that's just really unsexy, but man. What a cool ride we got. Yeah! Master Cycle Zero! Oh, I see. It won't let me summon it in certain areas. I guess that's how the map gets around, how you're not supposed to have a horse in certain areas. You want to talk more smack, old man? That which you have obtained is a masterpiece of innovation created for the one true hero. But the guy in Ocarina of Time was only old enough to drive, like, sometimes, so he didn't get it. May the goddess smile upon you. Oh, don't worry, she does. Whoop. Hope nobody freaked out about the giant flying space arena. Just showed up. Oh, boy. Oh, hello. Ow. Ignore that. Oh. Ah, it's you. Oh. I can't put my feather on it, but I get the feeling you're even more accomplished than you were when we last met. I happen to have the perfect song for someone as esteemed as you. I'd love to sing it for you. My teacher's unfinished song, the one I told you about. Oh. I finally completed the key verses. Mm. This lofty location is the perfect stage to sing this special song. It takes place a hundred years ago at Hyrule Castle. I think I know how this song ends. Oh, never mind. It's the nice thing that happened a hundred years ago. Please listen to this special song. The Champion's Ballad. Huh? Huh? He said it. Ooh. Poor Cass, we're zoning out for his entire musical number. <laughs> no way. Welcome, warrior. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. And for your bravery in accepting this fateful task. Mm -hmm. I officially appoint you Hyrule's champion and bestow upon you this sacred guard. Hell yeah. That blue this sacred is a drip. symbol of the royal family. One that has been passed down for countless generations. Those garments you now wear were all crafted by my daughter, Zelda. Ooh, sorry, Mifa. Zelda beat you to the Zelda. punch on giving me a shirt. I trust you with the task only a daughter of the royal family can fulfill. No pressure. Lead our champions, princess. And together, protect our kingdom from the threat of Calamity Ganon. Oh, yeah. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, how nice! Fireworks, that's so pretty! Nothing could possibly spoil this special day. I tell you, those formal shindigs really take it out of me. Aww. Hmm. This is the Sheikah Slate, eh? Ah. It is. Apparently, there are more uses for it than we originally thought. Sadly, We've yet to decipher all of its secrets. Pfft, just drops it off on me. <laughs> the princess showed me something strange recently. Somehow it can create true to life images. All of this for a joke about a selfie wow. camera. I would love to see it. Um, princess? May I ask a special favor of you? <laughs> Who, me? All right, this spot should work nicely. Your eyes on the Sheikah Slate, everyone! Aww. Oh, we find she looks so upset. Daruk, can you crouch down a bit? You're as big as Death Mountain. Huh? Oh, he's adorable. What's with the glum face, princess? Give me a big smile. 
Gosh, I wonder why she might be a little bit of Mifa! God! Ravali, move your tail closer to the group. <sighs> Fine. You obnoxious Mipha, loner. You look so tense. Deep breaths, okay? Oh. <laughs> Stay just like that. Here we go. Smile. Click snap. Daruk! Oh! <laughs> Oh, it was all worth it. All those tribulations. All the dumb shit. For this beautiful moment. God. As far as I'm concerned, we got the true ending. I mean, I had to. I've seen this before, but like, it's the principle of the thing. After this ceremony, they would all forever be known as champions. My teacher always advised me to write songs that transport the listener to the moment in time you're singing of. Now I finally feel I understand what he meant, and the true power of rock. By the way, I found this when I was looking through my teacher's notes. I was thinking, you should be the one to keep it. Your courageous heart reminds me of the indomitable spirit of the champions. I know you'll treasure it. He had a photo the entire time he has known what we looked like the entire time the whole time he's been pretending like he doesn't know what our deal is he's been fucking with us I love it may the souls of the champions who watch over Hyrule rest in peace Link 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 How's that I have pumpkin spice you latte coming along? Every step. You have overcome every challenge with great courage. With the power that you have attained. Wait, is it power I or courage? Certain you can defeat Calamity Ganon. But Zelda, I haven't done the master trials yet. Surely for 100% completion, I get shot. True. Okay. Great, but I'm going to complain the whole time. And while we're at it, come here, you. Yes, yes! Oh, it's beautiful. And let's just... Woo! Whoops. Nope, nope. How do I jump? That's okay. You gotta... Oh, I was hitting entirely the wrong buttons. All right. Got my left and my right mixed up again. Rookie mistake. That's okay. They don't let you drive one of these unless you kind of know what's going on, right? Oh, just in time. Thanks, Fee. Really figured your stuff out in time. Boing. Yeah. Oh, oh I wanted to do something cool, but I got stuck in the geometry. Okay, well, I love the Master Cycle as much as anybody, but we gotta, there's a couple things we want to do. Specifically, all right, let me, there we go. Okay, I want to get the Eileen Shield again, so we're going to pop over real quick to Terrytown. See how much that costs. Maybe sell off some of our stuff if we need to. Don't worry, the bike comes with us. It's just a rune. It's fine. Okay, so uh, you guys should all watch the Zeltic video about why the Champion's Ballad uh, reward is a motorcycle. You know, the ballad of uh, the video about the Master Cycle, because uh, the TLDR is that the guy who made the game uh, really, really likes motorcycles and has been like pushing for there to be a motorcycle in Zelda. For ages. Hey, didn't a blood moon happen when we were doing that? And it just... I feel like we didn't get the cutscene for it. Sorry, that was like hours ago at this point. I just feel like I remember that. Um, anyway. Yeah, so we really, really wanted motorcycles. And they were like, we can't put a motorcycle in Zelda. It's like a fucking high fantasy setting. And we only sometimes put in trains. 
it would totally destroy the pacing. And then they were like, oh, we just don't know what to do with the reward for this DLC quest. And he was like, hear me out on this one. <laughs> How about a tasty little motorcycle? Okay. I guess we can buy the rest of the bow armor. All right. So who in Terrytown is selling the Hylian shield? Oh, the shrine canceled the blood moon. That's wild. All right. All right, until you guys figure out where I should go, I'll just wander around and break into people's houses. Hello. Whoops. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, ma'am. Just taking a shortcut. Okay. Guy on a roof next to the entrance. Urbosa's fury is ready. Thanks, Urbosa. Okay, where's the... Oh, that's not the entrance. That's the, uh... That's the jumping off point. Okay, entrance. Could be that guy? Could be that guy. Oh, with the donkey. That's cute. Hello. Hello. Let me in. Thank you. It's so cozy. It's like a tiny home. Hello. Hey. What's up? Mm. Oh, what? Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Grante, a dashing novice researcher of ancient civilizations. Yep. Mm. Something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, huh? Mm. Show me the goods. Mm -hmm. Climb something or other. Oh, good luck with that barbarian armor. Does this guy have... George Matt? Oh, wow. Got all the random shit. Is this the wrong guy? This guy... Does not... Oh! Ah! There it is! Oh, hey! We have just enough! Mm, gimme, 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 gimme. I'll buy. How did you even get all this stuff? All right, later, Grante. Now, uh, now I must go. My planet needs me. Shoop. Okay, fantastic. Oh, look at that. The Master Cycles joined in the Divine Beasts on my little screen. Taking the lead, much to Rivali's chagrin. Oh boy, all right, we're gonna do one last thing and then I'm gonna call it a night and like eat some food and sleep and stuff. <sighs> Even counting for New Zealand time. This is a bit much for my recovery. Okay, welcome back to Terrytown. No, Potato Village, you can tell I'm sleepy already. Welcome back from Terrytown. All right, let's go check out our house. Let me just real quick re-equip the Hylian shield. Oh, I feel so naked without it, there we go. Hello, hello, okay. Ah, uh, the gang's all here. All right. <laughs> Nods. Well, now I'm happy and sad at the same time. The <laughs> game just ends. Credits roll, we never beat Ganon. Oh my god, my hearts! Maskosha, why did you kick my ass that much? Okay. Well! Let's get out of here. Ah, it's my house and I can paraglide if I want to. Okay. Whew. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure we'd be able to finish the Champion's Ballad all in one go, uh, but that worked out remarkably well. Um, yeah, uh, I might be able to stream again next week. Uh, fortunately, I'm out of extremely complicated plans for the immediate future, although I do have, like, some podcasts to record, some guest appearances on things. How long did we stream for? 
Started about... Oh, okay, we're back in the six and a half hour zone, just where I like it. Um, oh boy. Yeah, I gotta, like, hydrate or something. Eat some extra food. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, I might be able to stream again next week. Uh, I've got a couple ideas for things that we can still do, but we are creeping up on, like, deck again in a clock. Which is, you know, it's a bit bittersweet. I love this game a lot, and I wish there was more of it. Which is why I'm very happy that Tears of the Kingdom is gonna come out soon. And I hope my brain does not continue to formulate, uh, dreams about how it could suck and be like a, a live service nightmare when it's not going to. Um, which is good. I'm, I'm happy that that's gonna happen. Of course, when it comes out. I mean, obviously, you guys are gonna be the first to hear about it. You guys are gonna be fucking lucky if I put out any real videos in May. I'm gonna be so distracted. Um, anyway. I wonder if Link has, like, a little... Like a slightly different animation depending on what armor he's wearing, because that idle animation works if he's wearing something with greaves. You know what? Uh, it's fine. It doesn't matter. This game is good, and I'm having a good time with it. And I hope you guys are having fun with it too. Uh, I'm gonna go and like sleep and stuff, and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye everybody.